Hello everyone, welcome to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And today on the table, we are starting our journey as casual Arkham Horror, the living card game players, not professionals. I will never, ever say I'm a professional at this game. I don't know if I ever want to be. I feel like it would drive me mad, which I think is the intention of the designers of this game. But we are gonna play through the Scarlet Keys campaign on easy, try to have some fun. We have Yogi, uh, one of our most amazing supporters of the channel here who built us some decks with uh, kind of insane write-ups, which I guess makes sense for the insanity of this game and my refusal to try to remember all the cards in the game and, and all the functions and erratas and taboo lists and all that stuff. Um, so thank you, Yogi. Special thanks to Yogi for putting the decks together. The deck list we are playing with are linked down below. Um, this campaign just released a week ago. Uh, so spoiler warning if you haven't been playing through it and even more spoiler warning is based on reading the overview is there are 10 scenarios included and the order you play them because you're globe trotting around the world basically playing Eldritch Horror uh, going and dealing with issues all over the place based on choices uh, just like some of the other campaign games we play on the channel we may be experiencing uh, you know a scenario you might experience in your 12th or your uh, sorry your eighth session that we might experience maybe in our fourth session. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. So just be careful as you click on the episodes. Uh, we'll try to say, you know, you'll know in the very beginning what we'll play, but I'm sure we'll be reading story before we even know what scenario we're playing. So you might hear some story spoilers and stuff like that. So just keep that in mind if you're watching this and you're planning on playing this later. Uh, our playthrough will be in a different order probably than yours. Obviously different choices will be made. We're playing with different investigators. We're also maybe playing a different player count. So that might lead to like different things happening. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but we are playing blind. We've not played any of this before. We're literally going to take off, shrink wrap off some of the cards and stuff as we experience it and just play through it casually, blind, have some fun with it, experience the story. And like I said, we are playing on easy because we're just casuals. We don't play this game every day. We haven't been playing it since it released and all that kind of stuff. We play lots of other games, so trying to keep everything straight, it's not our goal with this game. It's just to play it, have fun. It's a great game. Um, just have some things that I personally have issues with and lose sleep over. But I mean, that's that's par for the course, but the, the good, I believe, outweighs the annoyance of this game. But please understand, I will still get annoyed. I will still have very high highs and very low lows with this game, okay? Mm -hmm. If you're okay with that, and that's not too cringy, you can keep watching, okay? But I'm warning you now. <laughs> I don't wanna hear you lashing out at me saying, I just suck, and that's why I'm pulling red tokens from a bag, or stop my whining, just don't play the game if I'm gonna whine, no. It's my game, I purchased it. It's my paper. Full disclosure, FFG did not send us this game. So we bought this expansion with the support of these awesome people up here and deal with it. And then uh, if you wanna be one of those, uh, come on, you're welcome. Uh, but you have to deal with me, and, and, you know? So just, just understand, I understand if you don't want to. Um, but yeah, just, just throwing it out there. I, I have my love and hate relationship with this game. And I'm just warning you also, just like a spoiler warning, you know? It, it, I don't want to hear complaints later that we spoiled something. And I don't want to hear complaints later that Rob's about to flip the table because, you know, they've seen the sixth red token in the game. Or at the pivotal moment, you know, where it could win or lose, he pulls his weakness from the deck, which totally screws this, the playthrough. And, uh, yeah. So I have my Paper Shredder nearby, just in case I need to take any cards or the whole game. And just, just put it in there, because like Yogi said in the chat, it's like a horror movie at this point with the channel. I throw the game in the garbage and somehow the next day the doorbell rings and there it is on my doorstep. Like it comes back and haunts me. I, I don't know what's wrong with this game that's like possessed or something, but uh, we're going to play it. But I will tell you, we had, I mean, I had for sure, I had for sure a freaking blast last year. At least my memory makes me think that. That's what you want to remember. Playing Edge of the Earth for this game. One of the coolest campaigns, the way it was built and how it worked in any LCG and in any campaign story game we played or whatever on the channel. Like, we've played tons on the channel. we played some off the channel. Uh, like, campaign games, legacy games, story games, branching path games, adventure games, all that stuff. And the Edge of the Earth, what they did with the repackaged model and the choices and the branching paths and the returning to things and all this kind of stuff. The, the atmosphere, everything, the item cards, the player cards, it was just fun. Like, I loved what they did with that once they changed the release model of not being uh, bound by separate little packs. So I am very excited. This is why I pre-ordered this, because I was like, man, I want to see what they do on their second attempt. And I know the designer, the main designer, MJ, 
Uh, it's her last, last product working on this game, I think. This was like her last product, like being full behind the helm, like leading it or whatever. I think someone else has taken over Arkham Horror after this uh, because she's going to work on other stuff or I don't know, leaving the company. I'm not exactly sure what's happening. Um, but she's been the heart and soul of this game for a while, like leading it, right? There's are other people that work on it, of course. But uh, yeah, supposedly this is like her, her swan song. So like, uh, I don't know. What's that mean? Does she want to does she want to see us cry the most we've ever cried playing and be more frustrated? or have the most fun or just see us go insane you know like how insane if you're the final designer on something like how do you treat it like what type of designer are you you know like i don't know what type of designer mj is so i'm not sure what you would do with your like you know you have free reign to kind of go like this is my this is what you'll remember me for do you make something great that more people are going to love or do you make something that like the hardcore fans who know who you are are going to love you know what i mean I think maybe you try to accommodate all. Yeah. And you want it to be something people are going to be talking about. Yeah, yeah. So we'll so you see. you need to have a little bit of all of that. We'll see. Uh, so I, I have that in mind as I, as I play through this to see. We are jump racing all over the world. Uh, we're not dying in the snow. Uh, so we'll see. That was fun, though. I really enjoyed uh, Edge of the Earth a lot. I don't remember a lot of it. Like, I'll be honest. Oh, we, we play a lot of games in the years, read lots of stories, even watch TV shows, movies, you know, reading sometimes. I like, you know. Um, <laughs> And I get lots of characters, lots of stories, lots of twists, lots of environments and worlds in my mind. So remembering exactly what happened there, um, and, and, you know, I remember Lily Chen, you know, smashing people with a hammer. I remember that. And I just remember some of the cool things of survival, climbing the mountains, carrying items around, trying to survive with our items, making choices what to bring with us. Which was cool because we were yeah. playing blind, so we didn't know what those items were going to do in the future. So we were picking things randomly blind, which we may have to yeah. do in this one as well, which is so awesome. So yeah, it was super fun last year playing Edge of the Earth. So that was the last time we played a full campaign of this game. So it's been a while since we've gone through the campaign stuff. Um, so we might be a little rusty with that. We have played some standalone scenarios recently on the channel. If you're looking for any of our Arkham Horror stuff, uh, it is linked down in the video description. If you want to support the channel, uh, that is also linked down in the video description while I'm mentioning this. If you're looking for the deck lists, they are down in the video description. If you're looking for anything, don't ask me. Just go down the video description. If it's not there, then tell me. Then ask me, yes. <laughs> then ask me, that's what I was going to say, yes. Uh, but yeah, so that's the deal. <laughs> uh, so let's see here. What do you this guys think? This chat say? is funny. I, I'm looking at some go of ask. it, and I'm trying to stay focused on like getting through all that I want to talk about. I need. I use, sometimes make notes before the stream on a little pad of like what I need to mention, because you know I get distracted, squirrel. Especially at the start of a campaign, right? Yeah. So we're going to look at our decks quickly. I don't know if I'll go through all the write-up stuff. We'll just go through the browns room quickly. Oh, Janet's been a member for 20 months. Janet, thank Janet. you for the 20 months of support. Thank you. Uh, much appreciated for being a member for 20 months. Uh, uses her, her message to say, what will Rob replace, or sorry, what will replace Rob's attempt at pronouncing Tequilili? <laughs> Tequilili? <laughs> Every campaign has its own little yeah, yeah. funny word. As I slowly lose my mind and try to try to make make my entertain myself with weird weird things. Oh, that was funny. As I'm lost in this game, uh, so yeah, just keep that in mind. I will rant. I will complain. Probably I'll get frustrated with things. Uh, just parts of this game frustrate me. But overall, I obviously I love playing the game. I love these LCGs. I love FFG games. I just have ever since I got into the hobby, you know, ten plus years ago. So. Uh, I'm gonna keep trying it. I know this game is great. So just keep that in mind if you're a hardcore fan of this game You love everything about it. You can't see anything wrong with it I am sorry. I might hurt some feelings here, but again, it's my own personal feelings. Okay, it's how I feel about the game It's my own opinion. So it shouldn't matter to you if you're having fun with the game You love everything about it. Just enjoy it. Just understand ignore me when I'm when I'm You know about to flip the table and throwing cards in the paper shredder and all that kind of stuff uh, Just just understand we're about to go on a ride. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> this game's like Michael Myers. I just can't kill it. I can't kill it. It just keeps coming back. Oh, that's funny. Uh. <laughs> Yogi, that's cute. Yogi says, these are basic decks, so none of the cards should be new to you. There was a couple new to me. Okay, listen, Yogi. Even if I've played with a card 30 times over the last, like, two or three years, whatever we've been playing this game for... I'm not going to remember it. Like, you say a name of a card, I don't remember what that card does. You, when I'm building decks, Yogi, it probably takes me 10 times as long to put decks together because when you put a deck name, if I'm not looking at the list, you say, in Discord, you say, switch this card name with this card name. I literally have to, like, go online to help my sanity to find out what type of card is it because I have my cards organized by 
color, if they have an XP cost by card type within the color. So it's like, when you just say swap this card with this card, you assume because I played with it, I know what the card is. You assume because the deck, the, the investigator has specific deck restrictions that I know them off the top of my head. And, and I don't care, you still do, do what you do. I'm not complaining. I'm just letting you know. I'm trying to let you understand how little I remember about card names in this game. And it's probably because like the, how the human memory works. Whenever you store a memory, you make the decision of the priority or, or the, the, not priority, the value, the value of each memory, whether it gets so stored in short-term memory, which doesn't stay very long, or long-term important memory. So if you feel like something you're reading or memorizing is important, your brain will store that in a more, the more hardcore encrypted vault versus like just temporary memory that you don't care about and throw away. And I'll be honest, when I play this game, I'm never sure if I'm going to play it again. So I'm sure every time I read a card, play with a card, talk about a card, play through a scenario, I kind of just like, eh, okay, whatever. I, I'm not trying to remember it. I feel like some other games, I'll remember the cards more, I'll get more bonded with, or, or board games, or things in my life, I'll put those memories in there. So just keep in mind, when you say replace this card with this card, I'm like, oh my god. I have to search through, like, is this a blue card? Is this a neutral card? Is it a card that's both blue and purple, and it's in a completely different section? Is it one with experience points? Is it not? You know, obviously in this case it's not, but, you know. So it's just funny, like, like for me to change two cards in the deck after you modify it, it's like, oh god. I have to go get out my cards, I have to sit down. I can look online, sometimes I'll go grab a computer, uh, you know, I'll go online and start looking. But like, the most basic cards you think I know, like the only ones I remember is like Machete, Flashlight, you know, those core set cards that are Leo? like... Leo? Leo? <laughs> Leo DeLuca? I've seen him a few times. I've never played with him, I don't think, but I've seen him. Uh, maybe I have played with him, and I don't even remember. I, I just you have one time. I've seen Mel play with him a bunch, though. Thanks, Yogi. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yogi knows what kind of cards I like. I know, as soon as Yogi presents me with two decks, I just know which deck you're playing. Like, I could just look at them and go, yeah, he built this for Mel. I assume. <laughs> you can let me know if I'm ever wrong on that. But yeah, so just so you know, hopefully we're, we're letting you guys know that, like, yes, we do play this game. We've played hundreds of hours of it, you know, probably at this point. I don't know. Or, or at least spent hundreds of hours with cards in front of us of this game, reading things and looking up things and whatever, uh, and playing. But uh, we are casuals, again. We've only played a couple of times in the past year since Edge of the Earth, so feel free to help us out, yell at us, you know, correct us, put it in the comments after you're watching, timestamp it, it will help other people learn from our mistakes. You know, you can let us know, like, your choices you made in your campaign, that kind of stuff, and, like, how you're finding it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, but, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. Mm -hmm. So far. Will I hate it? Will we finish it? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I think people are talking about in that in the, in the yeah, chat yeah. as well about I need how to, like I need to scroll up because there's like, some things I was reading that I want to look at again. How I have the more upbeat yeah, positive yeah. where Rob's negative. So if I go to the negative, then things are really bad. <laughs> yeah, Mel's my yin, uh, or we're yin and yang over yeah, here. Like exactly. we balance each other out, I think. And yeah, if if she's tipping into my end of the territory, the pessimist or whatever, then it's like, uh oh, things. The, the, <laughs> Ab abort mission, <laughs> abort mission. Because <laughs> I will jump the, off the ship. I it's will going to down. the end think we are going to win. Yeah. Till it says you <sighs> lost. Lots of people coming in also and saying hello, hello to everyone. Hello, hello, hello everybody. Lady. Hello to everyone joining live. Hello to you watching later, of course. Yeah. Mike oh. says it's okay, Rob. Most of us are filthy casuals too. Nice. Okay, good. <laughs> I know, I'm really just addressing the like hardcore players that'll bump into our channel every now and then and go, oh, look, there's a playthrough of something, I wanna watch it. And then they watch it and they're like, you know, saying I suck at the game, Rob, it's all you, it's not the game, and you played this wrong, that's why you don't like it. And it's like, man, everyone has their own tastes and preferences and likes to enjoy their, their property different ways, right? So mm -hmm. I purchase it, I will play it, I'll be open and honest. This, you know, I'm trying to satisfy the people who wanna know my thoughts on things, but also, you know, just like, you're watching us play, this is what we're doing. You're not watching me put on a show and be fake. So this is what I'm gonna do, so. But there's other channels for that stuff, if you, you can go find those. If you're a fanboy, go watch other fanboy channels. There's fanboy channels for this game that are like dedicated on this game, they live and breathe in this game, they, they memorize everything, they only play this game and no other board games. That is not us. So if you're feeling a little awkward here, that's why. We're not one of those, we're not, you know, we don't have a podcast, we don't live in this game, we don't, you know, hate on other LCGs or anything like that. We, we play everything. So, you know, 
this is our this is our jam. We do it. Uh, we do love constructive criticism to get better, though. Absolutely. So. Uh, Michael Newsom says, I would rather have a love-hate relationship with a game than just not care at all. An apathetic game is a game I won't go back to. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, uh, that's true. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like, if it, if it has some great moments that drive me to want to play it, even when I have some bad ones, it's like, I just know that's the territory I'm getting into. So it's like, I expect, accept it. I'll, I'll, I'll complain a bit and then it just wears off and then I'm, I'm like good to play and if the story's good the choice are good the mechanics are cool like you know playing with Mel with you guys watching and getting involved like that all totally uh, you know can can definitely you know outweigh the, the like you know small issues that I have sometimes with the game this game too has generated some epic moments mm -hmm. that are historic on the channel, yeah, as yeah. well as some epic funny words. Yeah, yeah. It's even spawned people's usernames. So it, it is a game that's been interweaved yes. with our channel since we played. I don't know any. We've been playing LCGs on the channel since like almost the very beginning. Usually competitive ones, but like any time I played any LCG. Uh, you know, Manch the Madness we were playing, you know, for a few years. We still play that yearly, but, um, you know, Up Marvel Champions started hitting the channel. Any kind of game, you know, uh, campaign game, story games, it was always mentioned for years. Rob, you need to play Arkham Horror. Rob, Arkham Horror came out. When are you going to play that? Rob, when are you guys going to play this, you know? And it was brought up and mentioned all the time, and I fought it off, I swear. I, I, I had my warding spell. I was trying to keep the game away as best I could because I knew what LCGs bring. They bring tons of cards, tons of costs, tons of time commitment, obsession, you know, like this is what I have to deal with with these games. So it's like I already had like Lord of the Rings LCG I wanted to put my love into, Marvel Champions, many other games, you know. Um, so I knew what was involved and I tried to avoid it as best I could. But of course, the support from the channel, you guys, you know, through the donations, the members, the Patreons, like, you know, hounding me for playing it, supporting the channel, throwing donations at the channel to get it. It was like, all right, let's collect this thing. Shamar for helping get us the first couple cycles get us started because you couldn't find it in print anywhere at the time. Um, donating his connection, collection to the channel, even though I still want to pay him for that. He refuses, um, but I should send him something. But yeah, anyways. Um, yeah, with all, all the help, all the support, like we appreciate it. It's like a game that's been like haunting the channel for many, many years before we even started playing it. So, and I'm super happy. I remember getting the game and bitching about them you know, the release model sucking and they need to fix it for this campaign game. And then they did. Like, so that was cool to see that transition um, to the revised core set, the starter decks, the new new campaign boxes, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's a good time to, I think, play with the game because the new the older stuff's getting re-released in this new expansions, like uh, new boxes. So it's like, it's a cool time to get into the game. So I don't feel like I missed out on anything. So, uh, but yeah, it's definitely interesting. Definitely interesting. But yeah, so it's, it's been a weird journey with this game for sure. It's been like, yeah, something. Lots of ups and downs. Yeah, ha yeah. even before getting it, it was like constantly people request it. It's like, oh, we're talking in a QA, and a you know, what games is, you know, this and that. And it's like, Rob, you need to play Arkham Horror. You guys play Arkham Horror? Did you try Arkham Horror yet? Have you played Arkham Horror off the channel yet? You guys need to get it on the channel. Well, people knew we would love it. And I was always like, no, keep it away. <laughs> I was like going to ban the word in the chat. Brett, Brett says, donations that look like this? Thank you, Brad. Brad. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the super chat. That's I exactly what they look like. Thank you. All right. Yes. <laughs> Thank so you. So whatever the next campaign expansion is, it just got ten dollars cheaper for us. <laughs> Thank you, Brett. Thank Assuming you. I, you know, I. Well, see where this goes first is what you want to say. <laughs> well, that's the problem. Even though I say I'll hate this and don't want to play it, then they announce the next campaign, and I'm like pre-ordering it. You're like, gotta see where it goes. Yeah. What's wrong with me? Something is wrong with me. I know this. It's a love-hate relationship, as we discussed. I'm not all there. I know this. I know this. I'm missing <laughs> missing some screws or whatever. Some screws are loose. Right. I'm also just killing some time for others to show up, because we're going to go over some of the rules, uh, go over the decks, get started, get this kicked off. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, shit. Okay, MJ's working on another FFG project. Oh, cool. Okay. okay. That's awesome. That's cool. Hopefully they didn't just typecast her and put her on like another Arkham Horror themed board game. Oh Even though God. I would not be a bad about, mad about that. But imagine they were just like, yeah, you're so good at the Arkham stuff. Yeah, yeah, leave the card game to them. We, we're working on a new app-driven 
you know, maybe like Mansions of Madness third edition kind of product, you know, the same way they did like a Descent third edition, even though Something it's not, with, it's not Descent third edition, guys, even though it's Descent third edition, you know what I mean? Something with good minis would be nice. Yeah, like correcting. Like cool minis. Yeah, yeah, like they ended that product line. And, and there's too much cash on the table there. You can't tell me they're not thinking about some other story-driven, app-driven Arkham product. But maybe they're thinking Mansions has that scratch. They just keep printing it. It's all fine. But isn't that done? Well, no, they keep printing it. Yeah, but there's no more new content, Exactly. Right? Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, once sales slow on it, then I can see them being like, okay, here's a new version. Because it did do very well. Yeah. Definitely. Hmm. Definitely, because it spawned a Lord of the Rings version, it spawned Descent version, you know, like they're, they're obviously realizing they're, they're bringing in money from app-driven games, so I can't see why they, that department wouldn't be working on something else. But maybe they're all focused on Descent. Maybe just the next Descent products, they've decided, like, let's just clean the slate, let's only work on this, make it the best we can, and uh, they're not touching anything else anymore, I don't know, but we'll see. While we're killing time waiting for people, make sure you hit that like button as well. Yes. If you uh, like Arkham Horror. Brett says 546 hours to be exact we spent on Arkham Horror on the channel. You're joking, that's, right? That's playing it or streaming or ranting about it. That's not the like sitting there on a Sunday morning for two hours with cards spread out, looking through things, reading pamphlets and rules and printing, uh, cam fo photocopying campaign sheets and all this stuff. Like, Wait, Brett, that's exaggeration, right? That's no, not... he has a spreadsheet, right? I don't know if he still does. He probably has just clicked the filter. Filter by anything that says, you know... Arkham Horror LCG or whatever. I would assume so. Right. Also, if you do still have that spreadsheet, I would love to see it in the Discord. I don't oh know if you God. can link them, but that's cool. That would be interesting to see. Oh, Lucas says she, MJ also designed uh, his two favorite decks from Marvel Champions, Black Widow and uh, SPDR. Oh, awesome. Interesting. Yeah, I like the way they're doing Marvel Champions with all the designers in, in the company, like getting a chance to make different products for that game. I think like, it helps give it like everything have kind of like a unique feel to it. I like that. It's like normally you don't want too many hands in the pots because it's like then there's an inconsistency. But I think the Marvel Universe, like you want that like little worlds to feel different because in the comic books, it's like you'll have different writers and artists take over a story or a character and do their own version of it. So I think it's like very thematic were very uh, fitting that they did that for Marvel Champions. I, I think it's really neat. Uh, Sean also says, morning gaming family. I love the way you worded that. We are a family, gaming family. I hate family. <laughs> I mean, I, family. awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey guys. I love that, thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh... John says, or afternoon, many others, because we know the channel is watched so many different time zones across the planet. Yes. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Thank you for being clear with that. I like that. Anytime someone comes in, like, good afternoon, I'm like, and good morning. Don't forget the evening. It's <laughs> nice. You know, people who may be watching this at different times. Yeah. Okay. So, uh... if you're new here, you've never seen this game before, you clicked on this, you're just joining us, you're new to the channel, you never heard of this game, because we do have new players that find the channel, we do have new players that watch, who are just getting into the hobby. I warn you about this rabbit hole, but if you want to dive in, go look up Arkham Horror, the card game, by Fantasy Flight Games. This is the old corset box, which you can probably find used for cheap to try the game out. But there is a revised core box, a revised core box that looks like this, that is most likely going to be found on most retail outlets nowadays. This is what you really want. Because not only does it support more players playing it, even if you're playing solo, you get more copies of cards. Um, and better tokens, and you get a bag. Most importantly, you get a bag to pull tokens from, okay? The best component, you know, you can't play the game without it, you, you just need it. And they didn't used to include it. But now they did, so that's why the game is better, because it has a bag. And it glows in the dark. Super important. Super important. Uh, but yeah, just go look for this core box. My recommendation, try this out. And then start looking into the Starter Investigator decks. If you have a friend that already has this game, they want to play with you. Reach out to them. If you know anyone that owns this game, and they haven't played in a long time, they will pull it out, they will sleeve it up, they'll relearn it, they will play it with you. People love playing this game with each other. There's a whole community out there. There's a, you know, a hidden underground cult that plays this game in your, in your city. 
trying to worship the Elder Gods, they're there. They're all playing it. Go to your local game store, look for somebody. There's probably a night they meet up there to play, or they come in to buy product. Find out when a new pack releases. Stock outside of the board game store. Wait for the consumers to come and show up to buy their, their expansion, and then trap them, and then offer to play with them. And if that's the case, you can buy Investigator Starter Decks, which are small little packs that come with the player cards and everything you need to play with an Investigator in a campaign, and all their upgrade cards, which we are going to highlight, two of those today. But we are not playing with the full Starter Decks. Yogi went crazy and started putting in cards from all over the card pool. So we're playing not from a new player's perspective this time. I know with Edge of the Earth, we only approached it with the only re-released kind of new player card pool at the time. Um, but we are playing today with cards from all over the card pool. Some stuff that has not been re-released, probably hard to find. Just keep that in mind. But the investigators we are playing today are from the starter decks. They're a little more straightforward. I even put the random weaknesses. I used their weaknesses that came in the starter decks. Just to like, I don't know, who cares? I didn't want to like, sure. whatever. I just thought it would be funny. They are kind of annoying to those investigators, which is also kind of funny. So I don't know if that's good or bad. But anyways, that's what we're doing today. Um, so just keep that in mind. But I recommend finding this product. Because it comes with a little mini campaign, gives you a taste of everything in the game, gives you investigators to start out with, gives you some deck building, gives you enough if you want to teach, you know, some players with the game, basic cards, very valuable cards that are still used in the card pool today. And then you might want to expand into starter decks to add more player cards and start looking at campaign expansions and stuff like that. So just any new player joining in who's like, this game looks cool, find this. You might find it used, you might find it new, but just start with this, find out if you like the game. <laughs> Don't go buy everything, please, unless you played it. Because um, a lot of people buy this game and then hate some of the things that I hate with it. And they're like, what the hell, Rob was playing this and, and it looked awesome. And then I bought it and I drew my weakness card and pulled four red tokens in the same playthrough on easy mode. And I hate this game, who wants to buy my copy? That happens a lot. So you'll probably be able to find this used or find the original course that used or find someone's collection who went a little crazy and bought too much and they're just trying to get out because they don't play it or their friends hate it or whatever. Um, so you might be able to save some money and just try the game. But try it before you knock it because it might be your favorite game. Um, but if you like story-driven, HP Lovecraft themed uh, Arkham Horror games, it's good stuff. Um, so yeah, just look into that. All right. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, go to Fantasy Play Games, the publisher's website, and let's just get the campaign log printed out here. Uh, so it looks like, oh, November 18th today is uh, November 26th, 2022, so it's been out for over a week, like not eight days or nine days or whatever. Something like that, I'm not doing the math right, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, let's uh, just go to the product page for Arkham Horror, where I usually find my PDFs and my, you know, my stuff. So let me, let me just find the PDF so we can bring it up on stream, because it's been out for over a week, so the janitor definitely had time to update the website, I'm sure. So let me just find the PDF for this campaign so we can look at it digitally instead of me reading off of a book in my hand, so you guys can actually follow on. Okay, I see 2022, I just looked by date, so I see Path to Carcosa Investigator Rules, okay, so that's nice. Mm. Mm. It's been out for a while, I should see it in here, let me, oh, oh, Machinations Through Time, nope, that's not what we're playing, but that, somebody posted that in February of this year, okay. Hmm. Well, it looks like we're using the paper book, even though we're not playing it early. Uh, so thank you, FFG Janitor, for sucking at your job. Okay, uh, then we are going to go, let's go to the player resources and print out the campaign log. <sighs> oh, Scarlet Keys Investigator Expansion Upgrade Sheets? Mm, no, no, that's not what we're looking for. Oh, Scarlet Keys Advanced, and, oh no, no, Printer Friendly Regular, okay, no, that's not what we need. We just need the campaign log. I see lots of campaign logs. Oh, looks like they posted the Edge of the Earth one in the December 16th of last year. I don't know when that actually came out, but that was probably like later than it came out. Uh, so yeah, it looks like we don't have a campaign log to print. That sucks. So we'll just write on a blank piece of paper until I can get out to photocopy it or wait till they put it up there. Uh, oh, you know what? Let's go to Board Game Geek where on there somebody maybe posted their own version of it or something. Let's see. Let me just do some searching. Click, 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 searching. This wasn't pre-opened and set up. Uh, oh, look, somebody's looking for it when I searched for it. Scarlet Keys campaign log download. Oh, somebody looking for it, you know, on release day, they bought the game, they came home, and they're like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to write in my book. You know, I might want to play it a couple times. Uh, so let's see. Anyone know where to download it, says the waffler. Okay. Uh, Carthor Carthoris 
uh, says, I expect FFG will have it on their website shortly after the US release of the campaign expansion. That's the way it's been in the past. Oh, uh, here we are like eight days later, still don't see it. Oh, here's our own Yogi Bear, AKA Craig. Uh, their department that updates their website is run by the janitor and is always one to two weeks plus. <laughs> oh yeah, that's correct. <laughs> accurate, accurate information on the internet. I love it. Uh, then we have Marco says, took photos from campaign book and printed them. Works fine until the FFG lazy cultist it's the downloadable PDFs available. <laughs> yes, Marco, I love it. I love it. Just wanna, this is what we have to deal with here. Dear FFG, get the damn stuff on the website when it's released at least, if not a week before, so those who get it early can at least play with it. Especially because they uploaded other things relating to the game. Yeah. And again, I'm coming from a player who, yes, bought a board game one time that had no rule book in it, and I was traveling. I had no way, there's no PDF online. So like there are a chance that some boxes are printed and screwed up without the book inside. So at least you can go online and usually find the PDF of rules or campaign logs and stuff online. So if it's missing from your box, you can still play the product and not have to wait for support or return the product or whatever, you know, and then your store doesn't have any more. So you got to wait for them to order more and all this stuff. So it's just, it's just easy. It's just easy. Just put it online, get it up there so other people can use it. It's just a pain in the butt. So not just for me using it to put it on screen for you guys, like I understand that, but there are people that don't want to write in their book and, and don't have a photocopier available mm -hmm. and just maybe a printer, they can just print quickly or something, or just use it digitally on, on the computer and mark it off in some PDF editor or something. Uh, but yeah, that's annoying. So we'll hopefully have one by next episode, but Mel's just going to jot stuff on a paper in the meantime, and then we'll I'll, I'll run over to like a photocopy store or whatever, if it's still not up before the next episode, and we'll just transfer the information. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah. Okay, so here's all our tools uh, to play Arkham Horror. We have our rule books nearby that we'll reference. We got our tokens. Uh, we got our E Raptor tokens. Uh, we don't make anything off it, but they are linked down below. I think if you're looking for these, um, maybe they're not. I don't remember. Um, we got our. This is the bag that comes with it. Glow in the dark bag. Oh, it still has tokens in oh. it. Oh. Oh. I can just dump them. No, no, we're making a new bag because we get to play on easy today. So oh. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll make it on, on here. You, you kept the good one in there, right? The extra good one? The four blues? Yeah, yeah. they're in the, they're in okay. the secret they're pocket the secret that's down there. Yeah, 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 okay. Shh. okay. Shh, shh, shh. D. Miller says, FFG expects you to have your own scanner, duh. <laughs> what is this, 1997? Who the hell has a scanner? Man, I remember when scanners were the thing. Oh, man. I used to have a friend that had an older brother who was like a graphic, uh, graphic artist or whatever. Uh, made like signs and art for businesses and stuff. And he had this like a most amazing scanner hooked up to his iMac, uh, you know, one of those colored, uh, you know, colored CRT iMacs. Oh man, and this thing, and then he had a professional like uh, a pr big printing machine to print out like uh, those, uh, like basically the graphics you like stick on store signs and stuff like that and like other art and okay, yeah. marketing things. But yeah, the scanner was like amazing at the time. We used to like scan everything. We were like scanning stuff on all the time. When his brother wasn't home. Uh, don't tell his brother. We were using his uh, work computer stuff to do that. Uh, but anyways. Uh, but yeah. Mike says, I tried the core box of this game and the atmosphere pulls me in farther, farther, far better than most. However, it's not one I'm willing to invest time and money in. Marvel Champions will have to do. <laughs> That's fair. Oh yeah, which I will play on the channel. Probably not this week, but the following week is my plan to get that in and play some of that. The campaign, or you don't know yet? I want to play the campaign with you, okay, yeah. but I also just want to play some of the, um, I was going to say investigators, uh, some of the heroes. I just want to play in some solo scenarios, maybe take them through the mojo thing, you know, try that out and stuff. That's cool. Um, so I do yeah. want to play the campaign with you, right? yeah. if you want to wait, but... But yeah, we'll get there, we'll get there. Uh, okay. What about Arkham cards? Oh, oh yeah, we do need to go over the decks. I just wanted to show. I think the site. I think that's the site that you were. Oh, on Arkham cards, they might have the log. Oh, you guys are awesome. If that's the case, let me find that. Oh yeah, I didn't even open the deck list yet. Oh, I have them on my computer. I had them open in another browser and I closed that. I see what I did. So you're saying on Arkham cards, they might have the campaign log? 
Because I'm not, I'm not going to use the app if you're thinking using the Arkham Cards app. I, I don't even know if they have Scarlet Keys ready for it. And I don't want to be one of the first to play through like a buggy version of it or something like that. So I'm just going to play old classic paper style. And we'll update our decks on Arkham DB. Oh, uh, they don't have it. I think you can't just check. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I did not know they have this. I've never gone to it on a computer. But they have a website just describing, like, I have a video walkthrough of it and everything. That's cool. That's cool. Does Arkham DB have campaign logs, you know? Like... No, it's not leading me to Arkham DB when I click on that. That's cool. <laughs> cool beans! They have like. I don't think they have that stuff on here. They don't here, have like they? resources on here. No, not that I've seen. they have like the rules and stuff. No, this is FAQs. Holy crap, it's a lot of pages. Rules? Under rules, maybe? No. This is just rules. Hmm. I don't know. That's okay. okay. There's only like one stop place for everything. Eh? No. Dang it. You gotta be an investigator. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Uh, that's fine. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Yeah, we can make it work. We've had in the past. Okay, let's find some decks. Okay, I need to. Uh, I need to log in. Uh, where did I put that stuff? Bear with me. Sure. Okay, my decks. So today's decks are linked down below, if I did it correctly. I did not read the name of that until right now. That is hilarious. I now, read mine. But... Now, I know Nathaniel in the art there, and Nathaniel looks like a grumpy dude, you know, his revenge and all this stuff. Uh, but this could apply to me, because when I play the game, I, I do have... I am I Mr. It's... Grumpy, and I do have an insatiable hunger for blood. I think but... that's where that's going. No, no. I think he means the actual investigator. He's trying to, he's living in the thematic world of this game. Okay, so here's the deck. Again, if you want to read this right up, I'm going to go over quickly. Again, I'm not a pro with it or anything. We haven't played with the decks yet. I kind of read over this again this morning to kind of refresh myself. Um, but if you're looking to play this campaign, you're like, I don't know what decks to play. Again, you would have to have like all the cards because again, this isn't made for a new player because uh, there's like tons of packs here, which I don't know if all of them are from revised, uh, revised, re-released in print products or not. Um, but anyways, uh, you, you can read this down below. Nathaniel's angry. He demands blood as payment. Yeah, see, he's Mr. Grumpy and insatiable hunger for blood. All right. Uh, I made, so there's these pairing changes here. We are pairing it with Winifred. There was another deck that Yogi was recommending we might play with, but then, you know, I already built this, and then Yogi says this deck's fine. So the Winifred deck is also linked down below. And I made the changes. I put in two Scene of Crime, and I replaced one Monster Slayer and one One-Two Punch. But we could also replace Second Wind, but again, I don't know what we're getting into, so I just did it that way, um, the first way. There is also an alternative starting deck. I did read through this, but again, like, I, I, once you said it could make the, you know, deck more expensive, it's like, I don't know, but like, if you're building these decks and want to try them out, you could, there's alternative starting deck stuff here, and then we have, and Yogi, if you have anything to add, feel free to chime in in the chat, if you're watching this later, just open up the chat archive, and you can kind of see what Yogi's saying along with it, or anyone is saying along with what we're saying, um, but uh, the mulligan, I'm looking for boxing gloves, or, or obviously Randall Cho, I remember, I remember Randall, I remember playing with Nathaniel before and really liking him. Is that uh, the brother? Yeah, Is yeah, that that one? In, in a wheelchair, right? That, that's what he's like, I think he's like getting revenge for his brother or something like that, if I remember correctly. I remember he read all this story and everything, yeah. I, I just don't remember it exactly. But uh, prepared for the worst, or Tetsumori, which is like some cop dude. Um, oh yeah, and, I remember those being good. Yeah, yeah, and then there's some other stuff, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure I played with the Hollowed Mirror before. Um, but this Hungering Blade... 
Like, I remember looking at that. It, these are one of those cards that are like bonded, that has other cards attached to it and stuff. Has like its own little mini mechanics built in. Um, so we'll see some of that as we upgrade. But the gameplay, here we go. Straight gameplay, this is what we're getting into. The primary goal of Nathaniel Cho is fighting with uh, an event cards to trigger his ability, which is a once per phase when you deal damage to an enemy by an event or a fight ability on an event, you deal one additional damage, which will then trigger, uh, which will then trigger the ability on boxing gloves, uh, which looks like a reaction after you defeat an enemy, exhaust boxing gloves, search the top six cards of your deck for a spirit event and add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck. So it's like kind of like its own little engine. Uh, the deck starts out, uh, starts with bandolier. So I have an extra weapon slot, which I could use for the survival knife. But we're going to upgrade to the Hungering Blade. We'll deal with that, obviously, in a future scenario after we get to upgrade. And... Even listed our upgrades. Like, this is how amazing Yogi is. Like, this helps us. And I appreciate this work because, again, we're, this is not the only campaign game we play. At the same time, we're playing games even, right? Like, mm -hmm. we're currently playing... I mean, technically, I do still want to go back to Legends of Sleepy Hollow, but we're not, we haven't played that recently, so it's not like in my brain, like, clogging it up, but um, we got, like, ISS Vanguard we're going to be playing on the channel soon, which I'll have to crack out and start learning and all that stuff. So, like, we'll be doing that in between playing this for the next, I assume, five, ten weeks or something. Who knows, right? It says there's ten scenarios in here. That could take us ten weeks if we only play once a week. If we play, like, two a week, then it's still five weeks we're playing this, so we do play other games in between there. So like coming back to an episode even, I sometimes don't remember like what would I have upgraded, what would we have done. So Yogi does this and I appreciate it. It definitely helps us play lots of games all the time and not have this as our only game, but still play with some cool cards and play with some cool decks and stuff. So uh, when we're upgrading at the end of a stream, it also helps the streams not go so long. Yeah. Like we've tried it before. We've tried it before where we had upgrades happen through the comments. We've had it where it's happened at the end of a stream. We've had it where we went blank and just spread out cards on the table and tried to figure it out and you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but having a set list like this. So Yogi has done this. This is amazing. It's like packaged it kind of like a starter deck. This is how I approached it. So in these deck boxes, I have the deck and then I have all the possible upgrade cards, which are linked here in the side deck, which this helps me not have to pull out giant boxes of cards and sort through them on stream, you know, people just end up leaving, right? And it's like, you know, let's let's not do that on stream. Let's just look through this smaller condensed pool. We still get the, 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 the juicy, juicy taste of spending XP and upgrading our decks and seeing our investigators evolve. But we don't spend that much time doing it because the deck has a focused, limited number of choices to choose from. And you guys can help us decide at the end of a stream. I know you'll go probably just say, no, nope, this one's first. Rob? Or I, we may have an Rob, idea based on how it plays. Rob, I wrote these as the first <laughs> upgrades, Rob. Why are you saying you'd rather have this card or this card? You know, like, stop it. But, uh, yeah, we can discuss, because obviously as the plays go, as things are happening, our play styles, as what we see happening in the campaign and stuff, you might start valuing other cards over, over some, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. But if you're, like, new to this game and you bought Scarlet Keys, you heard it's awesome, and, you, you, you know, you want to, like, go through with some cards... Like this, this kind of stuff, we, this happened, I think, for Edge of the Earth, you'll get to this too. Mm -hmm. So um, it just made it easier. So it helps players too, like understand what, even if you don't have some of these cards, it helps you understand the idea of like building the final deck and then taking out all the XP cards and rolling it back and having an upgrade plan in mind from the beginning of a campaign. You never know how much XP you're going to get during the campaign. You never know when you're going to get to level up sometimes. Uh, sometimes they don't let you level up between scenarios and things like that. So this at least gives you an idea and you can see like, you know, in Yogi's crazy mind, uh, you know, uh, I picture Yogi typing this out. A picture of Yogi was reading this to us. He looks like that, you know, that meme with the guy with all the, the, the post-it notes and the string on the board. And he's like, you know, explaining the crazy theories. Yeah. You know, here's the deck. So if this happens, you got to link this and you got to mug him for that. And then you upgrade to this. And if you get this much XP and this happens and you pair it with this deck, this is the card you got to change. And if you don't know what he's talking about, you're just like looking at him like, this guy's insane. But I do really appreciate this stuff. It's really helpful. But this could help a player who's not great at deck building kind of understand what's going on and what he's trying to do here. Because he like writes up and explains for it. And I like how you can just hover over some of this stuff. You don't know the cards like I was saying earlier. I don't know these cards. So you say stick to the plan. You know, even if I play Nathaniel a bunch, I might not remember what that card is. But I love that you can just hover over it and go, oh, oh yeah, that one. Oh, okay. Cool. And I'm, I'm going to do this. Okay. Yeah. So all this stuff's here. So we'll look at some of this stuff at the end of the stream, the upgrade path, but it's here. 
and this should help us at the end of the stream quicker jam some new cards in the decks and be ready for the next scenario more of a contained board gaming experience rather than a lifestyle crazy card game where this game is designed so half the half the game is building decks and sorting through cards and figuring out you know what you want to put in a deck and upgrading it's like the bookkeeping before and after the game you know and the other half is playing the game playing the scenarios i just really want to play the scenarios i don't i don't really care about the other half um so just keep that in mind but uh yogi's helped us out here and uh, i appreciate it so much it's funny that you talk about yogi with all the post-its and everything because the last deck that he made for me which was part of it the had that it, it did have if you're at a shroud one location you yeah, do this yeah. this this if you're at shroud two location this, this, this. and then it was so funny because it says at the very bottom now that you understand all of that <laughs> it's like this. and it was so it, it helped so much i don't know if i played it to his standards but i tried <laughs> uh edgar says 10 i thought it was 15 i think it said in the intro uh, uh, that it was 10 scenarios but maybe there's well i, I again edgar, of scenarios I, edgar and... I don't know how many you play through in a play, in a session i don't really care to know i just know in the very first page of the actual book they just describe for those players who want to play standalone and understand what you're buying uh it does say uh the scarlet keys expansion differs from its predecessors in that it features an open-ended non-linear campaign Following the Riddles and Rain prologue, investigators are provided with a map of the world, and from there they may choose to embark on various locations. In the order in which locations are chosen determines on which of these scenarios are played, and may also alter the story and gameplay of each scenario before culminating in an epic finale. Choose wisely and good luck. So it sounds like kind of like the app-driven like Lord of the Rings, Journeys of Middle-Earth adventures. They may have 15 scenarios or 10 scenarios available, but you may revisit ones, you may skip ones, you may make choices and not be and lock yourself out of ones, right? Like with branching paths. Right. Uh, but it does say, uh, The Scarlet Keys is a campaign for Arkham Horror the Card Game, one to four players. It contains the following 10 scenarios, and it lists them off. And then it says, uh, each of these scenarios may be also played in, in its own standalone mode. Play, play on their own in standalone mode. So there's 10 scenarios. But you may have to replay some of or them. Skip some or skip some. Based some on them. your choices and, and your options. So I'm a, I, I don't know if it's going through, maybe we do play 15 sessions if you're like, get all the choices right and have to go back to places. Oh, Edgar says, I mean, there's five map spots where you can do standalone scenarios to my understanding. Oh, so you can add in extra if you want. Yeah, but that like, makes sense. Okay. but again, what this says is open ended and it's different for everybody. And then there's a finale and it's all based on choices. So, I mean, ours could be six sessions. And we all die and burn out. Oh, like, yes, this campaign over. <laughs> yeah, it, it could go to eight and we have a final boss fight. Your playthrough could go nine in a final boss fight thing, like a uh, final scenario, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, we're, it's open-ended, we're running around the world, we're making choices, obviously based on our resolutions, our scenario choices, uh, or our uh, resolution choices at the end of scenarios, prologues, epilogues, all this kind of stuff. It, 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 it could go all over the place. Again, like with Edge of the Earth, the way they had, they could put a ton of cards in the box and kind of do it as they wanted without being locked into the deluxe plus six scenario packs or whatever they were doing before. They can do whatever they want. They've given you all the cards. They don't care anymore. They don't care, you know, they, they're allowed, because before they want you to buy all six, uh, you know, scenario or uh, adventure packs or mythos packs or whatever they're called. So they have to make sure you're playing the next scenario because you've got to buy it and they want you to buy it, then play it. And then they want you to buy the fifth scenario and the sixth scenario and play it. And it goes in that linear order. They don't want you to skip them. But how, how bad would that be if, if players all run out and buy a pack and then it tells them like, oh, skip this one if this happened in your last one. And it's like, why did I just buy these cards? I, I, and you're telling me to skip the scenario almost every time I play, except for if some random thing happens. But the beauty is you buy all these cards now, they can do stuff like that because it's like, you're still gonna get a ton of gameplay out of it. They can have branching paths, make it replayable. I love what they can do now as it being released like a proper campaign board game product instead of a CCG collectible packs, you know, just want you to keep buying more. I guess it wasn't CCG. It was more like mini expansions. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of lame. But now, now it's cool. So I'm assuming we could play a whole bunch of scenarios or a very few scenarios. And they, they can do that now and it, there's no restrictions, which I love. I love that unknown, which is great. So yeah. Uh, I think you were going to, were you looking at my deck next? Oh, yes. Oh, you were doing something else. Sorry, I was just distracting and then I distracted one second, you. One second. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, this this is a picture, just for those who don't know. This this is Yogi explaining the deck <laughs> to us and the changes, the updates, the alternate mulligans, the alternate upgrade paths, the what to do if you find this type of thing happen in the game. If Rob's playing this type of deck, Mel, here's what you need to do, or you could change your starter cards. This is this is Yogi Bear explaining these decks to us. This is what I picture as I'm reading. I'm just kidding though. I love Yogi. I please, I love you. I'm I'm not trying to make fun of you. I'm just like very detailed, but again, it can be kind of like as a casual player, it's like, oh my god. He goes deep. He deep. Does. He's deep. I love it. Love it. We appreciate it. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. If if you find that offensive, Yogi, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to offend you. I still love you. I don't think he's going to find it offensive. Yeah. That's it. That's what you're picturing him doing. <laughs> I mean, to play this game, you, you obviously got to be like that guy. So. Yeah. Exactly. Obviously. <laughs> Zing. But I am. All right. Uh, okay. Oh, there's kind of that picture in the background there on Nathaniel's. Oh, that's funny. Nathaniel's little uh, trying to solve the crime, you know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Then we have. Uh, I have one, two, eight fingers, Winifred Habamock. Inspiration, there's a deck list that it's inspired from. So is this some kind of Alice in Wonderland kind of thing happening here? Yes. What, is this, what does this mean? I, I haven't read this right up yet. Fantastic cards, pickpocketing. Oh, I played with that recently, I think. Or, or, Most of the cards in here I have played with, or except read it for a few, very small few. I think. Oh, this one, yeah, yeah. That one I've never played with. Crystallizer of Dreams, I think this is one of those ones that comes with uh, other cards. It does, yeah. It has the bonded cards. Uh, which are sleeved up inside it in your side deck with all your upgrades too. So when you need to search your collection for a blah blah blah, it's in your deck box. Yeah. And if it's not, I messed up. If you miss Backpack, <laughs> which I think is one of Yogi's favorite cards, is Backpack, um, Backpack, Charisma. Every time Yogi builds decks, somehow in there, there's Charisma mixed in, and Backpack is in there somewhere, I, I feel think, like. I think the Backpack fits this deck. I know, I'm just joking, but it feels like it's a thing. It's a staple, either to the game, or just Yogi loves those cards, and likes building around them. But I feel as, a, as those are good cards. They are good cards. I know they're good mm -hmm. cards, but it's just funny. I always feel like I'm reading yeah, but he's like, he didn't put backpack in here, but he's like, guys, 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 hear me out. I didn't put backpack in, but don't worry. If you do not have the cards in you on turn one, commit always two cards to get the draw. Uh, From her ability. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, hold on. So Winifred, free action. If two different non-weakness cards you control are committed to the skill test, draw. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I don't remember her at all. I know we I played with ever, her. We have played I with believe her? so, yeah. I don't think we have. I feel like we played with all the starter characters, but maybe we didn't. I don't think I'd never have seen her in play. I don't think. Uh, all right. Gameplay. The aim of the game is to maximize your draw. Oh, I love card draw. Mm -hmm. So we want to always be committing two cards as much as we can to trigger Winifred's ability. So ideally, oh, is that limited at all? I don't think so. Yeah, limit oh, once one per, per test. test. Oh, okay. So that's like really no limit, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Trigger for notice. So ideally, any events once played will be attached to the Crystallizer of Dreams. Which is a very cool card. An additional cost to play this card, you must search your bonded cards for one copy of Guardian of the Crystallizer and shuffle in your deck. Reaction. After you play an event, attach it face down to the Crystallizer of Dreams instead of discarding it to a maximum of five attached events. Attached events may be committed to skill tests as if they were in your hand. So there's a little engine going here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, very cool. Once the deck is upgraded, Chuck Fergus. Okay. Uh, I didn't really read too much into it. When you it. play a tactic or a trick event, exhaust Chuck Fergus to choose two. That event gains fast, so it doesn't cost you an action. The event costs two fewer resources to play, or you get plus two skill value while performing the skill test during the resolution of that event. Oh, that's a cool card. Yeah, I didn't read like the upgrade stuff yet, but. Um, oh, I guess there's a lower level Chuck Fergus and higher level Chuck Fergus. How is it different? 
One cost more. Yeah, I see the cost and XP health value. And sanity, health and sanity. Yeah, the ability is the same. Oh, though, and right? maybe the icon. No, it gives you an initial wild icon. Oh, okay, okay. The icon and then the cost to play is cheaper. I see, okay. Make things, making it all go faster and faster. So don't feel bad about saying goodbye to Leo DeLuca. Oh, I see. It's really, <laughs> really getting you prepared here. Yeah, if you exactly. miss him, you can always grab an ace in the hole. We played with that card before. I don't remember what it is. It's exceptional, so you can only have one in the deck, right? I think that's what it is. Or it costs like double the XP to get it. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that, yeah. Fast, play only during your turn. You may take three additional actions this turn. Whoa! Next one's per round. Oh, and they're saying the Chuck was choose two instead of choose one. Oh, okay. I did not see that part. Oh, choose one, choose two. Oh, that's huge. Okay. I get it. I get yeah, it. I wasn't looking at the upgraded stuff yet. Just the yeah, I thought, I thought the abilities would have been worse. But yeah, choosing more of the options is better. I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what else? Plus, it has no icons to be committed. So that would be a very bad mistake if it got stuck on Crystallizer of Dreams. So I just have a quick question for Yogi regarding that quick statement about the ace in the hole. So because Crystallizer of Dreams is not a May, it's just a reaction, right? So I have to do it. So I would only want to play ace in the hole when this already has five cards. Is that what you're saying? Or when I don't have this in play? No, this is optional. This After is optional. you play event, this little reaction swirl is optional. Okay, you don't optional. have to trigger okay, it. Okay, okay. I don't have to. So or you only attach it. them when you want to. Okay. Up to a maximum of five. Yeah, and he's saying do not. Okay, you may. Because yeah. he's saying don't put that one under because then it'll get stuck there. Okay, because it has no it has no icons to I pull see. it back out. Okay, I, see, I got I see, it. I see. And then just a little bit more draw. And then the liquid courage is in there for the horror. <laughs> so based on I know that card. I, I wish I got to play it more, but I looked at it in my hand a lot in the last uh, last thing, but never used it really. Uh, where was I? Oh, and then this one is a card that I can. Uh, oh, this is your hand. Yeah, yeah, this you, is the one I was right? doing to you. Yeah, 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 so I can pass enemies or yeah, yeah. Um, so I can tests I can't fight them. I can't do yeah. Okay. You. So this is gonna be fun. Uh, well, that's yeah, it's what you think. Well, I think my deck looks fun. That's what you believe. Oh, the deck's fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I had no doubt the deck will be fun. Yeah. I, I looked at it and was like, I'm playing this one. Based on the two, I did look at both, and I look, I like this one a lot. Okay. Okay, the reactions are For some reason, I thought because it didn't say you may, but yeah, okay. I understand that. Thank you. Okay. So I got a little book here. Uh, there are some new rules. Again, I don't have the PDF, so I can't show you without my hand shaking, really. But uh, new rules, clarifications. There's the new card types, keys. Okay, they attach to bearers. The bearers can be the players. The bearers can be enemies. The bearers can be assets. These keys attach. If they're attached to an enemy, they're on an unstable side. There's a little free effects on them you can trigger, is my understanding. It'll make more sense once you actually see one. I've only gone by what's here. But uh, they, they can only leave play when who they're attached to leaves play. We can, as players, if they're on, in, on assets we control or attached to ourselves, we can use the ability on their stable side to flip them to their unstable side and then do the same to flip them back, I believe. Um, but we'll look that up and deal with that as they come into play. Um, but just understand it's like the new mechanic here is this new card type keys. I would say read it in the PDF, but it's not there yet. But maybe when you're watching this later, it is. Um, then they're also saying you can't use the red gloved man, which I did see recently in our card pool. Um, you can't include him in your deck at all because we'll see him in the scenarios or whatever. Uh, just like the kind of like Marvel Champions things, you know, don't play with, uh, you know, uh, Nebula against Nebula or you break the whole game and all this stuff. Um, but whatever. Um, so don't, don't play with that in your deck. There's also this new uh, keyword called Concealed X which basically works with these mini cards. We'll take a look at them when they come into play. Um, but they can have enemies on one side, they can have decoys on the other, and this is what their back looks like. You shuffle these, you place them face down at locations. Then at the locations, you could do a fight, an evade, or a uh, investigate against the shroud value. If you succeed, you don't get the usual get a clue, uh, you know, fight an enemy or evade an enemy. You get to flip the card and you're looking for the enemy. The enemy is out of play, it will come into play if you successfully do one of those tests. And again, uh, even even a card played from your hand that just deals damage or just evades an enemy or just pulls a clue off a location, those will also work to flip these cards. So it's like your way of hunting 
to find where these enemies are and pull them out and then, you know, pull them out of the sideboard, you know, and kind of beat them up or evade them or do their abilities on them or whatever is going to happen in this campaign. Um, but we'll take a look at those once we actually get them out of the box and have them in a scenario. Um, and that's all that. Concealed mini cards. I don't think this matters. Read through this, but I think I may have said all that stuff already pretty much. Uh, they do have alert here is back again. We played with this before in other campaigns, but it's obviously not in the core set. So that's why I have to mention it because this is assumed you can buy any Arkham campaign and play it with owning the core set. And for sure you need the core set with this one, which I realized just last minute before the stream and went and pulled all these out. Uh, on the back here, look how many oh. encounter sets come in a whole campaign. I think it's pretty normal, but I've never seen them like listed like this. That's insane. Oh, and then the ones that... So those are all different sets you have to search through to build each campaign, you know, uh, or each uh, scenario. But then they also remind you from the core set, grab these, which is really helpful. So I went into the core set, found it in another box I had, pulled all these out, and I put them in the Scarlet Keys box. So we can just play out of this and just play out of this. Oh, cool. And it's like our own contained little board game without having to go through boxes of other cards and hunt stuff down, which okay. is annoying when you're trying to stream or bring something to game night and play with friends, you know? It's nice to have it all kind of contained. Um, and I already pre-sleeved some stuff too to help us out, but uh, I haven't looked ahead though, so I don't know what we need yet. Um, and also Patrol. Good thing we just recently played the uh, Fortune and Folly oh, yeah. standalone scenario, which is designed to be played with this campaign. Uh, it had the patrol keyword in it, so we get, got to see that in action. So it's pretty straightforward. They'll just patrol around, kind of like when hunting happens. Um, so that is in here. There will be patrolling guards and that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, so we do have experience with that recently, so that's good. That's super easy. Um, but yeah, that's it. So now we need to do some campaign setup, which is choose our investigator or investigators. We've done that. Each player assembles their deck. Thank you, Yogi. Uh, we're going to choose our difficulty. We are going to play on easy. We're casual. We want to experience the story. You know, we want to play this a bunch, have some good times, maybe not fail as many skill checks, you know, to, to make me lose my mind. We're going to do this together because uh, we never... Can but but up. no matter what, the red token's still there. So I, I still will have tense shoulders as I every time I start pulling tokens. Um, so yeah, let's try to do this all together and make sure it's correct. <laughs> so I'm going to put this right here. Mel's going to do it so you can see it. You can shove all these out of the way. Okay. We're going to very carefully, very slowly build the deck or, of... Or, sorry. The deck, uh, it basically is a deck of cards, aka tokens, that we're going to put in our blind bag we're going to pull from instead of rolling dice for skill checks in this game. If you're new, we pull tokens from a bag called the Chaos Bag, uh, appropriately named. So, so you, uh, we can start kind of... So going. two plus ones I see is correct. Three zeros I see is correct. Three minus ones I see is correct. Uh, two minus twos is correct. You need two skulls. Done. Correct. You need one tablet. One tablet. One elder thing. Uh, and as usual, you need one red and one blue. One red, AKA, one blue. AKA one nightmare token and one elder sign token. Okay, so we're all confirming this is correct. I'm not missing anything. One PTSD token. Uh, one ruin your day. One... Right, like this. We shouldn't, we shouldn't need one more of these. I'm uh, just kidding. <laughs> no. You need that plus five I made. I'm oh, gonna put okay. that in there. Okay. Uh, I'm just kidding. This, this is the single token right here. Based on what I read online, over, over the years of looking into this game and playing this game, this single token right here, again, we're playing with like up, upgraded tokens uh, instead of the cardboard ones. Um, this single token, the red token, the auto fail token, is the single mechanic in this game, a single component, probably caused 90% of the secondhand market collections and core sets and stuff you find out there on Facebook Marketplace or your classified websites or let go apps or you know your local game stores use section whatever uh this single token has ruined more players experiences and made them not want to play this game from what i've read uh yeah this, this is like just know you look, make sure you understand how this works because this could it's like basically like rolling blanks but in this game it's like i don't know sometimes those blanks can be like hurt very hard i don't know but anyways, just, okay. just so you know. Bag is ready. It's like no amount of help can help you undo that token. Uh, it's messy. All right. Okay. Um, is this mine? Are you the green? 
faction yes. deck. Yeah, Winifred. Oh yeah, I guess. And I'm the blue. Yeah, color. Do you want coder. me to take it out and start putting my stuff? In yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just wanted to put it there to explain like how we kind of approach it. it might help some new players out the way we're playing it. So again, I, I in the decks have like my uh, bonded cards all sleeved up, ready to go. I have all the upgrades, the sideboard, basically all the upgrade cards we're going to search through at the end of the stream. So we quickly can find them, don't have to search through the boxes and stuff. I have some extra sleeves, so when the game throws other cards in our decks and stuff, you know, all those extra weaknesses we'll get, I'm sure. Um, and I have our little our little cards, our little uh, reference sheet, and it's like my own little mini starter deck uh, is what I like to build here. And then you got your deck uh, here. So this is what we play with. We put it back in between streams and we upgrade. So it's very contained, very manageable, not as overwhelming for a casual player. Um, I don't know why I just put it all back, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely yeah. Uh, it's definitely great the way that you. I, I like it. I like it when we because then for like if we don't play for a week or two or a week and a half or something, and I, I'm playing all these other games and learning all these other games, setting up and bit making streams and even just days off, you know, watching shows and stuff, and I come back to it, I don't have to go like, okay. Where were we at? What kind of cards do we need to upgrade into the deck? Like, what should we be doing? Let's read the comments, see what people are saying. Like, you know, and I'm lost. Like, I feel lost. I wasn't very overwhelmed. So this way it just keeps it kind of like, okay, we upgraded our deck at the end of the last scenario. All we had to do was sort through a handful of cards. We decide which ones to put in. We put them in. The deck's ready. You open it up. You're ready to play. It reduces setup time, basically, I think is what I'm, I'm getting at, I think. But, uh, okay. So we have this map. Which when I read Top Secret in, in, a, in an adventure game I open, I feel like I'm not allowed to read this, but I feel like it's going to tell us to use it. I'm just going to leave this for now. I believe this is the map. Because it looks like a map. It's from the Orn Library, Miskatonic University. It looks like it's been checked out. Uh, oh, it's a confidential file. Okay. But yeah, it did talk about a map. I'm assuming that's it, but or maybe it's in the book. We'll, we'll find out. We'll see. I'm not going to open that until I'm, I'm told to open it. Um, but in the box here, I have some spare sleeves for our baddies cards. Uh, I have all our weaknesses in case we need to get more random weaknesses. There might be some extra ones in here from the second set of starter decks we own. So that probably throws off the odds, but maybe we can do our random weakness from the, the website, which oh. will pull it from our collection. I just have to update our collection. That's the only problem. Um, but they're there in case we need them. So that's contained in our little board game here. Then I have sleeved. Uh, all the sets from the core set that it asks us to pull in for uh, enemy encounter sets or whatever, uh, treachery sets, whatever they're called. And then I have, I, I opened up one package that looked from the front and I looked on the back of the rule book because I saw that it had some of these symbols. So I think most of these are the encounter sets for this one. So I pre sleeve those so we can pull from them. But like, look how many encounter set cards like in just one pack. And that's not including the encounters, which I believed are all separately packaged in this thing, which I love that they can do that. And there's more here. So I haven't opened any of these, but I, I'm assuming like the way they have this the thing on them, you know? Yeah. These are for the scenario. So we're only going to open them as we go. I think it's kind of fun. I think that's fun. It's and, full blind. And, and we'll, yeah, we're blind and we'll sleeve them up. Um, but these are the leftover cards from the ones I opened. I was sleeving and then all of a sudden I started running into locations. So I was like, uh, I'm stopping. I, I don't want to, don't want to know. Um, so yeah, I've just leaved up some enemy cards to help try to speed things up. Um, and then here is the pack of these like little mini cards. Um, so we'll look at these, I guess, when, oh, there's a, oh, it's reminding you, I guess you oh. fight or evade against the shroud value on the bottom there. Um, but we'll deal with those when the game tells us to, maybe they'll start us off playing with them. Maybe we won't play them for a couple scenarios. I don't know. Um, but they're in the rule book. Okay. We'll just put that aside for now. Uh, okay, you can put those, I don't know, wherever you need. Shelf here. Yep, yep. Okay, put that off the side, put Nathaniel here. Okay, uh, all right. So again, in this game, do you mulligan then see the scenario, or is it the other way around? I have to double check, because I don't remember. Oh, we're putting under. Okay. I can probably find a quick here. Let's see, three, four, five. Rules reference, scroll 70%-ish in, look for setup. Uh, okay, setup you, draw opening hands, then you read the scenario introduction stuff. Okie dokie. And then set the agenda deck and all that stuff, okay. 
We need five resources each. Got you it. got that. You see that? Okay. Okay, let me just. I think we can zoom in a tad. My deck list off to the side here. Oh, pickpocketing, I need. Oh, Blanky Cat says Mulligan and Scenario. Thank you, Blanky Cat. These I do not need. Javi, I agree. Javi says, I wish they had a better setup system in the encounter deck. Sometimes it's easy to spoil yourself just searching for the cards for the setup. I agree. Oh, yeah, that is true. I know. When I see, like, items and stuff, I'm like, oh, I kind of want to look at what the item does that I'm going to put to the side. Um, but I try my best not to, but and then sometimes you don't even get them. I'm mulliganing all these four, keeping Taking a mulligan? Taking a mulligan. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to shuffle really good because yeah, it was kind of right. sorted. I was shuffling before the stream a little bit. Man. Oh, I can stack pickpocketing. Because there's nothing saying I can't. Yeah, it's not unique. Yeah. Just gotta pay twice for it. I like this card. Okay. Doesn't take up a hand slot or anything weird. Okay. I mean, I don't have everything I would need, but we'll see what we can do. I'll have to get some uh, draw going. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. I can stack those for the double draw. Oh, did you read Edgar's message? Uh, don't read it out loud. You don't want people Edgar, to know. I got you. But I'm going to make a distraction. I'm going to like spill my cards on the table at one point. It may have already been done and no one even noticed. Yeah, I'll make a distraction. <laughs> then you make the token switch in the bag when, when everyone's distracted by what I, I don't know. When, in the middle of my rant, when I'm ranting about something oh, I yeah. hate, then, I, 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 you know, that's my cue. I do want to say, though, just for funny, I 99% of the time try to keep the bag on screen all the time. Yeah, so not that we do that. Nobody could ever say. <laughs> yeah, like, I would like all so... of a sudden we, in a playthrough, get lucky, we never draw the red yeah, ever. People would, are going to be like, yeah. this isn't like the normal playthrough. They're cheating. No, we build it on stream, <laughs> and then I normally keep the bag 100%. Sometimes it may like go kind of like off screen a little bit, but yeah, it's... Yeah. Rob, Rob's still smiling at the like end of the scenario. There's shenanigans going on here. But it's usually <laughs> no, always whatever, on stream. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> I would never want anyone to say, like... <sighs> if it ever got down to it again, I'll repeat it again. One of the, one of the recommendations we first got in this game, somebody said they play at home to make sure, you know, I forget who it was, they said their wife or their friends or whatever, to keep them playing, to keep them coming back, to keep the game hitting the table, they had to come to a house rule. And the house rule was, and they recommended to us, if it ever gets there, is... The first time the red token comes out of the bag, it stays out of the bag for the rest of the scenario. That's just the way it is. It's the way they play. That's how they keep enjoying the game. And I'm all for it. We don't do it yet. But if it ever came to that, I might, you know, it's lately pulling it like three times or four times per player in a scenario sometimes um, is a little rough. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, maybe. But then it also adds, adds the tension to the game. And then if you take that away, the game doesn't feel the same. I'll be honest, too. But, yeah, you still can fail. But it's like, in that case, maybe replace the red with, like, a minus, depending on the difficulty, a minus five, six or something, you know, or four, just to have another way you could fail, but you could still, if you put all your eggs in one basket, you still could pass, you know, it doesn't just wreck you right. because you put too much in or whatever. Uh, but, yeah. Okay. Shuffled. Oh, mulligan, right? Five? So I'll put this over here, put this over here. Five cards, what I get? So I'm looking for boxing gloves, basically. Oh, emergency cash. I like where this is going. Now, see, this is a card I know. This is when Yogi says, don't worry, there's cards in there you've used. I know emergency cash. I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, okay, so I have second wind, which sounds like a win more card. Uh, play it, it only if it's your first action. Oh, there's the heal. That's not a win more. Stand together. Choose another investigator at your location. Both you and that investigator. Oh, this is good to have at the beginning. Oh, that's a great, great card. Uh, keeping. Tetsu, Tetsu, Tetsu Mori. Maybe assign damage and or horde dealt to other investigators at your location. Doesn't happen often in our playthroughs usually, but we might be together in some of these if they're linear. Uh, when Tetsu Mori is defeated, choose an investigator at your location. That investigator searches either a discard pile or the top nine cards of their deck for an item asset, adds it to their hand, shuffle their deck. 
if it's search. I feel like this is one of the ones that was listed in the keep it if whatever. Let's see, where's my deck? And there it is. Yeah, Tatsumori is there. Uh, and then we have Counterpunch and Emergency Cash. So, I mean... As who is a keep, says Yogi. I, I think so, but, like, do I keep, like, Emergency Cash just to, like, pay for him, you know what I mean? And it, like, doesn't hurt my other resources, but then it also reduces my likelihood of seeing Boxing Gloves. Yeah, I'm going to toss it just to get resources later. How much is Boxing Gloves, though, if I do run into it? It costs three also. However, though, this, if you did play this. Oh, yeah, I have this. I have this. Yes, yes, that does give money and cards. Yeah, that would So be this nice. sets aside, yep. and then I draw. Yep. Stand together again. Prepare for the worst. My search for a gun when I don't have a gun card, or boxing gloves. For my Are boxing gloves a weapon? Yeah, oh, yes. and an item, I think. Oh. And if you're not boxing, you're smoking. So I found a smoking pipe. Uh, uses three supplies, free action, spend one supply, exhaust smoking pipe, take one damage to heal one horror. Oh, I, yeah, that makes sense. This, is, this keeps me from losing my mind when I see a, a character have less sanity than their damage. I automatically start getting worried in any Arkham Horror themed game. I like to play with the higher blue. Mm -hmm. The red I never cared about as much. But as even as possible is good. So this card definitely helps offset that. I love that. It does seem like you have some other heal cards as well. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No boxing gloves. Mm -hmm. They're shuffle. they're just right here. This these two? Uh oh, it'll be those two after I shuffle. Let's let's just look for fun. No, okay, it's not there. Were they okay. the next one you would have drawn? Uh no. no, okay. <laughs> got a weakness. What do we got? Oh, they're oh, they're okay. a bunch down. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have drawn into them, but okay. Just good to know. It was fun. It was fun to see your deck <laughs> laughing at you. Okay, get in there. Get in there. Okay. So we're going to do a little mix. And then we're going to do a little pile shuffle. Do you want to be lead investigator or do you want me to be lead investigator? Uh, you can. So anything that punishes a lead investigator is not me. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we don't need you going more insane and hating the game even more. Yeah, yeah. I love watching you fail. That, that brings me joy. But wait, that makes me fail too. Damn it! Oh, Edgar says, Sinclair is your worst nightmare. He has six health and six sanity. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's low. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. A seven <laughs> and seven. You played Sinclair though, didn't you? I don't remember. That's I don't know who the, that is. That's the older gentleman? Is that right? I don't know. I don't know. I think that might be. Okay, John. Boop, boop, boop. Next. It's a butler. Yeah, okay, it's a butler from the expansion. You did play him, I think. Oh, probably. No, I played Carson, maybe. Oh. I think Carson is what I played. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think we're good. All right. Okay, campaign setup instructions. Probably have some reading to do. You're now ready to begin at the prologue, page five, page five, okay. I'm excited. File 5A prologue, riddles and rain. Intro one. The dark stifles. It moves like a living creature, constricts the air as if you were inside a shapeless cocoon. A figment of your anxious and overactive imagination, you hope. But everything about you, uh, or sorry, everything about this meeting puts your nerves on edge. You almost didn't accept the mysterious invitation, but recent events have forced your hand. It's been several months since the disappearances began, and all of your leads in Arkham have dried up. It started in the winter of 1924 with several vehicles in Southside, two Studebakers, a Cadillac, and a Rolls Royce, all of them top of the line. One moment they were there, the next, nothing save for a single deflated wheel 
The police believed it to be the work of bootleggers looking for more vehicles to add to the routes. But the cars were too nice, would draw too much attention. Perhaps they were taken down to Boston or New York and flipped for a pretty penny. And that's just what you figured happened until the disappearances continued. Next to go was a street lamp outside the Ward Theatre in downtown. Then two pets, a dog and a cat. Whiskey away, or sorry, whisked away almost simultaneously right from under their owner's noses, not two doors down from one another. You learned the news when you saw the missing posters plastered all over College Street. On a whim, you interviewed the owners. No sign of foul play, and it was unlikely for them to have run away. Something stank about all of it. The people started to disappear. A child from Easttown, a student in Mississippi University, the chief of Arkham's fire department, and as the police closed each case with no clues or suspects, a curious thing began to happen. One by one, as time marched on, the things that went missing vanished not only from Arkham, but from memory. The owners of those vehicles suddenly claimed to have never owned them. The pets, the people, all of them wiped from the memories of every single person in town. Everyone but you. You, and you alone, remembered. Perhaps it was simply the way of things. Humans are fickle and forgetful by nature. But it couldn't be so simple. It was just too strange. Coincidental. That's when the letter arrived. Now I will read the letter. Greetings. I hope this letter finds you well. You do not know me, but I know you. I cannot tell you much through paper correspondence, as it may be intercepted. Suffice it to say that I know of the matters you were looking into, and I also know that you believe yourself to be alone in your investigation. The truth is that you're not alone. Such events are not unique to your city of Arkham. What you have observed happening in major city is happening in major cities all over the world. I am one of those, like you, who seeks the truth, who remembers. There is another related matter, which I must bring to your attention. I need your help, and you need mine. Enclosed is a ticket to show at the Riv Riverview Theater. If you wish to know more, please meet me there, and we can speak further. Come alone. In truth, Lee Flint. Sounds like a letter from The Watcher. <laughs> the Watcher! <laughs> I hope you're enjoying yourself at, I forget the address. <laughs> I don't know, 165 something. Yeah. Uh, it's Boulevard. Yeah, Boulevard. Some, yeah. Watching your children through the window, <laughs> and they look great. Oh, gosh. The ticket in the envelope was indeed for a private showing at Arkham's new movie palace in downtown. With no other leads and a good reason to avoid going, you have decided to accept the mysterious invitation. Rules text. If there is only one investigator in the game, proceed to intro two. If there is more than one investigator in the game, the lead investigator must decide. Choose one. Go alone as requested. Skip to intro three. Or go with backup. Skip to intro four. Well, we have more than one lead investigator yeah. here. So this sounds... I'll just break a tie. That's this sounds... Yes, this sounds like a vote. Wow. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, I'm going to put a poll in the live chat. If you're watching uh, live, you can vote and decide which way we go. Well, I sip some coffee. Hmm. And yes, Charlie was the guy that I was thinking that you had played. That's who I was thinking. But it was, I was... Yeah, I played the neutral, rich politician guy. Yes, and that's who I was thinking Sinclair And these guys, was. all these guys, we've... The, the, so Claire's the butler, we've seen him before. Uh, I don't know, in like Arkham 3rd Edition, Manage the Madness. All these guys we've seen before in like Elder Sign, Manage the Madness, 2nd Edition, Arkham Horror, the 3rd Edition, well, Eldritch Horror. Like, they're all in every game, and they slowly are adding new ones to the games, but they're adding them to like all the games, which is fun. Um... Mike, I'm not saying what I would have done. You're going to vote, and then I will only vote in case of a tie. Yeah. As the actual lead investigator. <laughs> Mike's a blind Mel fanboy <laughs> sheep over here. Just goes with the crap. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I will not say. Okay, uh, I'm going to close the poll, and we'll go with the, with the majority uh, votes. So get your votes in. I guess I'll give it like a couple more seconds, because there's a delay. And thank you. Thank you, everyone that voted, of course. I'm going to end the poll. And it is 50-50, <laughs> you damn trolls. All right. Thank you, everyone that okay. voted. I will go with backup. Yeah, I'm not going alone. We need 
I need help. I also <laughs> worry that it'll break us up or something. Mike has no shame. <laughs> nice. All right. Thanks, Mike. Uh, that is so funny. So what are we doing? We're going with backup. Okay, going with backup. Whatever one that was. So I think the difference was either Mel plays the game solo and I watch, oh. or I get to play with her. Maybe and that. Half, half the people wanted that to happen. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. <laughs> If you thought that way, it would have definitely gone one way over, over the other. For sure. <laughs> yeah, we would have been going alone for sure. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. So you're going with backup? Yes. Skip to intro four, which is the next page. Which is also cool because if you're playing solo, it would have automatically sent you somewhere. Mm -hmm. So that's cool for just variety, right? For people playing on their own. Yeah, I wonder. It may put us to the same spot in the end. But... All right. Intro four. Just as you're beginning to suspect that you have been played, you see a shadow approaching from the aisle. The figure spots you at once, sliding into the seat in front of your party. He wears a wide, horn-rimmed glasses and a high-collared jacket over a silk vest. His brown hair is cut short and parted to one side. He, and he sports a handsome, neatly trimmed beard. To your relief, no other figures emerge from the shadows. I thought I told you to come alone. The man in front of you speaks without turning, letting his voice carry over the silent images on screen. The hard edge in his voice suggests he is not happy with your choice, but after a moment, he relents. I get it. You are prudent to not to trust me. You should trust no one, under the circumstances, myself included. You ask if you're speaking to Lee Flint, earning a slight nod from the man. Indeed, he says, Inspector Lee Flint, with the International Criminal Police Commission. And I'm sure you have a great many questions, but we are unfortunately short on time. Proceed to intro four, or five, five, five. Flint proceeds a file fat with documentation and slides it between the two seat cushions in front of you. Inside is a wealth of information regarding cases similar to the ones you have been investigating. Photos of vehicles, factory machines, and public figures all missing, all forgotten. And just as Flint's letter promised, the file includes reports from all over the world. London, Shanghai, Bruges, Rio de Janeiro, Cairo, and all the other locations on the pandemic map for the board game. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, the list goes on and on. There's more, he says, after giving you the time to read. Flip to the end. You do, and what greets you there are two photographs clipped together. The first is of a street in London, distorted by some sort of interference. A light shines above the street corner, and around it, the picture appears to be pinched, like a miniature vortex is pulling reality toward it. The other is a photograph of a man on the other side of that same street corner, ducking into the shadows. He wears a tailored gray suit and a wide-brimmed hat that obscures his face. The only, only discernible detail you can make out from the photograph is the man's distinct red gloves. Oh. Rare as it is for a photograph to have color, you wonder if the long exposure time is what led to the strange blurring effect. This was taken by my partner several days ago, just before he too vanished. Whatever is going on, you can be sure that the man with the red gloves is somehow involved. Getting to the point, you ask Inspector Flint what exactly he wants from you. To work together, share what we know. Sparingly, few seem to know the truth. You agree. If what the man says is true, and events like this one are happening all over the world, getting to the bottom of it will require more than just you. To that end, I would ask that you come to London with me. That man with the red gloves has been sighted in the area, and he's not alone. I would bet good money that he knows something about where my partner is. Arrangements have already been made. There are steamship tickets in the file. The ship departs from Boston in two days. The investigators must decide. Choose one. Option A, take his offer. Option B, go to London on your own terms. I smell another pole. Okay. Mm. Boom. Poll is in the chat. Go ahead and vote. Interesting. And those will be two different intros, either intro six or intro seven. We go and read. We'll leave that. Blanky Cat says, I trust this guy. You do, but he clearly told us not to trust him. But again, I don't know. <laughs> you guys are funny. All right. 
I'll just leave it up for a minute and then I'll close it. Uh, but yeah. Hmm. Without saying, would you have a way you would have chosen? Yeah, I, I'd take his offer. I'd trust him. Oh, always trust people who told you not to trust them. Okay. Oh. That's. I wish, light, I, light I, wish you know, I wish you knew that seven campaigns ago. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. All right, I'm closing the poll. Thank you, everyone that voted. If it's cheese, then I don't trust him. <laughs> Says Yogi. <laughs> okay, we have 66% that say take his offer. All right, take his offer okay, leads us choice. to. Okay. I wasn't sure about this one. Intro six. You accept the file and tell the inspector Flint that you'll report to him with anything you find. With haste, you get your affairs in order and take the very next train to Boston. Flint has already given you more evidence to advance your case than a month of investigation in Arkham. If working together with the ICPC will help you solve this mystery, you have no qualms about putting your trust in him. You make it to London with time to spare and immediately set to work. So rules text says, trust is born of naivety. Naivety? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to say that word, but like basically being naive, I guess. It says, remove one Elder Thing token from the Chaos Bag and, et, and add one Tablet token. This token can be later removed through an act of secrecy. However, you may become stronger if you stick to your convictions. Whatever the hell that means, okay. that's in brackets, okay? So I'm taking out... You're taking out an Elder Thing here. Yep, I just dumped them out. So You're I'm taking, taking out, out an Elder Thing yeah, and yeah. adding a Tablet. A, a Tablet, yes. <laughs> it was still there everyone all right all right going back in the bag yeah yeah right, so right, we, right. Can, we can lose that tablet later okay this token can later be removed through an act of secrecy however you may become stronger if you stick to your convictions okay so we got to stay on the same path of trusting so yes then. just keep trusting, keep trusting him and you may become stronger can. okay so you'll get benefits from trusting him you'll get some buffs but then this is the punishment for doing that to balance the game, okay? okay? If you want to get rid of this, you can try to get rid of it, but you'll piss him off and lose your ben his benefits. Okay, read the rules for tracking time on the next column, and then mark one time in your campaign log now, then proceed okay. to set up. Let me get my campaign log. <laughs> uh, so tracking time. Throughout this campaign, tracking the passage of time is crucial importance. As time marches on, the paranormal events will grow more and more dangerous, and machinations... I'm not saying that right, am I? I don't know. I think that's the word I keep mispronouncing. I forget. Machinations, that's right. Is it machinations? Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay. Beyond your understanding will progress. Additionally, some opportunities may only be open during certain windows of time. When you're instructed to mark one or more time in your campaign log, fill in that many boxes under the time pass header. Uh, if you fill in a box that has a symbol in the form of a Greek letter, proceed to the status report section of the campaign guide on page 69. Find the status report matching that letter and read the text that follows. So if we go to the campaign log that I did not print out or photocopy yet, uh, there's this. So time passed. So once we get to seven, we'll, we'll mark off our first letter. And then it's saying go to 69, which has some stuff here. I'm purposely keeping far away from the screen. I can't see it. Uh, hopefully you can't read it. But there's like little letters there that will tell us to go there. Okay. By seven. That's what I'm getting. I'm just from. kind of making that little table well, for now. Well, I'll, I'll do it later, and then, well, you could just transfer it. Just mark time and just put little jots. You, no, please don't write that out. Okay. We'll just keep referring to this every time you put a mark in, and we just won't write on here. It's fine. We'll transfer it all over after. I'm sure not that much time will pass in this but first session. But then we're going to have to keep referring to that to know when we hit a marker. I, I don't know if it'll That's what it, I yeah. just said. So we'll okay. do that. All right. Okay. So it said mark one, right? Yes, please. Okay, done. All right. So... Yeah, so mark one time in your campaign log now and then proceed to set up. Okay, set up. So now we're gonna, you're going to watch us set up live on stream, as exciting and entertaining as that's going to be for us to hunt through cards and play the game of finding hidden cards and watching me endlessly search for Lita. All right. <laughs> uh, gather all cards from the following counter sets Riddles and Rain, Crimson Conspiracy, Dark Veiling, Outsider, Shadow of a Doubt, Strange Happenings, Chilling Cold, Locked Doors, The Midnight Mass. These are sets are indicated by the following icons. Holy crap, that's a lot. Holy crap, that's a lot. When gathering the Midnight Mass Encounter set, only gather the five treachery cards, two false lead. I think that's all I pulled out from there anyway. 
Um, okay. So midnight mass I know is at the back here with all the corset stuff somewhere. Yeah, so we're gonna see like classic ones we used to play with, like you know, the obscuring fog, the chill, the dissonant voices, frozen in fear. There's no rats, uh, locked doors oh. are a thing again. That's funny. So we're getting to see a lot of corset annoyances, the night gaunt stuff, the acolytes throwing doom on everything, being annoying. That little like doom boss one that runs around doom on him. Yeah, so lots of uh, classic old corset cards, uh, ancient evils, you know, place one doom and then check if it advances. Yeah, I don't like that one. Yeah, yeah. So th these cultists are a thing here. They're coming back. Oh, here it is. False lead. False leads and hunting shadows are coming out of the Midnight Mask uh, scenario. Okay. Are there any? Oh, yeah. I should just grab locked doors. That was one of them <laughs> as I'm looking through them. Derp a derp. What are the other ones from the court? Oh, chilling. The chill one we need. Chill one we need. Yes. Chill one, which has four cards. Uh, we also need the locked doors. And those are the only familiar ones I can see. So locked doors are a thing. Okay. And then I'm going to sort through the ones that I shuffled that should be in this table, other than the actual scenario, which was Riddles and Rain. Nope. Riddles and Rain, the first one. Look at that. If I go from left to right, that makes sense. Assuming I even have the box. Right. Oh, box top. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, all right. Just have a tab on them or anything. I don't feel such things. They are loose. Whatever. Okay. Riddles in rain. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, we got some locations. We got some other fancy cards. Okay, uh, now that is the bird face. So now I need to look for. Oh, here we go. Telephone is right in order. Oh man, if they put these like all at the beginning, that's amazing. Yes. Uh, this one's in there. Yes. No, they didn't. Okay, never mind. Oh, knives in the dark. Oh, geez. Uh, there's four in that set. Just to make sure we have them all. Yep, yep. Four from this set. No, I don't see that one. Don't see that one. This one I see is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I think that should be all. One. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're missing one. Nine. Oh, nine. Okay. Right? Okay. Yep. So there's that many more side sets. That's nuts. I love it. All right. Okay. Uh, and then it says, oh, oh, okay, sorry. No, that's from the Midnight Mass. Never mind. Uh, set the Crimson Conspiracy and Outsiders Encounter sets aside out of play. Now, I guarantee they put this on the back. I, I feel like, I don't know, Edge of the Earth had this or whatever. But how many times, you know, you have to look at this table and it's hard to line them up and like figure oh, out. Yeah. I love that I can just do this now. I just flip here and go. Add them out. Dang. Yeah. So Crimson Conspiracy and Outsiders are... Outsiders is the eyeball ones, okay. and Crimson Conspiracy is the old telephone ones. It's a light post. Oh, this one. Oh, it's even the girl using one. Look at, I love it. I love it. Look at this. Hello, operator. Mm -hmm. Can you connect me to? Okay, so these are the two that are set aside. Or where, whatever that said. Uh, Sorry. Set aside out of play. Okay. So those come in later if bad things happen, I'm sure. Okay. Put the rainy London streets location into play. Each investigator begins play at the rainy London streets. Set a, each other location aside out of play. Oh, we're, uh -oh. we're wandering around. Oh, yeah. Okay. I like it. I don't know what's happening. Set the red gloved man enemy and the eye of Raven Key aside out of play. Uh, 
Gather each decoy mini card in each of the following mini cards. Red gloved man. How do you say this word? I Kotiri. I'm not 100% on the Cautery? the phonetic spelling of this. When I read it in the uh, Is it not like Cotier or something like Yeah, like a French something thing? like that. I don't know exactly. Cotier. Uh A B and C we need. A B and C, okay. Coat. <laughs> Cot. Each decoy mini card. Okay, so. Oh, Carmen San Diego's in this one? Oh, looks like it. Okay, decoy. Oh, these are different. Oh, okay, one sec. I'm assuming it's just the ones that say decoy on them. Holy, okay. I, yeah, I think it's good odds of it yeah, being a decoy, I, I, right? I don't know, like, are these also decoy cards that have actual names of enemies on them? I don't know. Shoot. I would say not. Are you sure? Because it's still a decoy card. There's four of them that have enemy names or something on them. Maybe, maybe that brings something in. But they were, like, completely separate from this deck. They were, like, in the mix in the middle here. I'm just going to keep them separate, I think. They're probably later. Coterie? 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 Just normal decoys. Okay, I'm just okay. doing normal decoys. Seems right because they were separated. They were like in their own section of the deck of cards there. Okay. So they're set aside, out of play. I'm going to put the other concealed cards back in the bag. So not to mix them up. Uh, shuffle the remaining encounter cards to build the encounter deck. You're now ready to begin. Oh, so there's no encounter cards from this scenario yet. Interesting. Because, oh, yeah. So we don't even have to sleeve anything extra because I already sleeved all the side ones. That's weird. Yeah, let's throw this off to the side. Okay. Okay, I guess whatever, something like that. All right, so let's just look at this and we'll read our, uh, what's going on on our acts and agendas. Yeah, shuffle those are very good, yeah, uh, many times, different, different piles. piles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Riddles and rain, we're playing on easy, so the skull does minus one, but minus three instead if you have two or more clues. Oh, okay. Uh, then the tablet, which we now have an extra in there, right? Yep. Does minus one. If there's a concealed mini card at your location, reveal another chaos token. And then the elder we do not thing, have. which we don't have. Yeah, which is minus three. So that's good. You must either spend. Okay, so we don't have to deal with this one, but that's what it would do. I mean, we might get one in the middle of the camp, in the middle of the scenario, even. Who knows? Yeah. But for now, we don't care. Oh, Nick, thank you. Nick says, uh, the other enemy decoy ones are for a different scenario. You just want the normal decoy ones. Okay. Okay. I thought so, but I was like, they do say decoy on them. You never know. Okay. Thank you for the help, everybody. Okay. Uh, so let's check our uh, agenda. When it rains, mm -hmm. you get an umbrella, right? That's how that finishes? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's lots of umbrellas uh, in the background. Arrive, arriving in London, you patiently await your contact, but none arrives. Inspector Flint, or one of his proxies, was supposed to meet you at a quiet tea house tucked away in a narrow storefront just outside of Trafalgar Square. Wondering what could have gone wrong and suspecting the worst, you set off to investigate. Forced. When this agenda advances, move all doom on it to the next agenda. It's literally two. Two? Whoa. What is this junk? So this is literally just the start. It's going to get through that real fast. Clues and capas, see? Uh, act 1A. You draw your umbrella closer, using it to observe, uh, obscure, obscure your identity. Each person you pass on the street could be your contact, or maybe out to get you. Objective. As a group, 
spend the requisite number of clues to advance before the agenda advances. Oh God. We need four clues before two doom happen? Yeah, right. That's not how we roll. But don't worry. Uh, Yogi built us great decks and they're gonna just automatically win us the game right, without any us screwing it up at all. So it'll be great. <laughs> just kidding. Let me just uh, do a little, little action here. Okay. Yes, please. Okay. Well, I guess we can look at this location we are at. Maybe this is gonna have 17 clues that are free. Cold rain pelts the dreary streets in a rhythmic pitter-patter. Despite the hour, the square is bustling with automobiles, carriages, and pedestrians. Somewhere in this crowded city is the man you seek. Are you already too late? So it looks like it's eventually going to connect to four locations. So we're going to have some options where to go here. Okay, they're easy to get. One shroud, four clues. Okay. Ah, we, we win. We just have to do it. Should we just skip this one because we win it already? Because we're so awesome. Yeah, there are still red tokens in that bag. <laughs> Rainy London streets gets, oh wait, plus X shroud. X is the current act number, so it gets oh, worse. It gets so worse, it's so. only act one. Forced, if there are no clues on Rainy London streets, add clues to it until it has two clues on it. And if we just don't want to play this one, we could resign right now for one action. We should wait for Inspector Flint. Okay, so this is going to start with two shroud because it gets plus one. Am I the only one that wants to just resign for the lulls? Really? Like, wouldn't that be like, Epic? it's there. We could. Yeah, but I feel like we're not going to get any victory. We're not going to get any. I know. It's very bad, I'm staff. sure. Obviously, it's not what you should do, but it's there. It's there. And we could wait for him because we trust him so much and we need him to show up. But he might be so proud of us if we collect some information on our own because he's given us everything so far. We've done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's someone out there who did it. I know there's someone who's just like, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's play the next one. <laughs> I wish happens. I had a way to get more than one clue. Imagine it's just like, you're, if you don't have anything done, your investigation ends. You waited too long and someone came and killed you. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, let's speed run it. <laughs> Okay, uh, who's going first? Do you have ways of getting clues? No, just the normal way. So I could go first to help choose another investigator at your location. Both you and that investigator gain resources a couple times. I am thinking normally we and, take this first round as a setup round, but yeah, I'm yeah. thinking maybe we should actually try to get some of these off. Yeah, but... Uh, we have two turns, so... Okay. I don't know. But like maybe do like I only have turn. two, two against one. I mean, two against two because it's uh, it's the shroud plus the. Oh the yeah, sorry, it's that. two. So I'm two on two. I'm three on two. And I don't really want to use my two cards that have uh, intellect icons on them. Are okay. are my searching for boxing gloves and my tetsumore. Okay, then I'll try. Yeah, yeah, but should I go first so I can give you yeah, some sure. resources? You know what I mean. Sure. So that's what I'm saying. Like I understand one round of setup because the next round. But again, it but could, if enemies jump on us, I worry. I know. Then I fight the enemies while you keep searching. So yeah. I will keep searching. Yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna fail tests, so it's like pointless. Yep. But we do have lots of pluses in there, right? You put the extra ones. Okay. Uh, all right. Choose an investigator at your location. Both you and that investigator. Uh, one sec. I guess I should search first. Because I I'll play one of these for sure, but it's, it's I don't know if I should play both unless like I don't find my thing. So I think I'm gonna do this. Search the top nine cards of your deck for a weapon asset. Add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. Okay. <sighs> Spent one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There they are. <laughs> nine. Jeez Louise, I was like going to lose my mind already. <laughs> Alright, add it to your hand, boxing gloves, shuffle your deck. Okay. Bon yeah, Bob says, yes Rob, you're the only one that wants to resign for the lulls. We want to see you suffer first. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, exactly. But you don't think I would suffer from the punishment from resigning without getting anything done? I'm sure it would definitely, definitely hurt. I'm sure. And then set us up for better failure next time. I know, right? 
Okay. That's action one. Action two, I need to play boxing gloves for three. And then in a play stand together event, choose another investigator at your location. Both you and that investigator gain two resources. Thank you. And then I'm gonna chill. Go ahead. Okay. It's three action, right? Yeah. Just double check. <laughs> Like I want to get one pickpocketing into play for sure this turn. Yeah, in yeah, case set it up. Me. But I'm gonna do some. So I'm gonna spend two, which is from you, thank you, for a pickpocketing to get that into play. Oh yeah, yeah. I want... and we would have no XP to upgrade cards. I know, and you're, right? You'd be crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. The deck will never get upgraded. No. Okay, I'm gonna wait on the other one. I am gonna do an investigate. I can't do her ability because I don't. I don't have other. I only have one card I can commit. The other ones are all uh, agility. So. Um. Let's just do a three on two. Mm -hmm. Let's just do a three on two. This is action two. If I can get one or two of them this turn and then one or two of them next turn, zero, we got it. Okay. So then for action three, I probably should do it again in case an enemy does come. And I need to spend actions to evade it and stuff. Yeah, let's do it again. I should have done that quick thinking last time. I wish I did. Quick thinking is if you succeed by two or more, which I would have, you can do another action. Yeah, but that you're only up by one, so that's kind of risky. But it would give me, an, yeah, yeah. So we're just yeah, doing but another that's like you would not normally do that. I know. You just three like on, hindsight, right? Yeah. Three on two. The bag is just a little more gentle. Minus one. Okay, I'm good. Two, and that's my turn done. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess we can just. All right. Oh, yeah, I gotta get my thing ready. Yeah, this will help me. Okay. Enemies? No enemies. Okay. Uh, reset. reset. Oh, flip. <laughs> Woo! And then ready any cards? And then. Draw a card, gain a resource. Card. Best part of the game. Oh, come on! Oh, good. If I do Suffering that. begins. Self destructive, oh, no. basic weakness. Revelation, put it into play in your threat area. Force, when you deal one more damage to an enemy, take a damage. Well, my next turn is going to be getting rid of that, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, then a resource. I did get the one that I can pass to you, but it does have a, a, a book. Did I forget to pay for what? I only, he gave me two resources. And I have a doom. Yes. Rob gave me two resources. Pickpocketing question I mark. First. Okay. Oh, maybe you can't see them. Pick Sorry. Pickpocketing question mark. It's after you evade. What's you can also put resources like over here. If you can look on the screen, you can see. Yeah, but I didn't realize I had two down here. And did I... you do pickpocketing? Drawing cards or something? After you evade an enemy. So oh, there's no enemies yeah, yeah. right now. Stand together. I don't know what you're saying. All right. I'm just reading the chat. I don't get it. No, I, I'm sorry. I'm confused. All right. Uh, the doom doesn't advance. Oh, he's saying stand together, page for pickpocketing. I got it, I got it, I got it. We're, we're on the right track. Let's all stand together with this, okay? Let's get on the same page. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize you couldn't see those bottom ones as well. Okay, I'm going to draw you a card because you're a lead investigator, yeah? Yes, please. Peril. Oh, it's peril. Figures in the dark. Revelation. If there are no enemies in the shadows, figures in the dark gain surge. Otherwise, you must decide. No. Okay. Crypt chill, revelation, and test willpower. Looking for four. If you fail, choose and discard one asset you control. If you cannot, take two damage instead. I can throw this to you, but you only have three. I don't want to lose my boxing gloves. Don't yeah, you dare no. do that to I me. I guess I got additional pickpocketing in my back. back. Oh my god. I'm doing a negative test here. I have one. I'm failing for sure, so... I guess I'm losing pickpocketing. I shouldn't have done that. You're doing, you have one? Yeah. I have, I can put one additional in, but there's not a plus two. I can two. put one, but no. it's a peril. Oh, yeah, you already did the peril, never mind. Okay. That's okay. And the pain sets in early. Yes, Joseph. Yep. Yes, it begins. That was quick. Told you we should have resigned. Minus one. So I had zero on four. So I fail. So choose and discard one asset you control. Wow. Okay. My card. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, well, I'm testing three. I'm going to make it four with a stand together. Five with the smoking pipe. Any help? No? Uh, I can... It's okay. You don't have to if it's... Yeah. No. Okay. 
Uh, I think you're good. Minus one. If there's a concealed mini card on your location, reveal another. Oh, yeah. God, nice. Okay, good. Ugh. Oh, that was expensive, but I, I, had, to pass. Do, I had to do it. Save the balls, boxing gloves. Okay, now we know, but we've seen both of them. I think there's three of those. Whatever. You're Canadian, aren't you immune to chill? No, that is not correct. I did shuffle. We just know how to deal with it. Uh, it's, in, it's We're raised to deal with the chill. Yes, we did shuffle. We, I piled shuffled different. I shuffled and then Rob did a quick it's fine. also shuffle. It's fine. It just happened. Yeah, I was shuffling there a bit too. Yep. It's all good. Okay. Got chilly. Hopefully it's not chilly anymore. I don't know how many copies of those there are, but I think only two because it's one of four in, or one of four in the set. Oh, there so I feel like, the, no, the other two are um, the fog, I think, right? From that set? Obscuring fog. Okay. All right. Uh, do you want me to go and see if I can get the yeah. other two? All I'm going to do on my turn is play Tetsu and uh, get rid of this. So oh, I'm not, then go I'm ahead. Not go ahead. You go I'm ahead. not getting clues. But I would if you somehow can't get them off and we're desperate. So you should go okay. first. All right. First action. We're going to try to get a clue. This time I'm going to put in this quick thinking. Could give me an extra action. We're going to put in two cards. So I have three or five. Five on two. Minus, minus one. one. Three instead if you have two or more clues. So this is minus three? Yep. So I think I'm five on five then. Three, four, five on five. Wow, so I still good. got it. But no, not extra like not you're looking extra, for. Not extra, so that doesn't go back. Okay. And oh, then wow. uh, if two different non-weakness cards you control are committed to the test, draw one card. Nice. Got a gun. All right, I can do one more. I don't even have to pass the test. I just have to commit to you. You can actually do this before you finish resolving. I, th I think it's like as soon as you commit them, I'm assuming you can do it oh, right then. Okay. So then you could draw into a card that could it, help. I don't know if you can put it in because I think you passed the committing. But I feel like you could have something in your hand that maybe could help. Oh, you. like if you were playing with like a look what I found and you failed to test and things I like that? I think so. Oh, you draw before you pick them. Yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I will do that going forward. I think so. Sorry. Okay. And then now I'm going to do it one more time. See if I can get this. Just a three on one. I don't have anything I can put in. Yeah, three on one. Or three on two. Sorry, I'm up one. Minus one, I think, right? Yep. So I don't have concealed mini cards at our location, so you don't reveal another token. Okay, and I still have one more action. Oh, we have all four. Is that a when? Objective. As a group, spend the requisite number of clue tokens. So I think you do this at any time. Do you want to do it now? Yes. Because okay. in case something happens, we'll have more information. Okay, spend them. Oh, yeah, sorry. And I'm advancing. Okay. And then I think we have to do something else, too, so I'll remember. I think we have to put them on here, so I'm just going to do this so I remember. If there are no clues on this, add clues until it has one. Point. Yeah, just put them on, whatever. Okay, putting two it's back fine. here. It's forced. Uh, you spot the figure on the other side of the street just as a bright red bus approaches. If you're, uh, you were certain, whoever was, whoever there was, that is, man, this italicized tiny text is killing me. You were certain whoever... You're certain whoever was there was staring directly at you. The bus cuts a swath through the foggy street, and when it has passed, the figure is gone. Perhaps it is just your paranoia at work, but it cannot be a coincidence. It must have either been your contact or one of their foes. Perhaps even the reason they are missing. Stealing yourselves for any possibility, you set off in chase. Put the set aside Kensington Gardens. Westminster Abbey and Big Ben locations into play. Big Ben, Westminster Abbey, and Kensington Gardens. We can use some of these if we need to. Okay, so it looks like they all connect back. Two of them connect to each other. So this connects to this, this connects to this. These both get connected to from this and back. And then this one, though, is its own, just connects to and from this, but not to the others. Okay. If that makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. The lead investigator draws the set aside red gloved man enemy and resolves its concealed keyword. 
Here we go. Mm -hmm. Mini card time. That was fast. Well, he's not in play yet. We got to now hunt him down. But then now the tablet token, uh, if there's concealed mini cards at your location, you have to reveal another token. So it's minus one plus whatever. Okay. Okay. The red glove man. He's going to be set aside near the agenda deck. He is a five to fight, four health, and five to evade. Humanoid. Cauteria. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Cauteri. 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 Elite. Concealed. Two. So he is going to be, his mini card is going to be shuffled with two decoys. And then we're going to spread them out amongst the nearest locations. And he has retaliate. The only detail I could remember was his gloves. Red. Red as blood. So we'll just put this like here. Okay, he's chilling. And then two decoys. And the red gloved man. Okay, I'm going to shuffle these under the table. So oh, I Ken, nice. Says, I made it home to watch. Been looking forward to it. Nice, nice. nice. Glad you made it. We've that only been through one turn so far. That makes one of us. No, I'm just joking. No, so far I'm excited. Awesome. This is fun so far. Yeah, yeah. So far. <laughs> so now, far. Now we're adding the mini cards, so I'm sure it's going to be... Go all downhill. I feel like we've never gotten through a uh, one act card in a uh, round and a half. So I feel like we're on track. We're doing what we're supposed to do. This is just the first scenario. <laughs> it's just, just easing us in. Oh, this, this red gloved man does have one victory point, which I know we would like to get. Okay. Uh, lead investigator. Okay. Uh, conceal keyword. Oh, it says in the brackets, spawn the red glove man in the shadows. Take his, oh, it's giving his rules text. Oh, cool. Take his mini card and two decoys, shuffle them face down, put them in play, divide it as evenly as possible among the locations nearest to the investigators. And then we'll advance the agenda in a second. So nearest to us, we do our current location. Okay. Then the t we can choose. Um, uh, let's choose these two. Okay, Westminster Abbey and Big Ben. Okay. okay, then, uh, what was the thing? Advance the agenda directly to Agenda 2A. Do not resolve Agenda 1B. Excellent, I love that kind of stuff. Ooh. Okay, so this one's gone. Okay, Agenda, okay, so we'll, we'll advance. Okay, hold on, let me, uh, I don't know which one to read next, like this one, or we'll read that in a second. Okay, I'm gonna put it like weird, so I remember. Okay. Do we clear shroud when we advance, or, or whatever this is called? Well, uh, that says, it says not to in this case. Oh, uh, when this agenda advances, move all doom. Oh, okay, okay. But normally, I, I think yeah, you I get you, I get you, I get you. Okay, so we go right to two A. Oh, I just wanted to note that Blinky Cat says also good job getting the clues before the agenda. Not even the designer did that in their live stream showing it off. Wow. Yeah, but Yogi Bear didn't make their decks, right? <laughs> so, you know, they didn't, they didn't, they don't read their chat. So they don't have their chat like helping them, mulligan Very and all that true. stuff. They, they suck at live streaming, okay? Very true. They, they don't zoom in on stuff good enough. You can't tell what's <laughs> happening. The audio's off. Half of them don't even know how to play. They all need to be doing work and they don't want to be there. And then uh, they don't read their chat usually, uh, except for like at the end to answer but then they usually only have pre-canned questions and they yeah. act like they're answering the chat, but they're really only answering like approved marketing questions they're allowed to answer. It doesn't feel very like um, connected. It could have been just pre-recorded is how I feel. But, uh, I but that's funny. Yeah. That, that's but my opinion. they also may have been doing something specific to not spoil things yeah, yeah. as well. Uh, okay, but... so uh, passing uh, 1B going right to 2A. Right. Oh, Yogi says their audio crashed during that live stream. Yeah, it's always <laughs> off. Like right away, yeah, I tune in. I, I always get the alerts. They go live. I tune in. Oh, this is a game I'm interested in. I start watching, and then their audio is like completely off. They're trying to demo cards, zoom in on them. And then the person who's running the stream is not switching to zoom in on the card. And then they put the card back on the table before. The, it's like, <laughs> okay, this is a mess. I can't see the table. I don't know what's going on. Uh, they're not explaining really what's happening. They're making jokes and not really playing. They're just like, you know, assuming you know what's going on. And it's like, man, they don't read their chat. It's just like, I'm out. One of these times they'll hire somebody who really knows what they're doing. And uh, yeah, instead of just letting go all the people that do. Or making them want to leave. Uh, all right. Figures in the fog. 
Your mind must be playing tricks on you. A misshapen figures dance through the dense London fog wherever the rain lets up. Are these distortions like the one in the photograph Inspector Flint showed you? Or is your quarry hiding in the mist and gloom? Forced, when this agenda advances, move all doom on it to the next agenda. Oh, there's only four threshold on this. It's already starting out with one. Okay. And then I'll read this one. The game is afoot. You choose a shadow shrouded by night. It might as well be a needle in a haystack, but still you search, hoping for any clue that might lead you to find the truth. Objective, chase down the mysterious figure before the agenda advances. If an investigator engages the red glove man, advance. Oh, that is cool. This is awesome. That is cool. Get him. Maybe we don't actually even have to fight him. Where do we think he is? I still have one more action. Get him. So if you are able to get a clue off there by passing the shroud value, we get to check that card. If you can evade against the shroud value, which currently is, oh, the act number is net higher. Oh. So this is a three. If you can evade a three or investigate against a three or fight against a three and succeed, you, we can check this card. And you don't get a clue, you don't beat an enemy, you don't evade an enemy. You just get to look at the card. And if it's a decoy, we discard it. So I could do something like this, like evade? Mm -hmm. And when this action begins, I gain two resources? Absolutely. And you're evading against a uh, three in this case. My, f I, my evade is five. Oh, Ken likes the investigators we chose. Wonderful. Yogi kind of chose them, but we gave him the restrictions like we wanted to play with like uh, more basic investigators, new player friendly, starter friendly, casual player friendly. But there are still some fun cards from later in the card pool in the decks and the upgrade paths, so it's kind of fun. Okay, before I'm going to do, I'm going to do that. But before I do that, I'm thinking about playing my gun for fast. Just in case we do have to fight him after he's revealed, yes. I won't yeah. have any more actions if and he, I won't be able he, to get this yes. in play. If he is there, he does, I, I forget if he engages you right away if you flip the card, or he just goes to location and we choose who he engages. I'll read that when that situation happens. Right, but I want to get this into play just in case. But yeah. It's fast, so I'm going to spend four. One, two, three, four. So it doesn't cause an action. Okay. Then I will sneak by which is an evade, so I'm gonna do an evade here. When the action begins, gain two resources. So my gun was half price today. Okay, and then we've done that, so Discount. I'm evading. Coupons. So it's five on three. I mean, I could put both of the, oh, I need to keep my pickpocket, so no. Uh, put one card in. Wish I could've got that in. Uh, Five, six, seven. I don't think I need that many. I don't have any clues. We do have a mini card, sorry. What does that, it just means draw another one, right? I think I'm just gonna go five on three. Okay. I'm up two, that's a good standard. Put in both, you think? Don't worry about- So you can draw, you do your thing, right? Okay, I thought Yogi wanted me to get pickpocketing in, but- It would I'll help you both. with drawing if you're evading. Maybe there's not many to fight. Or evade. So okay, we'll put in both. Maybe. So then I get to draw. Quick thinking, which I cannot commit, but that's fine. So now I'm five, six, seven, eight on three. Can you evade to reveal a concealed card? Yes. You can evade to fight or uh investigate. Ammo oh, ammo on my gun. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Forgot, forgot, forgot. I'm not used to playing with weapons. Yeah, you always have like one in the deck, but you never usually get it. I don't it. usually play with weapons. Uh, on a side note, the FFG stuff. So uh, I see, oh, they were playing on standard on stream. So that might explain why they didn't get all the clues right away. And uh, Yogi says their audio crashed during the live stream. The janitor did a really good job on that one. So obviously the janitor is was dealing with audio issues. And that's why they weren't able to also update the website with the PDF for the uh, scenarios, uh, the campaign and the campaign log. Uh, also, so now that makes sense if they're dealing with streaming issues also But hopefully with the embracer group owning Fantasy flight games and asthma day. Hopefully eventually they give them some budget again to actually like hire a proper department for media again and like Marketing and stuff and they can like get the live streams back to like Some kind of standard Decent. and imp improve them not just like be stagnant, you know, like They have some great products. They just suck at letting the world know about them, which is annoying I have no clue, so this is only minus one, right? Yes. So we're good. So I was eight on three. Alrighty, so. I'll let you peek. Decoy. 
No, I kind of wanted to be him, right? The red glove man. A decoy. No. Damn it, he's not here. Dang it. All right, my turn's done. Good luck. Go find him. 50 50. Well, I'm not going to be doing anything on my turn other than I said getting rid of this. Oh, yeah, true. I don't want to go find them and damage them, then I'm damaging myself. Nope, so two actions fine. to get rid of that. And then I'm going to pay three to play Tetsumori. And I have no cards in hand. That scares me. I don't like playing card games with no card game, cards in hand. I just want to read. Read and that's it. Okay, done. There's no enemies. Reset, flip, ready up cards, draw, gain money. Oh. Me. Okay, Doom on agenda, some business. Go ahead. Give you doom. That. Give Sorry, me the Doom. Red two, right? Uh, two out of four, yes. Alrighty. So, cards, your card from the bad deck. Okay, Peril, cool. Revelation, you must either choose one. Spend a clue or take two damage. I don't have any clues, so two damage it is. My card. Oh. Locked door. Revelation, attached to the location with the most clues and without a locked door attached to it. The attached location cannot be investigated. As a test for five for a fight, you can break down the door or evade it. Do a little kick action to pick the locks uh, or a foot action. You're like basically unlock it with your shoe. Uh, if you succeed, discard the lock door. Damage Clint. on that's so. What's his name? That's oh yes, he could take the damage. Oh, but it's fine. Then he's gone. Oh oh oh! I see what's going on here. This is the defeated thing. But then when he's defeated, I can choose an investigator location. And that investigator searches either discard pile or the top nine cards of their deck for an item asset. As of their hand, shuffles their deck. I don't know either of her decks well enough to know what I'm grabbing. But I could put, we could put one damage on right now. But if Yogi or anyone who's looking at our deck list knows like a huge play, I don't want to pick up my deck as they're looking through it. But uh, an item asset that Mel could grab, even from her discard. So if you want to get back something you've tossed. Well um, I could get back smoking pipe, but I don't, I don't think that's the play. My pickpocket's not an item. Oh, Jan yeah, Janice says get oh, back sorry. your pickpocket. Is it an item? No, sorry. Oh, it did work. Talent and illicit. Oh, it's an okay. asset, but not an yeah, item. I get it. I get it. I get it. No, not oh, an item. Search for, oh, search for my crystallizer. But that's again, the I'm thing only you're attaching thing. cards to, right? Yeah, which would. Yes, let's do this. But it's I... only in nine cards, right? Okay, so yeah, but let's get things. your engine. Let's try to get your engine going. So you're taking both those damage from Yeah, me. that's an expensive three cost search your deck, though, but hopefully it works. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Alrighty. Gun? No. Weakness? <gasps> oh, we got it, we got it, we got it! What's that? Do item. That noise? It's an item. It's an item. As an additional cost to put this card into play. So don't forget that part, but okay. here you go. And then these get shuffled back, right? Uh, yeah, shuffle their deck if searched. Okay. So if you only went to your discard pile, you don't have to shuffle your deck. Oh, we did have lock picks too there. Investigate, add your um, agility to your base value. I don't know, I feel like this crystallizer thing is part of your engine yeah. that will help you draw more and do all this okay. or whatever it was, play more skills to checks and win skills so like yeah we're let's try it that. out we're let's gonna try, try this new card i've never played with so i'm excited now i wish i didn't use all those events earlier <laughs> <laughs> you can use some actions to draw it maybe but uh okay we're good we're good and i have how many of those in here i just have a monster slayer in hand for anyone paying attention mm. okay uh, did I draw my card? No, probably not, because that'll happen. Yeah, how sh oh. shuffled did we do this, like, but for I, real? I, I'm shuffling the rest, like, multiple times Go now. ahead, but I dropped it multiple different I know, combos. I know, but I know it's not that big of a deck, but still. It's like lots of dupes. Just like, that's the... I know there's lots of duplicate cards in here, and, like, not that many cards. Let's just, hmm. okay, just a little quick jam it up. All right, Peril, you must either choose one. Spend one clue or take two damage. Two damage, please. Two damage, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't mind. Okay. I don't mind getting punched yeah. in the face. Oh, you have nine, okay. Right now. Okay. Oh, door was yours, no? Oh, door, thank yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. I forgot about the door. That's why I was looking around, like, what so did I do? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Thanks. I'll shuffle that back in. 
I forgot all about oh, the door. Oh, because we rewound after I'd already put the damage, and then we said. went on to yours, and then we yes. Yeah, I didn't know where we were. I, that's what I said. I didn't know where we were, but there's a delay on the chat. You know, you guys will eventually correct us. I went too far. Yeah, I forgot about the locked door. Totally forgot. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it was the fixing the Tetsu thing. Okay, just shuffling it up. Whatever. Oh, Unsealed says, "Hi guys, I'm new here. Hello." Sorry, we're not accepting new applicants. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, you'll have to come back next stream. <laughs> Uh, all the seats are full. I'm sorry. No, I'm just joking. Welcome. Welcome to welcome. the stream. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Watching from Slovak Republic. Fingers crossed to finish the game well. Uh, uh, fingers crossed. Good, good. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Perfect. Praying. Sacrifice a goat. <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Maybe that'll go well, but no guarantees. All right. Oh, my God. That's so true. <laughs> all right. G glad to see you. Welcome. Welcome to this chat. Welcome. Welcome. All right. Uh, oh, and then you have to shuffle that peril back. I did already. You did? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, what are we doing? It's a our turn. Our turn. Our turn. What are we doing here? Um, we're gonna go see if we can okay. find this I wanna guy. I want to know. Right? I want to pull the chat. Yeah. There's a fifty-fifty here just for fun. Do we go to Big Ben, or do we go to a Westminster Abbey to look for this guy? Hmm. We have two options. I don't know if I spelled it all right, but it's fine. You get the point. I'm going to put a poll in the chat. You guys can decide. Do we go for Big Ben, looking in the concealed card there? Or do we go for Westminster Abbey? Which we also don't know the shroud values of these locations. So. Yeah, it's all fine. And if you don't know, that's totally fine. Yeah. We're just for fun. Just yep. picking one. Like, we could toss a coin. We could roll a die. But it's always more fun to just see where people want us to venture. I mean, we could also look at the uh, flavor text and the art and kind of help us decide. So, uh, London is uh, a fixture of the London skyline, the clock tower at the north end of the palace of Westminster, Westminster, looms over the city, its face like the eye of a watchful guardian. Or this, look at this. <laughs> yeah, one looks a lot scarier yeah, than the like, other. Yeah, it's kind of like a, you know, overcast day. Yeah, and don't this go is, there. This is where your friends will die. <laughs> this is where your friends will die. Uh, the Gothic Abbey near the palace is both the place of religious significance and traditional burial site for English royals. Lights flicker in the windows at the gent as the gentle rain turns to ominous downpour. An ominous downpour. Uh, you would not be the first to seek guidance on such hollowed ground, but you wonder what else may be at work within its aged walls. Dun dun dun. Okay. Yeah, Big Ben looks less scary. <laughs> Gonna close the poll. This is awesome. Uh, if I can find it. Whew. Well, 69% said Big Ben. Perfect. Giddy up. All right. So. Do you want to try this or do you want me to? Mm. Also, when I put this in, I'm going to get an enemy. Right? In your deck, though, shuffle, Shuffled. right? Uh, yeah. You're right. What do they do? Let's see. That's the enemy I'm going to get. So this is from you. Pl if you play that card, this is the bond. Oh, shuffle. Okay, yeah. It's a hunter enemy, 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Prey uh, is investigator with the crystallizer dreams only. Guardian of the crystallizer. Oh, they enter play exhausted. Oh, okay. Forced. If there's no crystallizer dreams in play, set the guardian aside out of play. Okay, so this is not bad, actually. Then it's I like can, they're like uh, the I punishment hunting you because you're messing with this crazy stuff. Not going to go into play, so. Uh, all right. My play would be put it into play, move, and try to investigate. Like we can try me or... because then maybe he'll jump on me. Actually, I should read it. I want to see how that's worded when we find one. If it's an enemy. Yeah, when an investigator draws an enemy with the concealed X keyword. Uh, okay. Oh, no. Oh. We have a great question in the chat. If the concealed card is a decoy, does it remain in play or do you discard no, it? No, you discard it. Okay. Couldn't remember. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I'll double check right now. While in play, concealed mini cards represent the possible location of enemy in the shadows. In order to deal with such an enemy, this true location must first be discovered by exposing its mini card. This can be done via three methods fighting, evading, or investigating. Concealed mini cards are not enemies and ca cannot be engaged like enemies. However, any investigator at the same location that concealed mini card may attempt to expose it by successfully attacking or invading as if they were engaged with an enemy, or successfully investigating its location. The difficulty to successfully attack or evade is the shroud value of the location. 
An investor may also use a card effect that automatically evades an enemy, deals damage to an enemy, or discovers a clue at a location in order to expose a concealed mini card. If an investigator chooses to expose a concealed mini card, that effect replaces the standard effect of the card and basically don't get any of the clues or evading bonuses or whatever you normally get from doing those actions. If a concealed mini card is exposed via any of the above methods, flip it to the revealed side. If it's a decoy, set it aside out of play with no effect. If it's an enemy's mini card, that enemy is now exposed. Place the matching enemy in the sh in the shadows at that mini card's location and set the mini card aside out of play. That enemy is no longer in the shadows and is now at the location where the mini card it, uh, was located. Then, then, if there are no enemies in the shadows, set all remaining concealed mini cards in play aside out of play. Only one concealed mini card may be exposed per effects unless explicitly stated. So if you deal like three damage with a card effect, you don't get to flip three concealed yeah. cards because many cards, concealed cards can be at the same location. If we have another enemy to hunt down and there was already cards that we're putting there, we would shuffle all those cards together at a location and have a pile of concealed cards. So we'd have to search through them one by one. Uh, and that is pretty much it there. Okay. So it does says he goes to the location. So I think then we choose who he engages. It's not like forced because you were the one that flipped the card or anything like that. So yeah. And then that says once he's engaged, we advance. Okay. Do so you want to go first then and try to hunt him? I can, but yeah, he might advance and we find out I can't even fight him or anything like that. That's so like, fine. what's the point? But, uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. The uh, poll said Big Ben. Big ben. Yeah. Okay. Big Ben. So I'm moving. Big Ben. Four shroud, two clues. Uh, it's London traded. Has a free action. Choose a concealed mini card at Big Ben or connecting location. Test agility of two. If you succeed, look at the revealed side of that concealed mini card without exposing it. If you fail. Take one horror. Limit once cool. per turn. So you know if you want to do it. It's it's a cheaper test. Yeah, yeah. Because if you reveal it, because then it saves you like movement actions too. Yeah. Like you don't have to move to those locations if you don't need to and waste time. This also victory kind of. one, everyone. So victory one, you say. <laughs> oh. So we gotta get those two clues off, is yeah. what you mean. But they're four. Yeah. Okay. Uh. So if I want to fight, I'm doing a fight against a four test here. Yeah. Uh, my agility is a two. My fight is a five plus one with the boxing gloves. Oh, so six on four is good for now. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll try that. I'll just do a fight with my boxing gloves, I guess. Right. Or like uh, just a general fight of six, six on four. Yeah, I think that's better than trying to do an agility. I was thinking of doing the agility just to like peek at this one or this one and then just see where, if I need to like or kind of set you up, you know? But this I think, I think it's easier to, I'm kind of like just checking this card. Yeah, and I think it's going to be easier if it was spread out more. Got him. Zero. Uh, uh. Punch that air. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for somebody. Do you know if he's in these shadows? I'm punching the shadows looking for him. Oh, and you did not find him. I am literally <laughs> punching the air. All right, so we know he's here. Okay. I'm going to go there. If you have one more movement and you want to go there. Unless we go... I don't know that I can get these clues, though. I'll go there, yes. Westminster Abbey has a parlay action. Choose a location and test uh, willpower of one to ask around the Abbey. For each point you succeed by, look at the revealed side of concealed mini card and the, uh, at the chosen location without exposing it. Group limit once per game. That's cool. So we can only do this once out of all of us or is it once per player? I always forget this one. But uh, I know someone in the chat knows because this comes up every time and I ask the same dumb question. I think group limit is we can only do it as a group one time. Yeah, I know one of them is like per player, but it's like it, it's not obvious the way it's like worded, but. I bet I can find it quickly. Once per person. A group limit, however, applies to the entire group of investigators. For example, an investigator triggers an ability that is a group limit once per game. 
no other investigator may trigger that ability during that game. That's what I thought, yeah. Yeah, and then it's the, the whole, like... And then there's another one, limit... Like, limit, limit X, X per game card or game element, or max max per phase or whatever. Yeah. We can only do that once, but at this point, we may not need to do that unless more... Okay, cool, we got it. Can see the cards. Alrighty. Are you good? No, but sure. Go ahead. Alrighty, we're going to put in this Concealer of Dreams for one. We're going to shuffle this in. That's the additional cost to play it. So after you play an event, attach it face down to the Crystallizer of Dreams instead of discarding it to a maximum of five attached events. Attached events may be committed to skill tests as if they were in your hand. Okay, so I'm going to play one now. <laughs> you attach it under there. Okay, so I will spend one to play this event that will move, uh, move up to three times. Enemies do not engage you during this movement. Throw that under there. And I will just move, just for fun, one, two. <laughs> don't need to move the three. I don't even need to move two, actually. I just want to get that under there. And then I will... You can, um, I, I, I think probably you should put them like this, cause, oh, so, I can see so you can the... see your skills, you kind of know oh, what is like available to you. Yeah, that's better. You know, just spread them along or put them all side by side or something, yeah. whatever you want to do. But it's like better to see them so you know, like what's, what's available to you, what options you got. All right. Let's, because I also want the, okay, we're going to put, we're going to do a evade, which is only one. Yep. I'm going to put this one and this one in. I get to draw a card. Leo. Um. <laughs> That's supposed to be in the deck list for sure. Did you? Yeah. I. It is in the deck list, hundred percent. Just double checking. Did you cheat? I did not. I did not. <laughs> so I'm doing a test that is five. Okay. Six, seven, Carry eight. on. Eight on one, and if I'm succeed by two or more, we get a benefit here. I built these decks like four days ago, so I don't remember. <laughs> Minus two. So five, six, seven, eight, six on one. So I do succeed by two or more. After it resolves, you may immediately take an action as if it were your turn. This action does not count towards the number of actions you can take per turn. Okay, so these are discarded. I get an additional action, but we get to reveal this first, which we know. It is our... Imagine it was a decoy and it was like, oh my god, I screwed up. <laughs> Whoops. It's our red glove man. Well, that means our little buddy off to the side here comes into play at this location, engages with me. Unless you want to engage with you. I have one more action. Because uh, I don't know. I don't like, know. Five, I, it's about to five. advance. Like, we don't know. Well, it's going to hit somebody. I don't know the one. order of this. Like, when he comes here, do I advance first, see what's up, and then we can decide? Like, I, you know, I, I'm sure there's an order to it. This is game I has. I still have one more action. I can try to evade him. It's a five on five. Maybe I'll get lucky. Oh, it says if an investigator engages the Red Glove Man in advance. So, yeah, yeah so... we don't advance yet until we pick him. Oh, so then, yeah. So then I will. Like, I can take him, but I, I just can't do anything this turn. But I, but I, I still do... have an action left oh, okay. because of my quick thinking. Well, that's quick. So I can evade, potentially. Okay, so, yeah. so he's engaged you, so then we advance this one. Whoa. Okay, okay, hold on. After a much toil and pursuit, you finally catch up to the figure you've been chasing. A feeling of vindication watches over to you as you spot the red gloves the man wears. It was no phantom you chased. This is the one you have sought all along. You corner him in a narrow alleyway, sheets of rain and fog masking your approach. Several more figures flank the man. A meeting, perhaps? To your surprise, he casts an expressionless glance in your direction. Then, fast as a flash of lightning and gone, just as swiftly, a formless shape ducks out of view. A chunk of a nearby building goes along with it. When you turn to question your quarry about what happened, they have all fled east. You inch forward and examine a partially excised wall covered in an ectoplasm substance like the negative of an underdeveloped photo. It was like Slimer was here, mm -hmm. we call the Ghostbusters. Set the red-gloved man aside out of play. Woo! 
Well, that was, uh, that was all. Easy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Who's going to take him and uh, who should fight him and damage and all this stuff? Okay, he doesn't even stay. Put the set aside Tower Bridge and Tower of London locations into play. Oh, we got to find him again. This is fun. All right. So I have a brown squiggle and a red moon. Brown squiggle. Then from there, I got red moon. Nowhere else connects to red moon. But red moon connects back to brown squiggle and blue tea, which blue tea doesn't exist yet, which is probably one of the other locations in the pile. So these kind of go off on their own little thing. So and just another arrow like that. Yes. That. Okay. Okay. Mm. So we have to go back through the rainy London streets to go this way, I believe. Just double checking the other connections here and anything. Okay. Uh, where was I? Shuffle the set aside Crimson Conspiracy and Outrider, Outsiders, sorry, encounter sets into the encounter deck along with the encounter discard pile. Advance the agenda directly to agenda 3A. Do not resolve agenda 2B. So these are our two sets. Double checking. No, not this one. Okay. So these need to be shuffled into here with the, with the discard pile. Shuffled really well. I'll do a couple different drops again. Yeah, and do some jams and some random stuff. Go nuts. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll advance. Bear with me. Oh yeah, let's look on the eyes on the tower. Let's just read this part. Uh, your gaze turns eastwards toward the direction you last saw the man heading. Over the tower bridge lies the famed Tower of London, where even more eyes watch your approach. These belonging to a conspiracy of dark and brooding ravens. For what reason could he be heading there? Objective. Only investigators of the Tower of London may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. We need six. Six freaking clues okay. at the Tower of London. Okay, we're going to advance. And this says forced uh, move the doom forward, right? Yep. Okay, we're skipping the back of that card and going right to this one. Double checking. Yep, agenda 2B, we skip to 3A. Okay, skip 3A. Uh, the connection. It is clear now that, ex that Inspector Flint's hunches were correct. The man in the red gloves is not operating alone, and whatever he is up to, it has something to do with the recent vanishings. You could wait to report that what you have seen, but by then the man and his cohorts may have already put into motion whatever scheme they are planning. No, you have only one choice. You must find the man with the red gloves at all costs. There is nine. <laughs> Nobody ran away. He disappeared and took half a building with him or something. Uh, the corner of the building just, just disappeared, went vanished. All right, well, I still have one more action. Which I thought I was going to use to evade that guy. So we basically have to get six clues to spend here before uh, seven-ish more turns uh, advance, right? Yeah. Okay, you want to do a little bit of... Oh, well, I take my last action here. So I think my last action will just be to try to get a clue off of here because this is the easiest clues to gather at this moment. So let's do a test of three on one. Come up two. Ooh, plus one. Got it. Okay. That is my turn done. Uh, both done? Yep. Enemies? Enemies? No. Uh, okay. Reset. Ready all exhausted cars. Draw a card. Gain a resource. Backpack. Randall Cho. Resource. Okay. Okay. Adding a doom. Yep. Three out of nine. Your card is... Oh, God. Uh-oh. Revelation, place one doom on an enemy in the shadows. If there are no enemies, then you do. The only enemy in the shadows is the red-gloved man. Is he in the shadows, though? Yes. Because isn't the shadows mean that there's, like, a big uh, Yes, you are correct. There is no enemy in the shadows. I'm being silly. Sorry. If there are no enemies in the shadows, search the encounter deck and discard pile for an enemy with the conceal keyword, draw it, and shuffle the encounter deck. Annoying. That's annoying. So let's look at all the different options, then. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to make it messy, because if we're searching for them, and we also have to search for him, you know, then it's going to be, we got to clear these two, probably. So I'm looking for enemies, right, which have a different... This guy is Hunter, not Conceal. But do we really need... Oh, right here. These agents. 
Maybe we need these agents. Hold on. Those might be the only option. Oh, and after he enters the shadow space, when Doom on it. Oh, I see. Oh, and when he's exposed, we discard it. That's cool. We don't even have to fight this guy. That's not. Yeah, it's only the agents A, B, and C. So let's take. Cool. Uh, no, I want to do A. Yeah? Yeah. I'm going to take agent A. But then watch. We'll find out later we have to find agent C to win. And, oh, uh, wait, they're both the same. Okay. They're the same, I think, but uh, it's just three of them. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I may miss something because I was shuffling, but do we actually need to find him again? Or don't we just need six and be here and, and we advance? Oh, there's more probably, right? Yeah, there's more agendas, oh, okay. so. Never mind. And more acts. I see. So he probably won't be revealed until we do that. Okay, so this guy is concealed too. So that means two decoy cards, right? Mm -hmm. And then one agent A. And then I'm going to start shuffling. Well, oops, will I talk and then I lose track of what I'm doing? I think also just to note, I think I've only done my card, right? You have not done yours. Uh, Just so we know where correct. we are. When we, when we... Yeah, but I'll still forget. Uh, Winterson says, Rob, out of curiosity, have you ever played some war games like GMT? No. I get asked that every now and then, but no, I've never played any of them. Uh, like the ones with like the little chits and stuff, like the little cardboard. Uh, I've watched them, like seen them at Gen Con. Like I know of these games. I remember looking into them a couple years ago. Um, people were telling me to look into them, but no, I, I never really have. I like the theme of like the war war games like army and like you know I play Call of Duty and stuff like the video game and I like you know guns and armies and war and stuff I like uh, like World War II documentaries and stuff like that I like I used to like I had a probably a couple of years where I went kind of crazy watching a bunch of that stuff and got really into it but uh, yeah I'm gonna ask a question while you're still also shuffling for backpack I'll get to put in three non weakness item or supply cards. Um, attach them face bound, down, and then uh, they can be played as if they were in my hand. Can I use the skills, or like the stats as well, or do I have to only play them for... Committing, I think, is... Playing is you paying for a card and playing it, but committing a is skill different? is different, okay. I think. I just wanted to ask that before I do this, because... Oh, I can. Oh, yes. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, but so yeah, that's a play as well. all right. Uh, so we put these at uh, nearest so we can put one where we are. Yeah, I think it's like one, two, three, right? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, it has to be that way. Yeah, there's no choice. Okay, all okay. right. And then I guess we're deciding who's going first here. Oh, you got to do your card still. Sorry, as we, so we may forget. Oh, no, Paris. Oh, yeah, we didn't place a doom on this guy oh. after he enters the shadows, place a doom on him. I have one, I have one. Okay. And if we expose him, we just get rid of him. We don't even have to fight yeah, him. Yeah, so we can find him. Oh, cool. But then now this guy drops on your head. Uh, para paracausal entity. Three, two, three. Hunter force when it, it engages you. Look at the top card of your deck. If it's not a weakness, set it aside out of play as, as a hollow. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't remember reading about... All those are probably in here on other cards that'll mention bringing oh. them. Yeah. Okay, so this guy's engaged with me. What oh. the hell? Whoa. No way. What are the odds of that? But that means it stays on top. <laughs> yeah, but still. Look at the top card of your deck. So it's Tommy Malloy. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad, probably. Probably. But at least you know. Oh, enemies are coming. Okay, I'll just leave that face up. All right. All right. Do you want to go first and take care of your problem? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Can I? I don't know. All right. Uh, so if I fight this thing, do I get extra damage? No, right? So I got to waste. Oh, yeah. Do if I deal damage to an enemy by an event or fight ability on an event. So but it, that would do. Why are you saying sorry, Mel? How bad is this for me? <laughs> no, he's saying sorry oh, because he was yeah. wrong about the ruling. Oh, I get it. No, you can't. I yeah, see. You commi can't commit committing is different than playing. That's I what think. I wanted yeah, to yeah. double check. Thank you. Okay, you can't. Yeah, playing, no playing is like paying the resources or the cost. Okay. To like, yeah, yeah. Thank you. 
I want to ask before in my head I thought I could. <sighs> So he's a three. If I fight with the boxing gloves, I have to fight twice, six on three. Or I just play Monster Slayer. But it, should I be saving Monster Slayer for like its wild ability, uh, skill icon? Or should I save this for a later fighting the red guy who needs to like five fight, you know? Like, I don't know. This fight does do the extra damage, so I don't even need his ability because he's only a two. I mean... I feel like I should save Monster Slayer and, and use two actions to try to get rid of this guy rather than one action and lose his card. Because we see the red man, he's already been teased. Like, if we have to fight him to get four damage through, like, this will do, like, uh, two damage because of my ability on him just yeah, in one I can, fight. I can do two damage if he's exhausted as well. So if we exhaust the red guy first, my gun can do two damage. Oh, now, though, you okay. have to worry about your guy that's coming up next as well. Oh, yeah. Monster Slayer, sorry. Yes, it's three damage with my ability. Yeah, duh. Because oh, so you get the base one, plus one off the card, plus one from here. So Because you also have a three health guy coming next. From your, Oh, yes. My, my yeah. Tommy Malloy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll save that. I'll save that. All right. So let's just boxing gloves once. Uh, six on three. Okay. Six on three. So now you're punching a shimmer in the oh, air. Oh, but now is a good time to trigger the boxing gloves to be able to shuffle the weakness off the top of your deck. Does it do something like that? Only if I defeat the enemy. Yes, we'll, we'll, we can talk when we defeat oh, the enemy. Okay. Uh, I am pulling, I don't know if you guys are new here, but I'm pulling tokens from this bag. <laughs> and yes, I have three full actions to fight this guy, but I'm relying on two of those to succeed. I never start looking at what happens when I defeat an enemy until it actually is defeated, okay? <laughs> so let's relax, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We, I know we're playing on easy, so most likely I will defeat him in at least three actions. But uh, yes, let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves. Because <laughs> then we start getting excited, like yeah, this will yeah. work and it'll be perfect and it'll all work out. And then I pull the red, and then I pull a negative five, and then we're all just like, <laughs> oh five. my god, it's all falling apart. Rob hates the game. All right. No, so far he's still smiling, and laughing, everyone. Yes. Uh oh, <laughs> I don't know what that even does. And if there's a concealed mini card at your location, reveal another token. That's a minus one. Okay. I don't even know what you were at, but uh, I'm at uh, six on three, so I'm I'm plus two right now. Okay. Yeah. See, we this, talked this, about this, it. And this, look this, what happened. This is why you don't get excited. All yep. right. Okay. Uh, so shuffle this back in. That's a failed fight. I don't get hit or anything, right? They, only if they retaliate, right? Right. Okay. Fighting again. Hiya. Zero. Love God. It. Punch one. Damage, please. Damage. You don't have any yet. Okay. Fighting for my third action. The token that should not be named. Yes. Right. <laughs> What's this one? A skull. Skull minus is one. minus one, minus three instead if you have two more clues. Nice. He's dead. Okay. Boom. So he's defeated, goes here. Uh, after you defeat an enemy, exhaust boxing gloves, search the top six cards of your deck for a spirit event, add it to your hand, shuffle your deck. I mean, that's pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six. Spirit. Spirit. All right, what am I taking here? Let me read these. We got one, two punch and counter punch. Does it remind me of like the Nintendo? Yeah, yeah, punch yeah. out. Yeah. Little Mac. Yep. I'm playing Little Mac, Nathaniel Cho. All right, uh, one, two punch, spirit tactic. Uh, two cost event fight. You get plus one for this attack, plus one fight for the attack. If you succeed, you may fight the enemy again with a plus two and you deal an extra plus one. Oh man, oh, I remember this card. I freaking love these cards. I love Nathaniel's deck. I love, love what's going that's on That's a here. good card for the boss coming. But is he coming? I don't know. Are we, are we going to even see him if we can't find him? Like, I got to deal with other things in the meantime. Or this one for zero. I like how it has more skill icons. Fast. Play after an enemy attacks you, even if that attack was canceled, you get to fight the enemy. Oh, with no bonuses. Just like a little, little retaliate, a little punch. A little yeah. psh, psh, counter Because punch. the other thing, the boss, if we do have to fight him, the Red Glove Man, does have retaliate. So the less attacks we need to do on him, getting more damage through the better. I'm going to take uh, one-two punch. 
But yeah. Yeah, I'll take one, two punch, and then we'll shuffle the rest. Oh, yeah, but if I want to be firing off. Uh, no, it's fine. One, two punch is good. All right. Shuffle the rest back in, right? That's awesome. Oh, uh, yeah, the, yeah, Winterson, I, we do have Undaunted. Uh, we did pick it up from our local game store. I did buy it. Thanks again, everyone, for donating to the channel. I appreciate it. I have to shout that out every time we buy games and not give them to them. And they're not given to them from a publisher. I need to shout that out because without you guys, we wouldn't be buying half these games. Um, but yes, we really recommended the Undaunted series. We met the designer at Gen Con. We really were interested in it. Um, I gave them my card. They, they didn't send us to reach out or anything. So, you know, it's all good. But uh, we did buy Undaunted Normandy, the first game in the series. We just want to try it out. Stalingrad, it looks right up our alley yeah, if we cool. like the game. And we did talk about it on stream and it was recommended to follow my own advice and maybe not buy the giant campaign version of a game we're not even sure if we like yet. So right. I did always want to just try the original that got everyone all excited. Obviously was successful enough that it's to spawned all the other games. So I definitely want to try it. Um, and we should definitely around that time play uh, Memoir 44. I do oh, have that yeah. game. I played it a handful of times. I played it with Kyle a few times off stream. Uh, it is a fun little game, but I feel like Mel and I would have some fun playing that one. Even though it's got like the, you know, we're playing with soldiers and tanks and stuff. I, I don't know if you'll really be into it, well, we played but it it's when, still just us trying to kill each other. Yeah, we so. played it when I we like first got into board gaming and yeah, it was yeah. like not my thing at that time. But now I have expanded what games I play and I have. Yeah, it's a fun little yeah. game. I like it. I like it. Yeah, we can try. It's the green army men toy feeling back into my life. Yes. From being a child. Uh, yeah, I, the Stalingrad campaign looks really cool. It does. Um, so yeah, I was interested in it, but obviously, like, no rush. We'll play on Daunted Normandy at some point. We'll find it if we even like it. If we do, you damn know I'm going to try to hunt that game down from our local game store. So, And then we'll play at least a few scenarios of it. I don't know if we'll go through the whole campaign. I'm not going to promise anything, but we'll see. Yes, yeah, so I was always interested in the Undaunted series. It just was always out of stock at my local game store, out of print. And we are always trying to track it down. Uh, and then when we were going to buy it at Gen Con, it sold out there. Yes. So we couldn't even pick it up in, in, in person there either. So, yeah, anyways. All right. But I'm looking forward to trying it at some point. We also have the Sniper Elite oh, yes. game. I do want to try that. The little sneaking around. We could do a little, little series. Yeah. Like but I, I want to try that with Kyle, too. I think oh, it'd yeah. be fun, like, one versus many. Yeah. And maybe I'll play, I'll play the Sniper or, have, like, Kyle can be the Sniper or something. Or... Yeah. I like, I like one versus many games. Yeah. I know it's not specifically a war game, but it is the like same theme kind of idea. All right. All right. I think your turn is done. Is that right? You got your three actions on killing that guy. First one failed. Yeah, I'm done. My my turn's done. All righty. Let's. Mm. Let's try to evade and try to get this guy. See if we can find him. We'll get the clue and move move around. So let's evade here. Five on one. I'm not going to put anything in. Minus two. So I was three on one. We are successful. Please. Find him the first time. Nope. Alrighty. Action one. Action. I should let you go first to do that. So then I didn't have an enemy in my space, so I'm pulling tokens and oh, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Probably should try to clear those first before. I think we it should... wouldn't have mattered in this case because you pulled the auto fail on that one, but Yeah, I know. well, no, then I wouldn't have been pulling a second token. Oh true. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Right. I would have you're passed. Right. You're right, you would have passed. So thanks. I blame you for that. You can. Thanks a lot, man. I apologize. That's the first time I didn't say, like, oh, it's okay, I'll go first. Yeah, yeah. What the hell? <laughs> Traitor. Uh, I wanted to see if you needed help or something, because I did have a gun. But, it's all good. Go all right, ahead. we're going to try to get this clue because we need six clues, to, and this is the easiest clue to get. So, I'm not putting anything in either. So, I it's three on one. Minus one. There is no card there anymore. So, we're good. Now you have two clues, though, so that now makes the clues, skull yeah. tokens bad. Can you tell me this one is, what's the word? We're on act three. Oh, so this is a four. This is a four. Okay. Ooh. So let's go. I have one more action. Let's go this but way. Remember, this also has you victory. can't get clues oh, off yeah. here. Oh, yeah. And this has victory anyway, so I'd rather possibly try yep, to get that makes there sense. as I move through. That's my three actions. 
Done. Enemies? Uh, nope. Reset. Draw. Ready up, whatever. Tetsumori number two. Done. Money. Main resource. Doom. Doom. We're at uh, five out of nine now until we get rid of this guy. And card draw. You're right, Yogi. I should probably put backpack in and try to find lock picks. This is me. Undercover. Revelation. If there are no enemies in the shadows, undercover gain surge. There is. Otherwise, you must test intellect or agility of four. If you fail, place a decoy at the location, the most concealed mini cards. Flip it face down and shuffle each concealed mini card. This is definitely where these peeking at cards will come into play. Because if you were able to peek and we knew where he was, we can choose a different location to shuffle this in if there's a tie. Hopefully I can just pass this. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do agility. Yogi, do I put backpack in for the draw? Putting two <sighs> cards in, or do I not? You can play it. Can't you? Is it, oh, it's not an event? No. No. Oh, yeah, no, it's asset. Right Duh. But I could put these two cards in, get the draw off her. <laughs> oh, man. Or, I, and that would be five, six, seven on four. That might be too high. I remember we're playing on easy. I know, I know. So plus two is I like totally fun. Would. I knew, I knew it. Okay, okay. <laughs> but then I get the draw, so then but I... It's backpack. Yeah. Backpack, backpack. So five, six, seven on four. Oh, I get to draw. Backstab. <clears throat> it's okay, it's okay. I, I like your opinion. Zero, we're successful. We don't have to do whatever it said. Those are gone. Problem is we ask Yogi for all this help, but we don't know if Yogi actually like wins scenarios. He That's could fine. he could be like the worst player ever. Like he makes cool decks and stuff, but like at home he like has never won an Arkham scenario in his life and like fails <laughs> so bad. So we're like we trust him to build his decks, which is fine. But then we're like also asking him for like play advice and like you know you never know. We never know. To be honest, I just because wanted... someone knows a lot about a game doesn't mean they win all the time, right? <laughs> to be honest, I wanted to do it, but I wanted to see if he was gonna yell at me. No, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, see, see, Yogi says, don't ask me. I'm crazy though. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, see, but I, I hear you. I make I make like, crazy, unrational decisions as well. So well, what we really find out is Yogi is in some like mental institution in like a padded room. They gave him like a little <laughs> computer he can talk to, and like he's communicating with outside world. You know, like and we're trusting this guy. Yep. And he's all crazy. Well, his write up says like as. Many Many times as you can put two two cards I in. I know it makes sense to feed into the engine. I'm just messing around. Which is funny. Even masochist. Yeah, that's gonna make sense. That makes sense. That's funny. Okay, <laughs> your card. Good luck, my friend. My card. Oh yeah, yeah. fun times. Here I'm we go. This, this game's so great. <laughs> knives in the dark scheme revelation. Put knives in the dark into play in your threat area. If there's no copy of it in your threat area, otherwise the card game surge. Forced after you expose yourself. I mean, expose a decoy. <laughs> Take two damage. Limit once per round. Okay, I can just do it. But if I expose the right card, we're fine. So again, the peeking yeah. can get around this stuff for now. I see the stuff coming up later when we don't have cool locations that let us peek. We're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Forced, at the end of your turn, test agility. Three, if you succeed, discard knives in the dark. I love the art on this, by the way. The red glove man cleaning off a little bloody knife here. It's good yeah. times, good times. Also, if I go first and I just do this one, yeah, then, then we know, just know. I know, I know. Alrighty, is that what we want to do? And also, clearing them straight up instead of just peeking helps there not be duplicates there because you're you're getting them off the board. But it's gonna be hard to do this one because <sighs> it would be an evade of five on four. Or, uh, but that's expensive to do this. Because if I play this as an event, I would get, I don't need the damage. Okay, I think I don't do that. I think I just have to do it straight. I don't know how I'm going to win these clue tests. Right now, it'd only be four and four, but. All right, do you want me to try? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. All right, I think I'm just going to, Try to go for it, right? We'll just go an agility of five on four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna put that in. Uh oh, this is minus three, so that's a fail. Rob knows too much. <laughs> All right, we try again. This is action two. Plus one. We are successful. Please, please, please. Oh my god! 
That was so frustrating. All right, and now I'm going for the... <laughs> We're literally, every time it's going to be the last I know. one. We just, what are we our stuck. odds? Come on, luck, let's go. I know that is why we probably should be peeking, but I just while you're there, it's like, might as well just do yeah, it. Yeah, but still, you got to waste the action to peek. Mm, yeah. And we kind of have to go this way anyway, so it's like, either you just, you know, whatever. Okay, I'm going to try for a clue. Oh, but then I have to put loop in, which I guess is fine. Four on four. Four on four. Peak is free, no? Well, you have to do a test, so yes, I guess. You're right, it is free. Oh yeah, it's not an action, my bad. But it is oh. like you gotta do the test. Yeah, maybe I should've done that, you're right. Because I probably would've passed that test. You can rewind. Well, I would've- Choose a concealed mini card at Big Ben or connecting location, test agility of two. If you succeed, look at the revealed side of that concealed mini card without exposing it. If you fail, take one horror. No, I, it's fine. I did what I did. I'm happy with that. It's fine. Um, but yeah, Blake had, I could just draw for my third action to try to build up to get enough that I can get a clue off of here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, two backstabs. Okay. Done. My turn? Yep. Okay, I'll just move here. Unless this parlay on here is anything. Choose a location and test willpower of one. Ask around the abbey. For each point you succeed by, look at the revealed side. No, I don't need to do that yet. It's so annoying because this shroud is so high. Unless you get rid of it. What? Oh, no, you can't. Sorry, never I don't really care about that. I can just do the fight action to look at the card. But isn't the fight the shroud? Or something? Attached location with the most clues of the locked door. The attached location cannot be investigated. I'm not oh, investigating. Oh, I misread. But okay. you can do I the thought invade. it was the one that gave nope. a plus two. And I'm not doing it to the location. I'm just doing a general investigate fight or whatever. You're just using that value. Right. Which is different, I think. And I'm just looking around. I'm not trying to find clues. I'm, I'm like just, I don't know, which kind of is a clue, I guess. But not, right. not game at play. But uh, this shroud value is four. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I'm fighting for six. I don't know. Punch the air, Rob. Punching <laughs> the air. Well, this time we know he's there. We just don't know where. Unless you want me to try to get rid of this locked door no, I don't also, think I... then that helps maybe you try to get clues off this too. But I think we'll find clues here. I agree. They're just probably harder even. There might be five shroud, you know? But I'm just, I, I don't need oh, to get these. Oh, there's also this location. Right. That might be nice and gentle. I don't need to get these, but I just see victory one. And if it's yeah, possible, yeah. No, I'll try sense. a turn or two. Yeah, we're playing a campaign. Let's get that victory. Yeah. Minus two. So I'm still good. I see the card. Come on, be Red Glove Man. Yes! No, I mean, Cotier Agent, sorry. We're not searching for him yet. We got, still got to get there. So you also still being back here, if I move forward, we probably put those concealed cards out. Yes. And you could use this to peek. So maybe that's a play. So we reveal this guy. When he's revealed or exposed, sorry, discard him. Okay. So that doom goes away. That's this good. goes away. This goes back in the bag. Yeah, I forgot we weren't even looking for the Red Glove Man yet. <laughs> Whoopsie. Yeah, we got to get here with six clues. So I moved. I did that. Should I? Oh, I have this. Uh, after you expose the decoy, I did not. That's the end of the turn. I'll do that in a sec. I have one more action. Should I just move forward and see things on my last action? I which mean, is it would be totally, helpful to know. Or do I just put like Randall or Tetsu into play just so I have someone to take some damage? I'm still full, so I don't care. I like the play of moving forward, but if you yeah, I'll just don't, move forward. Uh, I don't know. Fine. Yeah, I'll so move forward. So we can see you. Where's the best place? To but go or go? should I move here? Because maybe we find out clues are easy on here. Yeah, you can. But then I'm going backwards. I kind of want to move forward. I think. Because I already, I already do have two. But so. there could be a cool ability on here also that helps us. Just like these two first ones helped us. Yeah. Look for stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna go back here actually. Sure. I know it's probably not needed, but you never know. Maybe it's a victory. Maybe it's super easy for clues. Maybe it's an ability that helps us. Maybe it's the worst location in the world. We'll find out. Actually, let me read this first. The night's unusually somber mood is enough to dr uh, drown out the beauty of the Royal Park. The round pond threatens a flood as the downpour continues. This place has been a popular meeting ground for many years. Perhaps the man with the red gloves and his cohorts are here? Do they want to explore? <laughs> Oh, it's a two easy. shroud, okay. two clues. After you expose a decoy at Kensington Gardens, heal a horror. Oh. Oh, that's a late. Forced. After you expose an enemy at Kensington Gardens, take a horror. Oh, <laughs> victory also, one. Also has a victory. Uh, are you able to get some clues? Do you think? No. No. Okay. Not, not even not, gonna try. Not right this minute, but. Nope. Okay. Maybe I could, but I'm not gonna try. 
Hmm. Not here. Oh, Unless right. I draw into, like, I could use Tetsu, I could use Monster Slayer as, like, help, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, it can just try twos on twos and see what happens. Yeah, the bag is not too punishing, especially if you don't have clues. I know. But, we'll see. Nice and gentle, yeah. That means a whole different thing in this game. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay, that's it. Uh, end and of turn. Oh, yeah. uh, test agility of three. I have agility of two. Let's test. Show me that. Plus one. Plus one. Oh, come on. I dropped the token. I'll pick a different one. Minus two. Nope. Okay. At least it doesn't hurt you, really. Not yet. Not yet. All right. No enemies? Nope. Reset. Draw. Oh! Smoking pipe. I didn't even realize. Look at this. <laughs> Anything you can do, I can do better. I can probably get a clue from here. Maybe with this. No, card. I don't know. <laughs> I think you need more icons. <laughs> like whoever's I mean, doing the graphic design, like it. accidentally hit the control uh, V a few extra times and like pasted the uh, icon there on the left. I, you know what? I looked at these on. I looked at these cards. That's a misprint for sure. Online, and when I do that, I don't tend to look too much at the icons. I just kind of look at the yeah, abilities yeah. and the cost. So I did not notice that this had one, two, three, four, five, six, six wilds. <laughs> Wow. Uh, all right, Doom. Doom, yes, here you go. Here we have Five out of nine. Five. Your card. Revelation, test four. If you fail, choose a scar one asset you control. If you can't, take two damage instead. Uh, oh. Willpower four, go. Go, 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 go. Okay, maybe I'm not worrying about the gun. Go, 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 go. So annoying. Minus two, we fail. We're going to just get rid of the gun and hope that Rob's got it. Revelation, test three willpower for each point you fail by. You must either take one horror or place one of your clues on your location. Uh, willpower of three. I have smoking pipe in hand, so I'll just go with it. Three on three. Uh, digging deep, digging deep in the bottom corner. I pull out a skull. Minus one. Minus one. So I take one horror, please. Okay, not the worst. Okay. Our turn. Let me draw a card. Okay. I can go first if you want. Yep. Do like try a clue here, maybe. Yeah, and just see what happens. Uh, right now we need four. Okay, have... I'll do two on two. Four more. Yeah, I'll just do two on two. Plus one. Boom. Look at this. Clues are plenty. I'll do one more. Two on two again? Two on two. Plus one. Boom. What? Oh, sorry. And then I will move great. to here. Wow, Done. that was a great turn. But now I have two clues, which means skulls are worse. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, end of turn. I'll test. That's why I was trying to keep the bag. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was like, why did I need to do another test? Agility of two on three. No, oh, come on. Plus one again. Plus one again. I need it. Oh! Is that plus one? I don't know. Yes. Plus one. If the skill test is successful during an attack, nope. Return an event from your discard pile of your hand. That was not an attack. Even so. Very uh, good. So that gets rid of this. Yogi wants to know how do you pick up clues with wearing boxing gloves? <laughs> I put honey on the boxing gloves on the end, and I just... Dab them against the, the clue papers and notes and things around, and I pick them up that way. All right. We're going for a test here. Three. We're putting in two cards. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I get to draw a card. <laughs> Lock picks. Ten on four. Oh, now Mel's going to get two even, reds. Don't even. I, when I put in this, don't even. Don't <laughs> even. Like saying that's I have to get Rob up and walk away. That's Rob turn in Arkham. No, I've had turns like that. It's all downhill from here now. 
No, this is why I like playing on easy. There's more like plus ones and stuff, so it's like it helps. And zeros and things. There plus you go. one. Yeah, all right, yeah. so we got plus a Mel clue. put three or four extras in there when you guys weren't <laughs> looking, so it's all good. These are gone. I just need to look at something. <laughs> I think I need to put lock picks into play for three. One, two, three. Okay. okay. We're gonna investigate again. Say more room for oh, the yeah, cards sure. up there. That's great. Okay, so we're gonna exhaust lockpicks, add my agility value to the skill for this investigation. If you do not succeed by two, discard lockpicks. So I'm doing three, eight on four. Eight on four. Come on. Zero, nice, so we don't discard lockpicks. We get this, that's victory two now. I have one more action, which will be to move to you. Done. Flip. Enemies. Oh, no, I don't have another action. Excuse me. I played lockpicks. Done. Sorry. Oh, yeah, we might want you to be there to do that location right. ability. Hopefully you don't drop your clues on that location by some uh, encounter card effect. Which we do have enough now here. So, uh, so flip, flip. Ready up. Ready. Draw. Boxing gloves Simple. number two. Gain money. I need money, please. Uh, doom. Doom. Six, right? Oh, six out of nine. Yep. Your card. Oh. Ap ap apocalyptic pres presage presage four five two monster outsider forest when it enters play each investigator chooses a non-weakness card they control in their hand or play area and sets it aside out of play as a hollow what is going to happen with this though we don't know when it is defeated, instead of adding it to the victory display, discard it and choose oh. up to three set aside hollows and add them. Okay, so we will get it back. Oh, okay. Okay, so then I'll put this one. So I'd do something probably like boxing gloves, right? I'm just worried about this getting discarded from play because it's like my only asset. So like now that I see the second one, I'm like, it's kind of insurance. That's the card all. Uh, maybe I'll put oh. Randall. I'm going to put Randall. Uh, uh, here, give it to me. I'll just put them way over here. Decided to play. Okay. Yep. Wow, so we have to kill this guy twice to get the victory points? Because instead of defeating it and adding it to the victory display, discard it. Oh, discard That's it. That's optional. This oh, is okay. all optional. Yeah. So we could just let it go away and not worry about our hollows, or we can get them back to our hands. Okay. I don't know if there's any other cards that interact with hollows and make it worse, if there's more there. But, uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Maybe we need them back, because maybe any cards that are out of play like that will be removed from our deck. Oh, my God. Please, yeah, no. Because, yeah, the hollows might be those things that were disappearing. Oh, no. So then maybe do I change? Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this yeah. has to be move. No. It's got to be something more meaningless. Reach point of skill. I'm gonna put a Tetsu actually. I immediately move to a connecting location. Yeah, Tetsu. Uh, sorry, switch me that one actually, because yeah. Yeah. I may need these. Yeah, yeah, I have a feeling that will be a thing in this in this yeah. campaign is like hollows. Yeah, and then you can like replace them maybe in, in the deck building phases kind right. of thing. So that's my card. Go ahead. I can evade this guy, so I'm not too worried. You must either choose one, spend a clue, or take two damage. I'll take two damage, please. I have one, and need one more. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. Our turn. I'm gonna go first. Yeah. No problem. All right. But I think I have to be here with you to spend the clue. So, I've, are you ending I, I here? I don't care about that. Okay. I'm just gonna go here. And I'm gonna flip this. Yeah. London Bridge is falling down. Uh, two, and two. Action. Maybe there's another way in. Test willpower or intellect of five. If you succeed, put the set aside Trader's Gate location into play. What does this mean? Is there this one locked or something? I didn't read the other side I though. Didn't read it. The main gate into the tower is <laughs> locked. Yeah, I probably should have read these. Didn't even think of it. Uh, and securely guarded. As an additional cost to enter the Tower of London, investigators at the Tower Bridge must spend four clues as a group. 
So we need to spend six somewhere. Sorry, can you, yeah, maybe I miss, miss thinking where I need to go. Only investigators at the Tower of London may spend the requisite number of clues. So, so we need so ten total yeah, to do it that way. Yeah, we need four more still. Okay, okay. but but uh, there was the option of maybe there's another way. So if we pass this test, we could do a sneaky way to get around without needing clues. Maybe. Maybe. But this one was an easier one to to get to get done too. So then we need we need the clues here then. Why? We have six total. If we can get the other way in. I don't think I can. Can you? I don't know. You had a card that had 65 skill checks on it. <laughs> yeah, but I, it's You wasted now. that already? Yeah, because I had to get this. I didn't know this was going to be a thing. Oh, you wasted it in easy on a regular. I didn't waste investigate. it. That's a waste. You think? Either on a boss fight I'm, or a game ending I'm skill down. check. I was oh down. I was down on this. Oh, my God. I didn't think it was a waste. <sighs> That's you. Oh my god! I didn't even pay. I wasn't paying attention. My bad. I'm minus. I was minus going so, into those tests. So, you don't waste your best skill card on that measly stuff on one I'm clue gonna... token. Oh my god! I think it's fine. I think it it's better fine. be. It's fine. I just don't think I. These are not my skills. The other skills are my skills. Maybe those are your skills. Nope. Definitely not my skills. I got a three and a two. Okay, we'll figure it out. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <sighs> We just need to get rid of. Can you get rid of this for me, and I can get these? Why? When there's clues here. Because we need we need another two more. We need all four of these. Um, if we but you said you're in... minus on there, and you need to use that super powerful card. So this being also a four, what are you going to use on this then? The you... other cards I draw, and I have lock okay. picks. Okay. I have lock picks now, which oh, okay, adds okay. to my. Sure. So I got to go back. You don't have to go back, Great. but we can't go forward. <laughs> well, uh, can I do this? I can test? try this. It's, maybe. it's a three on five of willpower. I could put Randall in. I could put Smoking Pipe in. I could put Monster Slayer in. But then it's like. That's all your stuff? Yeah. You don't have to. I can try to go here and do this. It's like, what's better? Like, you know? I don't know. Okay. So I'll go back. And then my final action, I believe I only have one action left. I will do the lock door before I draw the next lock door in a second. Um, and cannot be investigated. I'm going to test fight of four, which I have a fight of six, to try to break it down. <laughs> Zero. Zero. And nine. so the finger pointing begins. <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> We're both right. If we fail the scenario, I'm going to yell at you more about spending this card on a measly clue token. Measly. Which okay. we needed she in She is victory. popping a wheelie, shooting a gun, riding a motorcycle, and you use it to find a measly post-it note on a desk somewhere? When you could have used it to find a secret way through the bridge? One victory point. That one victory point is going to be huge. Not if we lose. We're not going to lose. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> <laughs> is your turn done? Uh, when you can cycle her deck and get it back. Oh, we'll, exactly. we'll see about that. Exactly. I'm looking at a, quite a fat stack of dragon shields over there. Yeah, it's because I lost my pickpocket. <laughs> All right, let's carry on. Uh, infinito. Okie dokie. We're going to try to evade this guy. Uh, he's a Is five. he a hunter? No. Okay, good. But he's got victory points as well. This does plus two damage. I maybe actually could try. Four. Oh, we no. Both of your arguments are valid. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, we're going to evade. We're putting in two backstabs so we can draw a card. So I'm five, six, seven. Get to draw a card. Another lock picks, which is on two. Seven on two. Oh, minus three, but I'm good. These are discarded. He's evaded. I'm going to move. And then this is plus three. This is a four. We're going to investigate with our lock picks. So I add my agility. So I'm eight on four. Eight on four. Minus two. We're good. Gain a clue. Alrighty. Done. 
What do we need to do now? Enemies. Enemies. Mm, he's, nope, he's he leaving. readies up. Okay. We ready. I'll ready yours. Draw. Okay. Clean them out. I need, need a resource, resource, please. Yes. Okay. Uh, to, doom, please. Yeah. Just a note, I did put Leo in also to try to get a clue. That's how much cards? One, it. two, three, four, five, six cards. All right, draw you a card. You Choose one. Either... Spend a clue or take two damage. I will take two damage. Okay, my card. Uh, oh, I'm about to lose boxing gloves. All right, but that's fine. I can afford them and just waste an action. What do you need? Uh, willpower of uh, four. Oh, I can't even commit that one. Only five. Mm -hmm. I'll put in, clean them out, and do a four and four. Yep. Tablet is minus one. If there's a concealed mini card, no, I still fail. So this is gone. Uh, I fail, discard an asset I control. Done. Done. Okay. Uh, our turn. Our turn. Okay. I can. What are you thinking? You're just going to try to get the, the clues so then when you get there, we can. Are you able to maybe get one? I don't know. We'll see, I guess. I can try. Okay. So let's investigate here using the lock picks. And so I put this in. If you succeed. I mean, I can also. Uh, can't we just go and see like what's going on here first, too? Because well, we have enough clues and you're not, we're not holding as many clues. We you can't. We can't go here unless. Um, oh, you're right. We can. You're right. We can. We can. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because then maybe there's a way to get clues off here that's like not bad either. Uh, and we gotta go there anyway. So then and I maybe we can start the red uh, glove man. I, like I want to start it before we're so far away from these effects, you know? Because those could help us find him. If somehow he comes in and they give him concealed, you know, plus three. And like we have concealed cards everywhere. And like we're wasting actions running around while enemies are jumping on our head. Okay, we can do that. I, I don't know. I just like to see more information. But it also could kick us farther advance and make it harder. And we're not got the clues yet. So... I don't know how to do it, but this is just what I'm thinking. So you want me, I can go there and spend Because the game four. is punishing us for holding clues. Yeah. So it doesn't like a clue hoarder. Uh, so like, I mean, I could even just get rid of my two, so then I'm less failing checks. Sure. You know, because you, uh, or you can get down to not having two, so you're less failing checks. Okay, do you want me to go do that? No, I, I could oh, do Oh, you it. can do it, okay. Because yeah, you can, can do just keep doing your yeah. checks, okay. you know? Right? Yep. One. And then what's this? It's uh, is it before I move. As additional cost to enter. Uh, should I try one clue search before going in? No, I'm gonna just go in. And then do you want to lose one so that you're under the yes, threshold? Yes, yes, that's what I was thinking. Okay, and then oh, I'll but then you're still at two. Yeah, but I'm gonna be at I'm gonna be over it anyways, quick. So okay. Yeah, but then you're not. So if you have to do something here, it might be easier. Okay, so then we unlock this as a cost to enter it. Tower of London. So it's a three shroud, two clues on it. Forced. After you end your turn at the Tower of London, you must either lose two resources or each enemy in the shadows attacks you. So we can't just hang out here. Okay, good to know. Do you have any other additional actions? Yeah, to get out so of I could oh, okay. just leave, which I probably should do. Done. Oh, and I haven't used this yet because I haven't actually gone. Okay. All right, so I'm investigating with lock picks. So I'm at. Five. Oh yeah, I didn't play eight. boxing gloves. No, it's fine. Eight on four. Eight on four. I'm afraid to put lock picks in because in case I lose it. Eight on four. Oh, minus three, but I am good still. So we gain this. Then I move. Actually, I'm gonna stay there. I I'm sorry. I'm gonna stay there. Okay. And I'm just gonna play boxing gloves instead. I have resources to lose, uh, you know. And if there's no enemies in the shadows, nothing happens anyway. So, oh, this yeah, you must either lose two resources or each enemy in the shadows attacks you. Yeah, but there are oh. none in the shadows right now. This I think I lose now. That was eight on four, but then it was minus three, so I was only up by one. So this is gone. But I have another one which I will play for my third action. One, two, three. Sorry about that. If anyone's yelling at me. Done. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I got it, got it. Okay, uh, enemies, just uh, this guy's chilling. Yep. Okay, ready. Uh, ready cards, draw, hollowed mirror. 
Money. Weakness. Oh, I must commit that to a test. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Doom. Doom. Is eight out of nine. Oh my gosh. We need... Your card is... Revelation. Put seeing shadows into play in your threat area. After you fail a skill test, while at a location with a concealed mini card, take one horror. Two actions to get rid of it. Okay. Yeah, this is all just a sh uh, like a taste of things to come in this campaign. Like I'm, I already can tell we're gonna be at locations with like five concealed cards all shuffled together, and like things are just trolling us like crazy. Uh, peril, revelation. If there's no enemies in the shadows, oh, figures in the dark gain search. Okay, this guy is a hunter forest. He engages you. Look at the top card of your deck. If it's not a weakness, set aside or play as a hollow. So he comes here, engages me. What are the odds again? That would be funny. No, oh. it's a get over here. We need to get those back. I know. I hope we don't permanently lose them yet. But I, I think I feel it like this is part of the campaign. Is hollows like you, you're they're gone. They're just they're just out of your deck, which scares the crap out of me. All right. Should I hurry, or you want to take care of this first, or because we have what do we need? One, two, three, four. I need two clues, which I can probably get from here. And then get to you. And then we can spend and trigger, because we want to trigger before that goes off. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we so definitely I want will to. 100%. investigate. We'll use this. I have to use, I have to use that card. And I'll put this one in as well. Hopefully I'm successful this time. So I am at eight, nine. Minus one, so eight. This doesn't let me draw a card. Eight on two. Opportunist since I, it goes back. I would have lost it because uh, I have to succeed by two or more, which is good that I didn't put it in. Oh, I see, I see. But I was hoping I would draw a card in the draw phase that would maybe go with it. Zero. So we're good. So I get a clue. This comes back to hand. This is gone. Trying for the second clue here now, which is three, four. On two. I'm up two. Oh, yeah. Edgar, that's right, because this one's randomized. The other one let us choose the cards, which made me think you're choosing them, so you might lose them. Yeah. But, yeah, it might be, or maybe there's a cost to get them back, you know? Like, you can spend an experience oh, to get a card it. back. I didn't even read this card. You must commit this to skill. The skill icon subtracts from your skill value. If this test succeeds, return it to your hand. Okay, so I have to put the... Oh, I have to put this so in. Minus so that just it. evens that out again. So I am three on two. I'm up one. Oh, yay. Plus one. If this test, uh, after this test ends, for every two points you succeeded by, return a card you committed to, um, to your hand. But I was only three. Oh, I'm up two. I'm up two. I'm up two. So this comes back to my hand anyways. This comes back to my hand. And then for every two points you succeeded, return a card you committed to your hand which they both come back to my hand anyways. This goes back in, but I do get this. Okay, then I can move. That's not an action, is it? The trigger? The six? Objective. Only investigators at the Tower of London may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. Which I'm One, there, two, I three, stayed four, there. Five, six. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. And then I think I have to, at the end of my turn, I'll have to lose two resources. Quietly and cautiously, you follow the figure from a distance. With measured haste, he darts to and fro inside an ominous, ominous tower, searching for something. Finally, while you watch from the shadows, the man with the red glove finds what he is looking for, a loose brick, along one of the candlelit halls, many columns. He casually rotates the stone back into place, with a kind of nonchalance, as if he were dealing with a piece of misplaced laundry. To your surprise, a section of the nearby wall rotates in turn, revealing a secret passageway. He ascends into the darkness, and you follow in secret. Put the set-aside tower prison location into play. <laughs> Forced, when a concealed minicard would enter play anywhere other than the tower prison, Put it into play at the tower prison. Oh, here's the situation I'm talking about. Oh, we're right. going to have a ton of concealed cards on here. Okay. They're well, already trolling us. Okay. So that attaches to... This one. And I think that's the only one. And uh, back, right? Yeah. Yep, that's it. That's it. Okay. So 
So we'll just put it up like it's part, that. Hidden in the same building, makes sense. Okay. Attach the set aside, the Eye of Raven's key to the tower prison, not controlled by anyone. So I think this is our first keys that we're reading that are new rules and new cards to this. Look at the graphic design. I love that. The templating on this card, that looks really cool. Wow. Uh, shift, during a skill test at your location, the performing investigator sets their base skill value for this test to six. Flip this key to its unstable side. Cool. So it's like a free action shift thing you can do. I wonder what the other side says. So this is the stable. And the unstable. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh so wow. cool. Uh, draw the top card of the encounter deck. Then, if an investigator shifted this key, flip it to its stable side. Okay. So it comes into play, not controlled by anybody, just sitting there, I guess. Okay. Oh, attach to the Tower of Prison. It's attached to it. Okay. Move all concealed mini cards in play to the Tower of Prison. There's there are... none. We got rid of them. Draw the set aside red gloved man enemy and resolve his concealed keyword, putting all of those concealed mini cards into play at the tower prison. So it's still just two. I thought they okay. would add extra to make it even more crazy. So this card plus two more. Okay. I'll shuffle these out of sight. Uh, okay. Uh, so then that will end my turn. Hold on, hold on. There's oh. still more. Oh, still, there's still more. Sorry. Uh, I think. No, I just want to make sure that I don't forget that I have to do this ability still. Uh, okay. Uh, so that's that. And then we do the last uh, act card. Caught red-handed. I get it. Mm. I get it. Somewhere in these forgotten crypts, the man with the red gloves is searching for something. But for what purpose? The red glove man gains parlay action. So, like, again, we have to be at his location. I don't know about being engaged with him. I don't think you have to do a parlay, right? No. Test the two things you said you suck at, and I'm not that great at, mm -hmm. uh, but hopefully you have skill cards in our hands to help us with. Um, we need five to interrogate the red glove man. If you succeed, place one resource on him. Objective. Stop the Red Glove Man from stealing the Eye of Ravens if he is defeated or if there's at least two resources on him in advance. Hmm. So, like, what's better? To, like, punch the crap out of him or to just shake him around a little and get the information out of him? Maybe a little waterboarding or something. Uh, yeah, because I have a feeling uh, they'll lead to two different things. I mean, I guess... Obviously, it's punching the crap out of him is what I want to do, but... I mean, I mean, I'd rather interrogate him. Maybe he's not too bad. Because I feel like it'll be a better ending for us. I feel like it would, but it also doesn't know, like, what... It's not like Mansion of Madness. It doesn't know what characters we came in with, what skills we're good at. I think it's just giving you lots of options, depending on your deck type or what cards are in your hand and stuff. Yeah. So, okay. I, they might just lead to the same thing. So, after your turn ends, and I'm here, you must either lose two resources or each enemy in the Shadows it attacks you. I'll just lose two resources. Alrighty. Yeah. I do just need to take a quick break. Um, yeah, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. Uh, I'll be right back in two minutes.
All right, we are back. Coffee refilled, all is good with the world. All right, ready, ready to continue. All right. All righty. <laughs> we were at the start of the turn, right? No idea. Or my is flipped. I think so. Oh, I'm flipped. Oh, we just did all of that. So you still have to get, you or you still get to go. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, it was, was uh, advancing the act deck, right? Yes, yes, sorry. And then one more in this flips too, right? Oh, yeah, because that one didn't have us advance it. No. Oh. But it is going to advance oh, and, next turn. And it doesn't move this forward anymore. Oh, okay. So that will clear, and then we probably have one last chance to do whatever. I mean, I don't uh, know if you want to go there. Yeah, we got to start searching for him, right? When a concealed mini card would enter... Oh, it just all goes there. Yeah. So if another one of those agents come up, it's gonna... that will add more to that pile. All of them go to that pile. So getting him going is probably oh better than... Oh my god, yes. This could get way out of control. All right. So I'm just going to go there and see what the shroud value is happening. I also don't want to end our turn here because you... Oh, you're going to get attacked by him, by the way. Well, I already took two... I, at the end of my turn, I already spent two resources. Oh, okay, okay. So then next turn I'll move. I'll be, I should be good. Okay, I'm moving here to the Tower of... Tower Prison. Why not? Four shroud, four clues. Free action. While an investigator at Tower Prison is performing a still skill test, spend one clue. That investigator gets plus two skill value for the test, so that will help you investigate, interrogate him and stuff, or also help you uh, look at concealed cards. Sorry, you do have a guy. Oh, thank you, thank I do. You. I, forgot. Forgot. Okay. I forgot. Let's I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. We forgot about the guy. I forgot. I have thank a guy. You. Oh, stupid idiot guy. We walked away and then forgot what was happening. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about this guy. Shoot. Okay. Okay. Hmm. 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 I mean, I could just one shot and try with Monster Slayer, but. One damage, two damage, three, four damage. Right? A one, two punch, successful, fully like going all in, would be four damage total, right? Because I'd fight, I get a damage for the first fight. I get a bonus off my Nathaniel choke because I'm using an event. So that could be two damage on the first one. Then if I succeed, which we hope I do, which not guaranteed. I get a second attack that deals normal damage plus one damage, that's four total. That could take out the guy in one go, but that's risky, but so is Monster Slayer. Excuse me. Plus see that fights with uh, five, six, but then it, uh, you know, deals one, two, and then my ability is three. So I could save one, two, punch, and hope just the one, two, punch the boss out. That'd be epic. So then maybe I just use Monster Slayer on this guy to try to just get him out in one shot. Yeah, save actions. Yeah, okay. Monster Slayer here. Uh, so I'm fighting for five on th uh, six on three. And I'll deal three damage, but I only need two. Come on, pass. Oh. If this skill test is successful during an attack, return an event from your discard pile to hands plus one. So yeah, I got him. Is this in there already? Uh, I don't know. Mm. Like if that, that's in there, that's the best one. I just don't know when you clean up your cards or like, I think maybe it goes right to your discard pile and you play it from there. I don't remember. I don't know what this game does, but uh, 
Like, because the other ones like clean them out, which is a fight when it begins to gain two resources. I mean, that's okay. Or I can get back a stand together, which if we're together, I, you can gain some resources. Boxing glove, card, and start. Yeah, the boxing gloves you can do it in a second. We're not that far yet, really. Because you killed a guy? Yeah, I'm just trying to do the star effect. I mean, I could just... I'll take clean them out because it has two skill symbols on it. Uh, that could help. It's in limbo. Okay, perfect, oh, okay, perfect, perfect. I yeah, I just wasn't well. sure. I know some games it goes like events go right to your discard pile. I, I just never can't keep track of what game does what. All right. Uh, okay, so anyways, this one's gone. Uh, this one, after you defeat an enemy, exhaust this to search the top six cards of your deck for a spirit event. Okay. Counterpunch is spirit. Get over here, spirit. Second wind is spirit. Scene of the crime, no. Second wind. All right, let's... Uh, second wind is play only if it's your first action. Uh, heal one damage two instead of if you drew a treachery this round and draw a card mm, Not worried about heal get over here is engage and then fight all in one for two cost Choose a non-elite enemy at your location or a connecting location move the enemy to your location engage it and attack it I love that card or another counter punch fast after an enemy attacks you even this attack was canceled I can fight and it targets that enemy. I probably should take this has an agility symbol on it, which is kind of rare for me if I need to do one of those. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take Counter Punch. Because I'm assuming I'm going to get an attack soon. But I, that could be wrong. But well, once we find that guy, I think so. But I don't need the damage for that. And he has Retaliate, so can you use it on a Retaliate? Uh, I think it's only... No, only an attack. Oh, okay. Well, but maybe Retaliate is attack. I don't know. All right, shuffling those back in. Also, does that... No, this enemy doesn't do anything with the hollows. I wish it did, but it doesn't. Only this guy does. And he's a victory guy. Oh, man, I should just go over there and fight him. You know what? Screw that. I'm taking the one that says get over here. Because I can get it close to this one, pull it to me, and punch it out. It's non-elite. Okay. Maybe. Maybe I do that. I right, mean, if we, if we have time. He's five, though. Is that too hefty for you? Five damage? Oh, now that I threw away Monster Slayer, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe we don't do that, but either way, I'll just take that one. And I guess I didn't do the extra damage here. I didn't need to trigger this to add extra damage, so I just did the two off Monster Slayer. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so I still have my ability for the round, or phase, or whatever. Phase. Oh, phase. So the, the counter punch, it, that can happen also in the enemy phase, when doing attacks. the extra damage. Yeah, wow. Okay. Maybe that card I take. No, I'm just joking. But are yeah. You, are yeah. you moving? Um, man, I wish you had that big awesome card because then I could trust that you could go there and like you could deal, like in, interrogate them and stuff. But like, I may get it back. And I, I could mean, just I go the opposite know. direction. No, it's there. fine. I will go there. And then for my last action, let's do a fight on the Shroud. Oh yeah, we gotta reveal a card that I pretend I never saw. Yeah. When I'm performing a skill, I can spend a clue to get plus two forced. So if we if we did the other way around, we probably had, had extra clues, you know? Yep. Forced when a concealed mini card would enter play, put it here instead. This one's also victory, but it has four clues on it. Those clues could help you with the other checks. Okay, uh, yeah, then I'll do a fight of six on four to try to peek at a card. Plus one. Okay, so what I'll do, I'm just gonna roll a die. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're supposed to put them in like a deck and then they get shuffled or what. I'm just gonna roll a die and we just pick a random one. I, I don't know. I'm not sure how you deal with these. I guess I could go back and read, but I don't want to. I'll do it. I'll do it later. Uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, this one. Is it him? <gasps> Boom! Yes. It's him. Got yes. him. Got him. Okay. Uh, so that means this guy goes here, here. These all go away because there's no one left in the shadows. So all discarded out of play. Then I can't do anything. 
Oh, he has retaliate. Yes, that's right. That's oh. why we want to do it in as well at least. Okay, as I'm done. All right, that's both of us. Okay. So enemy. He hits me. I need a three damage and a one uh, horror, please. He's gonna beat me red and blue. Beat me till I'm red and blue. Red and blue. All right. And then you have something. Do you want to do that when he hits you? No, I picked a different card. Oh, we switched. Because I'm talking yeah. about going and hunting that yeah, guy, you're right. possibly. But I have a feeling once he's done. Well, it's going to advance right now, anyways. No, hold on. This objective, though. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is this like like a force thing, or I choose when this happens? You know what I mean? Well, I think we have to choose what direction we go, so we probably get to choose. Yeah. No, 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 you're not understanding. So, objective. Stop the Red Glove Man from stealing the Eye of Ravens. If he's defeated, or if there's this many clues on him in advance. Does that auto happen immediately once that happens? Or at, when we feel like uh, doing the objective to go forward? Oh, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? I mean, if he's defeated, I would assume... Like, can I defeat him, put him in my trunk for a while, drive around, do some errands, then come back, and then we we go forward? You know what I mean? That's, that's what I... I don't know. I don't know. Objective happens automatically, but what happens for the ones where it's like if we're at the tower and we have to spend clues for the objective, we obviously choose when to do that, right? It auto happens. Okay. okay. All right. That's no fun. All right. I tried. Yeah. Like, let me show you some examples why I'm asking this question because I see things like this. I see the word forced. Very familiar with the keyword forced in Fantasy Flight Games games. But then I see things like objective, which I'm sure it's in the rules. I'm just throwing this out here for discussion. Okay. This one, objective. As a group, spend the requisite number of clues to advance before the gen advances. I don't have to do that. I think we can all have clues. And if I, as a player, say, I don't want to spend clues from my card, I don't have to. Right? Yeah. Right? This one is not forced. But then this one kind of is, right? This one kind of makes sense, right? Chase down the mysterious figure before the agenda advances. If an investigator engages the Red Glove Man in advance. I feel like that would happen automatically, right? Yeah, because it's giving you a situation. Yeah, it's weird, right? Like, it's very confusing. Why didn't they just use a forced keyword on that? Or, like, forced objective, you know what I mean? But again, those were decisions made back in, like, 2016 or whatever, you know? Or whenever this game was released. And, uh, yeah. It's just things I'm throwing out there. Just throwing out there. It's like, this for the word forced exists. Why isn't it being used? I don't know. But again, objectives probably have their own rules. Maybe they are. You know? Uh, no big deal. Okay, whatever. We'll just do it when it happens, but yeah. Okay. Okay, what's next? Uh, ready and flip. Draw and money. Oh, another one. Oh, I got counterpunch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good. Right. Doom, which we know is going to oh, advance. Yeah. Clearing this off. As the night grows deeper and the rain becomes a torrent, you flinch at every moving shadow, every sound, every shape. You wonder if perhaps this investigation is getting the best of you. Or maybe there are more of them than you thought, watching you, lying in wait for the perfect opportunity to strike. The lead investigator must decide, choose one. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for one of these dirtbag shadow agents and draw it. Well, we're kind of okay with that because he adds cards. He adds a doom, though. Or each investigator takes one damage and one horror. Now, the good part is we found the red guy. If we didn't, I would 100% yeah. we're doing the second one. Okay. But adding some more hidden agents, yes, it adds a doom, so it reduces a whole turn off the game. Because, like, are we really going to start searching through the cards? No. No. But. I mean, I'm fine with you, because I only have two damage so far, so that would put me to three damage. I would eight. go up to th uh, four, and four. No, I'd go up to three sanity out of six. And four damage out of nine, which I feel like is okay. But if I don't deal with the red glove man quick enough, he could still keep hitting me. Yeah. There are still enemies in the game that could drop in on our head and hit us and deal with us. 
I mean, we can go with the... I, I am okay with the damage and horror. I am scared, though, in a campaign, early in a campaign, to take enough that I would have um, trauma or whatever it's called yeah. in this game. I do have that in the back of my mind, a little PTSD with that stuff where you're starting with it, but... I do have the smoking pipe in hand, though, but, like, realistically... No, we're not going to do that with the... At what point? But it's free, though, like, as long as I play it for an action. I could just spend to get rid of a bunch of horror three times, like, no problem. I think we're, I think we're fine. We don't need what? to... No, let's take the damage and horror. Okay. Just because there's a chance of extra agents coming or some stupid thing where the Red Hood Man goes away. And it's asking it. us to choose this before flipping, right? Yeah. There's your three, and then you need one more. Yeah, I have, I have. Okay, okay whatever. Um, no, I agree. You're right. Yeah. And I have, if I... Uh, if you fail a skill test while at a location with a concealed mini card, take one horror. So if I if there's no mini cards, I don't even have to worry about this one. Okay, so okay. we made our choice. Yep. Go. Yeah. Uh, plots and panics. Deep fog blots out the moonlight, bathing the city in utter darkness. From the rooftops, ravens will watch your progress with inhuman intelligence. Every moving shadow sets your mind racing. If you don't find the man with the red gloves and stop his plans, who knows what he will do next. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so we just got to finish this guy. But, man, if I could evade him, which would be hilarious. Or I just move and let him punch me. All right. I think I have to finish it. Like, I want to beat this guy so bad because he's got victory. Get our hollows back just in case. Yeah. It, it, there's no way like you have enough evade to just walk in there and like evade him, but you'd have to engage him, right? Mm -hmm. uh, evade, I because I could come back and fight him. Not with this, but maybe I could draw. Because this minus is one. Edgar did the investigation and found out an answer for advancing. There is a free option one. It it has word. It have word may your choice two free choice like you spend in clues, and option three it has a word if. Forced. Oh, if is forced. Oh, oh, if means it's forced. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, Edgar. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, it's like a situation. So this one, stop the red glove man from stealing. So it says if he's defeated means it is like a forced. But if it said uh, spend two clues to advance or something, that is we do it. Uh, you may. And if it also had the word you may, that's obviously optional. Okay, okay. Edgar, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I knew there was some trickery to that. I knew there was some trickery. Three. Not free. Okay. Oh, there is three options. Yes, yes. I get it. I get it now. All mm -hmm. makes sense. There are three options. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, encounter perfect, cards perfect, for perfect. me first, because that was just the doom that advanced. Encounter card for me. If there are no enemies in the shadows, it gains surge. Okay. Oh, this image always reminds me of Mansion of Madness Second Edition. <laughs> I feel like this is like on the first scenario or something, the like the fail screen or the ending screen if bad things happen. I feel like I've seen that screen a few times. It's it's like stuck in my memory. Uh, Revelation: If you have no clues, false lead gains surge. I have no clues. Locked door attached to the location of the most clues without a locked door attached. Oh, the victory one. Can't get clues now okay. unless you kick the lock or punch the door. Fine. And yours. <laughs> Go through so many cards to get to mine. Obscuring fog. Revelation. Attached to the location. Limit one per location. Attached location. Gets plus two shroud. Force. After attached location successfully investigated, discard obscuring fog. They really don't want us to get clues off the tower. Yeah. All right. Remember, too, that you also have this if you need. No, nope, uh, it's not attached to anybody. During a skill test at your location. No, nope, not attached to anybody. You have to own the key. Like in the rules at the beginning we read earlier, you have to have this doesn't belong to anyone. So we're going to attach it to this location, and it's back there. We can't see it. Okay? It has to be on a, an asset in play you control to do the shift or attached to the player itself. So why did it put it out? Because it's just sitting in the tower, the red man's going for it, we have to stop him. Oh, okay. We might be able to earn it ourselves, but if he gets it, it attaches to him, he'll become unstable, 
You'll have it in a future scenario. We don't want this. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You read them, right? This morning. Yeah, I, but I thought reading. it attached to location. And no, we, we it could, did attach to location, but it did say it. it's not controlled by anybody. But uh, yes, but I it thought... It didn't say players can interact with it. No, no, in here, Mel. Remember you read this morning about the, the, the abilities? Here, here. I know because I was, I was, I, was, I just I, read it for fun to show the card. I know, but. I know. I, I understand. You don't need to show me. I did read that. Yeah. And what it said was attached to location. I thought this said attached to location. And then it says during the skill test at your location. No, you have to control it to do the shift ability. Yeah, it's fine. I which understand. was stated in the rules here. Yeah. While a key is attached to an investigator, that investigator may trigger a shift ability during any player window as a free ability. This is called shifting the key. As a part of the ability's resolution, it will instruct the investigator to flip the key to its other side so the other shift ability is active. The investigator will then have to perform the shift ability on its unstable side to flip it back over again. While a key is attached to a story asset, it may be shifted by any investigator who controls that asset in the same way. Each key by title attached to investigator or story asset can be shifted once per round. While a key is under enemy's control, if the shift ability only resolves when a card or game effect instructs the investigator to shift that key, after which it remains unstable side face up. A key attached to an enemy cannot be flipped to its stable side. There is no limit to the number of times a key attached to an enemy can be shifted. And then it says some card effects may directly flip a key attached to an investigator or story asset from its stable side to its unstable side or vice versa. This is not the same as shifting a key and does not resolve its shift ability. So yeah, it'll have to be controlled to even do that. Or if it let us through a card effect, but it has not yet. Yep. Okay. Unless that location is considered a story asset, but I don't think locations are assets. I think story assets are like assets, like actually are assets, you yeah, know, like that come that from we, the story. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, where are we at? Your turn. My turn? Well, I don't know. Did you want to just finish? What am I doing? Killing this guy? Uh, I don't know. That's what we're discussing. Like, um... Yeah, as, as long as I have this, I don't think I can do it. Like, I'm minus on tests. Oh, okay. I, I don't think... All right, let's just finish him, I guess. I mean, that evens it out, but... I'm still my... Yeah, no, I definitely cannot. Okay, so we'll try the counter punch on him, I guess? For two costs? Two cost. I'm fighting him. He's a five. Uh, I get five plus one plus one. So I am seven on five. I'm going to make it eight on five. Oh, wow, again. That's like the third that's... or something time yeah. I pulled that. Wow. Okay. Uh, that's a plus one. If this skill test successful during attack, return an event from your discard pile to your hand. I'll take Monster Slayer. I don't know. Yeah, that's an event. Okay. Uh, if you succeed, you may fight that enemy again. So that did... Hold on. That did... I'll do two damage for that one because I'll use my ability. Okay, so that's two damage. And then uh, you may fight that enemy again if I succeed. You get plus two fight and deal plus one damage. So this will do two more damage if I hit it through. Okay, uh, so this one is five, six, seven, eight, which I think I'm just okay with. Here we go. Phew. Tablet is minus one if there's a concealed mini card at your location, which there would have Wait, been. I forgot about. We didn't do that. That is another negative I didn't even think of when we're making that choice on the uh, card, uh, the actor, the agenda, or whatever. Uh, okay, so this does two damage. Pow! Victory display, bro. Okay. And then boxing gloves, top six cards of your deck. I don't think this matters, but I'm gonna do it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah, it's just a uh, second wind. Shuffle. Okay, and then we said stop the red glove man from stealing the eye of ravens if he's defeated or if there is two resources on him advance. 
If you def oh, there is oh, two. Yeah, okay, damn okay. it. Okay, if you defeated the red glove man, the figure reels backwards, grasping at his wound. Some small something small clatters to the ground. The man says nothing, only glares at you from the darkness. Uh, his gloves seem to ripple around his hands, like the disturbed surface of a deep crimson pool. And after a moment, he straightens himself. Then, bending into the shadows, he tips his hat and is gone. Uh oh. <laughs> Add the red glove man to the victory display. I already did, I already did that. <laughs> I was way ahead of you there. All right. Uh, resolution one on page seven. Page seven. I guess I should get this out in case it tells me to bring uh, it again. Resolution one. You search for the man with the red gloves through every possible hiding place and down every shadowed corridor, but he is well and truly gone. It is as if he vanished into thin air. You wonder for a moment if he was somehow erased from existence like the other disappearances, but you don't believe so. There is no mark, no ectoplasm remains. He simply was there and then he was not. You give up searching for him and instead examine the object that clattered to the ground during your scuffle. It is a small ruby marble, no larger than an eye. Indeed, you investigate the crypt that the man was rummaging through and find that the marble size matches the eye sockets of the long deceased corpse inside. They must have been buried with it, meaning perhaps this marble is what the man with the red gloves sought all along, but why? Investigating further, you find neither name or epitaph identifying the corpse buried here, only the following lines of what appears to be poetry chiseled into the lid of the body's coffin. With red we are bound. Through red we are one, thus in red we do bury our kin and our ken. May you rest until you are needed once more. Before you have time to even consider what this might mean, you hear the telltale rumbling of the secret passageway shifting upstairs once more, and the pounding of heavy footsteps down the stairwell. You arm yourself and prepare for a fight. To your surprise, it's Inspector Flint, oh. who greets you. Held at gunpoint by a woman dressed in a black suit, wide-brimmed hat, and matching black trousers. She has ebony dark skin, cold eyes underscored by heavy bags, and short, curly hair. Two other suits flank her, both of whom say nothing and stand like statues as she enters the crypt. She flashes an unidentifiable silver badge and mentions for you to stay put. Where did the man with the red gloves go, she asks, and who are you? Can I put my hands down now, Inspector Flint says. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. One, two, three. Three. Four. No, I'm just going. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. Uh, choose an investigator to be the bearer of the red or sorry, of the Eye of Ravens, and update the campaign log accordingly. From now on, whenever a character becomes the bearer of a key, keep the key handy for the rest of the campaign, as it will begin play attached to that character. In future scenarios, the Eye of Ravens begins play attached to the investigator is bound to. So who wants to have this ability on the stable side of during a skill test at your location, the performing investigator sets their base skill value to six. Flip it to its unstable. And again, that's your base. So you still can commit cards to the test, effects that can help you, but your base, so the basically what's printed on your, on your um, card, I think. So shift, draw the top card of the encounter deck. So if you want to use that ability again to flip this back, and there might be stuff that punishes you for walking around with unstable keys. That makes sense, yeah. So I don't know, like, you know, you draw a card from the encounter deck and it's like, if a player has an unstable key, give them a horror and, you know, or give them a damage, whatever. Or put this in their play area. They now deal with this crappy card. So to flip it back, you got to get another encounter card. And then you can use this ability again. So this is great to like help you when you're in a, a jam. You know, for those like final trying to get a victory point off a location or something. Or yeah. But I'm wondering, is that something you should have as the fighter if you get into a sticky situation or a boss I have fight? already five on my base fight. So oh. I feel it's one where like maybe we can shore up a weakness. So like you on investigate have only a three. Yeah. You know, so this now makes it when we really need to get a clue or do an investigate check, you could do it. Or you can do it on a willpower. You're only at a one. Yeah. Like, I feel like you're getting way more benefit because you're really cheating in that case. Okay. But me on a fight, like getting, this is like a plus one. I would never, ever do that for just a plus one. Okay, I'll take it. 
I would I do it. On, I would do it on like maybe an agility, I'd like to do it on a eight or something if I'm really desperate. Unless right. somebody thinks that should go to somebody else, uh, like attached to uh, Nathaniel for some reason. I I really I really like that on Mel, but but then again, that means you're drawing to get it back. If you really want to do it more than once in a scenario, you're drawing an encounter card to deal with it. So like, but, but you have good evade, yeah, so like that's you what can. Say, yeah. I don't know. Oh, Yogi's helping us out with the upgrades. Okay, Yogi, nice. I'll read that in a second. I'll read that in a second. Okay, uh, so I'm taking it. Okay, in your campaign log, record that you haven't seen the last of the Red Glove Man. You haven't seen the last of the Red Gloved Man. Really? I thought that would be it. I thought he'd be done and gone. And then if you can mark one time in your campaign log, so just add a time to your little time recording there. And then proceed to interlude the foundation on page nine. Is interlude another scenario or is it just more going through story and stuff? That I can't remember from when we did Edge of the Earth. I think we were fine. Like, am I supposed to stop here or interludes I keep going because it's just more of like this stuff? I think it's more of this stuff until we get to the prologue of the next one. No, prologue is like the first, the first scenario. One, yeah, but I thought there was like a little prologue before each. Scenario. I think it would say proceed to scenario. Yeah, I don't know. I'll just check. Interlude is usually story. Oh, okay. So we're good to keep doing okay, it, right? Okay. okay, let's just do it. Uh, yep. Interlude the foundation. Okay. Talk, the woman commands. I'm a detective with the ICPC. Flint barks back. Flint, Lee Flint. And you're going to be in a lot of trouble when they hear about this. I assure you, I will not. And you, she asks, glaring in your direction. You explain that you are an independent investigator working with Flint. She takes a moment to read your gaze, presumably to tell if you are lying. She, like Flint, seems low on trust. Finally, after a long baited moment, she holsters her firearm. Flint's hands drop to his side. You let out a breath you didn't know you were holding. We have been after that red glove man for quite some time. This is the first time we've gotten this close. He seems to have a knack for slipping away. She nods to the two suits flanking her, a tall, athletic, pale-skinned woman and a sharp, clean-shaven man, and motions toward the walls. They keep a hand, on their holsters as they scour the perimeter of the room. And who is we exactly, Inspector, Inspector Flint asks? You've been wondering the very same thing. Your interrogator is a British ac has a British accent, and she doesn't seem to be a part of any local outfit you've heard of. She waits for confirmation from the two subordinates before continuing. All clear, ma'am, the man states. She sighs and crosses her arms. All right, what I'm about to tell you cannot leave this room under any circumstance. Am I clear? Flint shrugs. Under penalty of what, exactly? Summary execution, she states without hesitation. Your throat closes tight. Even your partner flinches for a moment. Well then, I suppose we do not have much of a choice, do we? He glances at you, and you nod. You might as well hear what she has to say. I'm Commissioner Taylor, and these are our agents Hudson and Antonova. We are with the... Foundation, an international agency devoted to discovery, research, and containment of objects with paradimensional capability. So these are the men in black. They're the men in black, right? Uh, what kind of baloney? Uh, Flint practically laughs, but the woman who calls herself Taylor shows no signs of humor. After the Great War, many treaties and accords were signed. Paris, Versailles, but keeping peace wasn't the only goal. There were oddities, you see. During the war, things that did not add up to the Foundation's purpose uh, is find these things, things that do not add up, and ensure that they cannot be used for such purposes ever again. Well, this is a hell of a con you buttons have cooked up, Flint says, but the darker tone in his voice indicates he doesn't even believe himself, and you're inclined to agree. The fact that the Commissioner Taylor even knows of the Red Glove Man at all is proof that she has inside knowledge. You decide that it's more likely she is telling the truth than lying, and ask what she intends to do with you. She paces in uncomfortable silence before finally letting out a sigh. Well, I certainly can't leave your investigation running parallel to my own. And you might have information that I could pertain to our work. Or that could pertain to our work. So I say we work together. Work together? Or work for you? Flint asks pointedly, his eyes narrowing. She allows herself a smile. You are a clever man, I'll give you that. She nods to Agent Hudson, who produces several badges and hands them to you. You'll be your own cell of the Foundation, operating under your authority but with independence or under our authority, within, but with independence. All you need to do is agree to report your findings to us. She locks eyes with Flint appraisingly. You'll be our point of contact. You ask Taylor what you get out of the arrangement beside the lifted threat on your lives. Well, 
will hand over intel we have on the organization the Red Glove Man works for and provide travel papers that can get you anywhere in the world, no questions asked, at no expense. Flint eyes the badge like one might, ex uh, might an explosive, turning it over and over in his hands. Two minutes ago, you were pointing a gun at me. Now you're offering me a job? Yes, well, are you in? You pull Flint aside and speak with him in private. The discussion is short and hushed, full of conjecture and paranoid theories about this foundation and their true motives. But in the end, you decide to accept her offer. If it will help you to get to the bottom of whatever is going on, it is the only real choice. Very well then, Taylor explains. The Red Glove Man is just one operative of his organization, or perhaps its leader. That we are unable to determine. They call themselves the Red Kotiri, uh, so named due to the red garments they wear. They are after artifacts scattered around the world which possess paradimensional capabilities, the very same kind of objects we seek to find and contain. We call them keys. You ask Commander Taylor what she means by the term paradimensional. Imagine a cake with many layers, she explains. Everything we see and feel exists on one layer, but there are many more layers above and below ours. Something that is paradimensional exists in one layer, but draws energy from another, parallel layers. As a result of these keys, uh, as a result, these keys operate outside the laws of our dimension. Cause and effect. If left unchecked, they can be used to inflict terrible harm on the world. Our job, our new job, is to get them out of the hands of the Kotiri and keep them secure in Foundation custody. If these keys are as powerful as the Foundation believes, you agree that they should be kept in safe hands. But you cannot help but wonder uh, what this has to do with the disappearances you've been investigating, if anything. Flint locks eyes with you and gives you the slightest shake of his head. He has no intention of telling them. The investigators must decide, choose one. Option one. Tell Taylor about the disappearances. Proceed to the foundation number two. Or don't tell Taylor about the disappearances. Skip to the foundation three. This sounds like a poll. Mmm, mm, cake. I love when people in the chat have this come to the same conclusion like right at the same time. Or like make the same conclusion yeah, yeah, right yeah. at the same time. It's, it's like, hilarious. Great minds. Great minds <laughs> think alike. Uh, okay. Tell her or don't tell her? Tell her about... Uh, disappearances, which I'm probably not spelling right. Let's see. Nope, definitely not. I can see that it's not. All right, poll in the chat. Do we keep the disappearances we've learned about to ourselves? Maybe she already knows about them. Maybe we earn some trust by telling her. Or do we just keep them to ourselves and keep it our little secret because we don't trust her that much? Yeah, are we staying with the trust or are we not? She didn't say don't trust me. She didn't, so that means we shouldn't trust her because she didn't tell us. She seems to know a lot. She seems to know a lot. But she doesn't know about this already. Or she hasn't said she knows well, about it. Well, she knows her notes and stuff. I, like, I don't know. Like, we're going to have all our information. I don't know. It's all good. You guys vote in the chat and we'll go with the majority, I guess. I would probably lean to telling her. Yeah, to stay on. To build some trust. trust. Yeah, yeah. A little backstabbing is not a bad thing. Yeah. You know? All right. Let's close the poll. Oh, uh, Jackpot Man. Hey, just joined in time for the vote. So I voted. I have no idea what I voted for, though. That's okay. You have an addiction, Jackpot Man. I'm sorry. <laughs> just blind voting. It's a problem. You need to see somebody. I appreciate it. Nice to see you. All right. End the poll. 55% want us to okay. tell her about the disappearance. Yep, let's tell okay. her then. Okay, Good I'm down. Good choice. Well, no, Maybe. I wouldn't go that far. All right, Foundation 2. You decided it's best to tell Commissioner Taylor why you were looking into the Red Glove Man to begin with. Flint lets out an, available si an audible sigh. She mulls it over for a few moments and shakes her head. That's something to look into, but your primary objective is to acquire the keys the Coterie is searching for at all costs. Am I understood? Taylor further explains that she will forward any relevant information to Flint's office with some sensitive details omitted, of course. She will also provide the ICPC the requested, uh, requisite papers regarding Flint's new position. Oh, and Agent Flint, she says on her way out, addressing him by his new title. Your cell may have the independence to act on their own accord, but do not forget that you report directly to me. I expect you to do so without reservation should you discover anything of importance. He nods, only the slightest hint of resistance giving him away. 
remove one elder uh, elder thing token from the chaos bag. Add a tablet token. Oh, we don't have any. If there are already four, each investigator earns one experience instead. No, nope. we're adding our third one. <laughs> okay, tablet going in. Third tablet. And you took elder thing out. We don't have any more. We already took it out earlier. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, one more though. We in your campaign log, record. The cell told the truth to Taylor. And then we skip to Foundation 4. No, Tablet's bad. They're all bad. For example, in the scenario we just played, Tablet is like, um... There's one more token. What's the missing one the here? The cultist. Yeah, okay. Which we don't have any. So the skull is usually the most gentle. Then the cultist is like second bad. Then the Tablet's like third worst token. This is like the fourth worst from the ones that appear on this sheet. Obviously, there's the token that will not be named, which we'll pretend doesn't exist. Um, but yeah, so it's like it was trying to take out a worse token, which we've already done. Because we're playing on easy, I think we only had one of these. So maybe maybe we would have had two or maybe we would have missed that last option and we had another chance to get it out. But right now we have no elder thing in there, which is great. Yeah. So the worst it can get is tablet, which is still sucky, but not as sucky as elder thing. Yeah. But we just added a second one in. So we're more likely to really third get this one now. third one. So we have three of these in here, so we're very likely to see this option a lot, whatever it is, yeah. for the scenario. Which currently is minus one, which is as long as we're playing for that. You know it's going to be worse on the next yeah, one. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so I skip into the foundation four. The next morning, your cell meets at the tea room near Trafalgar Square, where you had originally intended to meet the previous night. Together, you go over the documentation provided to Flint by this foundation. It's all a bit difficult to believe, if I'm being honest, Flint says, but everything checks out. The travel papers, the job transfer, all of it. Not even my boss questioned it for a moment. I guess we're your secret agents now, eh? Oh, this guy's Canadian. <laughs> you agree. Unbelievable as it might seem, it is no less strange than the matters you had already been looking into, right? Well, I think the best thing to do is just split up. Shanghai is where I grew up. I have connections there that I can leverage. So I'll head here first, there first. Uh, where you want to investigate next is up to you. Meet up with me later and we can figure out where to go from there. The Foundation has several leads concerning the whereabouts of the Red Kotiri. One is likely in Inspector Flint's home city of Shanghai, where, they have been, uh, where there have been many rumors about the existence of a secret cabal led by a mysterious woman with a red parasol. Oh, maybe I should put this up on screen. There's like, a, I think it's going to lead up to our choice of where to go next. There's like lots of stuff here. In Alexandria, there have been a rash of beastly killings throughout the city. The Foundation has reason to believe a member of the Kotiri is involved. A string of high-profile burglaries in Buenos Aires has led the Foundation to believe that one of the Kotiri members is responsible. It's, a like, it's likely a key is the primary target. A member of the Kotiri has a sanctum in Nairobi. Perhaps there you might learn what they have planned. The Foundation has procured the journal of a prospector recently working in Anchorage. Perhaps the site of a key? That's in Alaska, right? I don't want to go to like any cold place again after the edge of the earth. No way. Uh, all right. A Kotiri agent operating out of Istanbul has already reached out to the Foundation operatives, a defector perhaps, or it could be a trap. Locals in Kathmandu, I'm probably saying that wrong, have reported seeing a spirit, quote-unquote, matching the description of another Kotiri agent. A deadly Kotiri agent has been sighted in Marrakesh. Marrakesh. Reports of tomb robberies and strange overgrowth have the local foundation operatives on edge. A Kotiri agent has made a name for himself in Havana, where rum and other illicit goods have been smuggled into the United States. Read the rules for embarking and travel and the foundation dossiers on the next column. Then when you're ready to proceed, embark from London to a new location. That's so cool. So cool. Yeah, I was thinking, Blanky Cow was thinking that exactly. It was like, here it's laying out all the possible scenarios that you can do before the finale. And there's the tips, the little, little breadcrumbs that lead you to maybe help you choose where to go. 
But let's read the rules on embarking and travel. Okay. Whenever you embark, you may travel where you wish using the map included in the Scarlet Keys campaign expansion. Each space on the map is connected to one another, one or more spaces, one or more other spaces, sorry. When you're ready to embark, travel along the paths to reach whichever destination you wish as a group. For each path you use to reach your destination, you must mark one time in your campaign log to a minimum of one. At each space on the map, there is a number and letter containing that will guide you to the particular page in the campaign guide. You do not have to stop at every space you travel through. However, if you wish to stop traveling and see what is in that space, turn to the page in the campaign guide that matches the indicated number and follow the story text there. Or use the table of contents on page two to help you find the appropriate page. This might lead you to an interlude or a scenario. There is no perfect path to follow, so follow your gut. Just be wary of how much time you spend. See tracking time on page six. For example, Shelley wishes to travel from Alexandria to Marrakesh. She first marks one time to use the path to Rome. Oh, I think that's this. I, I, I'm oh, aware sorry. of that. Sorry. But, but this is cooler because I'm going to show a whole map. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have this whole map here. So we're, we are basically playing Pandemic. Okay, this is basically the Pandemic board from the game they used. Uh, and here's all the location. We've got to run around and stop the disease from spreading. I'm just kidding. We're more playing Eldritch Horror here is what I think is happening. So they all have like 26L, 26G, 51T. So they also have different symbols on them too. Red dots, blue stars. Hmm. Oh, down here. Oh, there's a legend. Standard location. If stopped at, go to mark page and guide. Secret slash locked location. You cannot stop here until unlocked. May pass through. Side story location. May stop to play a side story. Costs no time to pass through. This is cool. That is very cool. This is cool. There's no perfect path. Look at all the paths. Oh my god. I don't think it's ever going to end. There's so much stuff to do. We can go everywhere, do side quests, interludes, go do scenarios. Holy crap. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, for example, Shelly wishes to travel from Alexandria, right here, to Marke Marrakesh, which is here. Looks like she could go through Rome, or she could go like Nairobi, Lagos, back to Marrakesh. Oh my god. Okay, let's see. She first marks one time to use the path to Rome, but she does not stop there, and then marks one more time to go from Rome to Marrakesh, where she stops. Marrakesh is marked as 11B, so she opens the campaign guide to page 11 and reads file number 11-B, dead heat. Some locations are marked by a red border and the lack of a letter. You can only travel to such location once you're permitted to do so by a campaign log entry. Some locations are marked by a green border, represent the sites of possible side stories, found in other Horkham Horror, the card game standalone products. Find at your local, friendly local game store or online retailer. <laughs> Click the link down below. No, I'm just joking. Uh, all right. If you wish to incorporate a side story into this campaign, simply travel to the appropriate location on the map and spend additional time equal to the normal experience cost for playing the side story instead of spending the experience cost. If you are not stopping at one of these locations embark on, uh, to embark on a side story, you may skip it and continue traveling on the path. If so, it count, it, sorry, count it as one continuous path, not as two separate paths. Okay. Or sorry, one contigu contiguous, contiguous path, not as two separate. Once you have stopped at a location, you cannot stop there again for the remainder of the campaign unless instructed otherwise. Wow. Yeah, I don't have a zoom in button for this one, but I need to make it now so we can zoom in on the map when we're doing that stuff. Okay, uh, throughout this campaign guide, there are a number of foundation dossier sidebars. So this is foundation dossier. Okay, uh, as an example, which is presented below, investigation is allowed, investigators are allowed to peek at the foundation dossier sidebar bar for any space on the map at any time. Use these sidebars to help guide your actions and plan your route. While reading a dossier, investigators are not allowed to peek at any other text on that page until they travel to that location. So for example, file 11B, subject class red, real identity unknown, last known location, Marrakesh, Morocco. 
and then it gives you some more information. So I think if I go to 11B, oh, right here. So I'm gonna hold this far away, but here's the story stuff for uh, 11B dead heat. But I could peek here first, read all this with redacted text and everything before deciding to go there. So that's cool too. So it's more than just this listed little hint. Is there this one as well? 5A19? File 5. Eight. Well, that's not a page. No, I don't know. No. Because it just looks like it's like similar format. So I just want yeah. to check. Okay. Hold on. I can check page 2 and see if that's in the list. Oh, it's the prologue. File 5. Oh. A, A is the prologue Riddles and Rain we played. Okay. Cool. So they'll probably say where they came from, you know? That's where it came from. Cool. <laughs> Look at how many there are. My God. Hey, look at them all. Wow. File 59Z or Z is the finale, Congress of the Keys. Wow. Okay. Okay, this is cool. Yeah, I love how non-linear this is. This is this is uh this is what I need. This is what I need. So then from here from London, before we play the next one, we have to figure out where we're going. Yeah. Wow. Uh we can decide at the start of the next stream then. Uh, like reread this at the start of the next yeah, kind of and then maybe some people can make some suggestions. I can only put like I think four options in a poll, so like we can we can read these and discuss. Maybe we'll pick like four of them and kind of poll them, or forever whoever's here at the start of the next stream, and then um, we can also read for those four locations. We can read this to help people decide, you know, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Okay. Or like we can work on eliminating some, you know, like, I don't know, we can do a tournament where we pull like four versus four and then like have a bracket going. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah, because we can even figure <laughs> out like based on how much time away things are, like maybe we don't oh, want to jump all the way 12 time. That makes sense. We are in London. This, yeah, so, you, you make 100% sense. I, yeah, I forgot about that. So maybe we could just look at ones that are close. Yeah. And just put those on a poll. Yeah. That probably works. That works. That works. We'll do and that. Probably pick a direction. Yes, we'll do that. We'll take a look. We'll zoom in on the map. We'll take a look at what's around London, which ones are even blue stars that we can even go to, and then we'll kind of read what those are, put them in a poll. There. That, yeah. That's the plan. That's that'll the plan. eliminate some of them. I don't want to waste too much time. I don't want to waste too much time. At least I don't think we do. But all right. Uh, where am I looking here? Yeah, it didn't tell us to spend XP, right? Yeah, so we got three. But did it say to, to spend it and upgrade our decks, or is that just always a common thing? I probably ask this every time we start a campaign. I always forget, because sometimes it tells you not to spend it, but it does it only stop you when it says not to spend it, and you're always just assumed as soon as you get XP, you can spend it? I thought there was a time where it says, now investigators can spend XP to upgrade your decks. Where was that at, at the ending? It just said gain experience equal to victory X. Choose an investigator to take the Eye of Ravens. Record that we, the Red Glove Man stuff. Mark one time and proceed to the interlude. We did the interlude. So just kind of saying like you always get to spend it, I guess, unless it says otherwise. Oh, okay. So I always forget. Like, I wish they just said, now you can go spend XP, go crazy. Yeah, I always forget. Jackpot Man saying, do you do the vote now so that the people watching the stream have it fresh in their mind? It no, I don't we'll, think it will no, matter. we'll recover. Jackpot Man, we'll go over this. We'll recap. We'll recap yeah. at the beginning. And, and it's for those who are there at the beginning of the stream. If they didn't watch this stream to know what's happening in the story, they're crazy. <laughs> We're going to play this one in a few days from now, at least. So it should give more people time to watch and catch up and join us for the next one. Uh, so if you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications uh, so you get notified when we go live if you have your YouTube notifications enabled on your device or whatever, um, or you just subscribe, check your subscription feed. You know, if you're watching this later, you can just check the playlist link down below just for the next episode. When I schedule it, it'll be in the playlist down below for the Scarlet Keys. Uh, if you're bored and you wanna watch more Arkham Horror, that's also linked down below in many other playlists that we played. Um, but yeah, it, we'll just do it at the start of the scenario. We'll read what's going on there. We'll give a little recap maybe, um, that we're basically chasing on the Red Glove Man and his, his they're trying to find keys. What do we do? We, we're now agents trying to chase them down. Here's what we know at these handful of locations that are close to London. 
Which, where should we go? Like, I'm all good. We'll pick whatever. Um, but yeah, I would do it now, but like, I'm not going to remember why we chose what we did. I'd rather like, for my sanity, kind of have a recap and make those decisions that are going to affect that play rather than do this now. And then like seven days from now, we could be playing. I'm not going to remember what we chose and why oh, and what. Yeah, yeah I'm going to need that recap too. So I figure it's just better to do it fresh at the beginning. Uh, okay, so we're going to upgrade then, right? Yep. That's okay. And Yogi, I'm going to scroll back up because Yogi was spilling it all in there. I'm also going to just take that. I saw it. I swear I did. Let me scroll, scroll, scroll. Bonded card out of that? my deck. So I'm taking the Guardian out that got shuffled in. Yeah, yeah. Taking that out now. I'm taking all the weakness out of my deck and throwing them in a paper shredder. Mm -hmm. What? I'm not okay. Say anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have three XP. See. Two times lock picks, one experience, plus easy mark, which is one experience, and myriad. One X Hungering Blade replaced Survival Knife. Two X Sweeping Kick replaced Two X Second Wind. Easy Marks replace You Handle This One Times Two plus Watch This. Mm. Okay, let's bring up the decks on screen. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, because I also, Yogi, don't know what Myriad does. I'm not sure. Can I edit it? Have I been logged out? I don't think so. That's the problem. You can click edit, but then when you go to click save, it like will, it'll, you'll get kicked out. It's so, so weird. Okay. Uh, so let's try this again. Uh, I'm going to go scroll down and see. Myriad means you get three cards for the price of one. What? Bye, Jackpot Man. See you Bye. later, buddy. Okay, so uh, let's try to go here. So, okay, I gotta relearn how to do this it's, again. It's been a year since we did this. There's like a, uh, there was like a click to upgrade or something. You see it? No. I'm gonna pull this up so that as. How did you do the? Uh, is it options? Oh, you know what I got to do is edit my collection. I bet we don't, we have our last collection. Yeah. I, oh. I, I started to click this. I unclicked Edge of the Earth, and I didn't go in and, like, so I, I think we, like, ha have everything. I don't know if there's a, is there a button to just click everything. No. We don't have everything, everything, but we definitely have all this stuff. Yeah, because originally I was, I was honestly debating just doing Scarlet Keys and, like, just like the re-release content, like Dunwich and Path of Carcosa, but then it's like that, I have to sort through the stuff. We have all the return twos, I'm pretty sure. These we have all, but they don't pull player cards, so I don't think it matters. Where's the fortune and the folly? It's missing. <laughs> hey, what the hell? Yeah, because that has cards we could gain and add to our decks to play through the scenario, I think. So that is not in there yet. Uh, promotional. Yeah, we have some stuff here. I don't have all of it though. I don't remember which ones. Who cares? Parallel don't don't have any of that that I know of. All right, save. Okay. So then we'll go back here. We'll go back here. Oh, there it is. Upgrade. Oh, because I clicked edit. Yeah, oh, okay. I clicked edit. That's what why it disappeared. Upgrade. So three XP. Three. Thank you. Sorry. I didn't know. I need to scroll down. I, guys, I'm not seeing the chat right now because I have it scrolled up I reading it Yogi's here stuff. So that, oh, okay, yeah. okay. So yeah, I just need to go through Yogi's stuff here that he put yeah, like earlier in the chat. Like literally 30 something minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. All right. He's already on it. Uh, okay, let's see. So two lock picks. So why is it? Oh, I'm on the wrong.
So two in the deck. And I'm assuming that gets rid of these two, right? Yep. Okay. So that's, that makes sense. That's easy. Yeah, that one makes sense. Then easy mark one myriad. So I get three of them is what I think they're saying. I get all three of them. Me oh, it's got the, I see. It has the word myriad on the card, which we're supposed to know. Yeah, I did. That's what I said. From okay. Dream Eaters. I don't remember that being a thing, but sure. So you get all three? That's what they're saying. Okay, I'm clicking three. Then it says it contains too many cards. So we need to get rid of three cards, which he listed. You handle this one times two. You handle Oh, so you can't give away stuff to me anymore. And watch this. Watch this one. Which is a skill. Yep, you only have one in the deck. It's gone. You handle this. So that's you done. All experience spent? Yes. And okay. I click save. One, two, three. Yes. Okay. Okay. And I guess I'll link this deck in the next episode when I make it. Uh, okay. And then we go to my deck. I guess I can just close this one and close this one. So I'm only on one page. My decks. Mr. Grumpy. Upgrade. Three. Upgrade. Okay, what was it? Uh, Hungering Blade sounds awesome. Uh, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm being silly. I could just scroll down here. Oh, like yeah, so. click on them. I should be removing it from my side deck to be re real proper, but then now I, I, it just closed on me, so I should have done that second. Idiot. I'm an idiot. Edgar, I see your question, which I will get. We'll talk about once Rob's done this. Hungering Blade. I yeah, I should add it to the deck and remove it from the side deck. Because then it keeps it like cleaner. Then we see only our options there. Yes, yes, yes. I like this. I like this. Okay, I'll go fix yours in a minute. Okay, then I need to. Two sweeping kicks replace. I'll get rid of the survival knife in a second. Oh, sweeping kick. <laughs> There's uh, Lily, Lily on there, right? Yep. Uh. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Me likey. Okay. Then I need to get rid of uh, Second Winds and Survival Knife. Second Winds and Survival Knife. And I click save. And then I go back to my decks. And then I'll remove from here. Uh, lock picks. Lock picks are no longer in. Oh, I gotta edit it. Lock picks. Are no longer in the side deck. And then easy mark. Oh, I think. Did I remove the wrong? Oh, I did yeah. the wrong one. I see. I see what I did. I, I did it. I did it. I know what I did. I know what I did. Sloppy, sloppy plays. That's okay. I wasn't even sure if that's what happened. No, but... of course it's what happened. So I saw the error, I was like, oh no, I screwed up. Click the wrong buttons. Okay. Okay, and then Edgar's question is, now the big question is, what do we do with the set-aside hollows? Because it didn't say. Nothing. So I feel like they we go back in the back. deck. But for I now. feel like that is telling, like, for showing now. us what can happen. For now, they go back in the deck. Yeah. I'm sure near the end of the campaign, bad things will start happening. I'm surprised it didn't happen already. Okay. What am I only clicking? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's just trolling us during the scenario. You have a way to get them back if you see the enemies to deal with it. But yes, they could still take away like your your main card if your deck is built around a specific couple cards for an engine or something. Yeah, they could take your, your signature card. I do feel like though in the future it is gonna be a thing that is gonna come up. The set aside hollows are removed yep. from your deck. Maybe. Maybe. Or just the horrible play of like right off the bat, one comes into play, I lose boxing gloves, 
And then it's like, we don't see the enemy that you fight to get any back for a while. And I'm just like, uh oh. Or I could see something where they say those cards are set aside at setup. Draw your hands, do all your stuff, and then shuffle them back in after. So they're not in your initial setup deck. True. Okay. Uh, so I need to get the cards actually physically oh, changed. Oh, sorry. I should have done yours. I didn't realize. Yeah, I, I was like, yeah, sorry. thinking if I do it digitally, it's all done. <laughs> It's not. I think we've done that in the past, right? Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, where I started playing the next scenario and then weren't even changed. Yeah. So that's why I want to do it now before I forget. I don't remember what it was. Uh, what was I doing? Uh, oh my god. Sweeping kick with something. Yes, sweeping kicks. That's all I remember. Oh, hungering blade, something. survival knife. Did I already pass by sweeping kicks? I don't see them. Did I not put them in? Yeah, maybe I forgot them. Or maybe Yogi added them in the last four days since I built these little packs <laughs> and has made changes to the uh, to the list, so my little collection here is pointless. Yeah, I don't even have them in here, so I I they probably were added later. Now the bloodlust I'll add. Bonded bloodlust we just have here in our deck. Hopefully I have those still. Yeah, I got three bloodlusts here, and I have the soothing melodies for the mirror. They're sitting here in this on the sideboard, right? So we can use them later. So yeah, I just need to get um, the sweeping kicks. Do you know which box it's in? Yeah, I'll, I'll oh. get them after the stream. I have the cards just over there, just in case this happened. Um, so we're good. Yeah, I don't see them in here. Hmm. Uh, but I need to take out cards, right? So I need to take out Survival Knife. I'll do that at least. And uh, the second wins. Survival Knife. No. So these will all go away back in the box to never be used again. So we'll just throw them in there, or I'll put them in some kind of pile to sort out when we're done the campaign. And then I have these two sleeves, which will remind me to do the sweeping kicks. Even if we get to the next episode, and I'm like, why do I have random sleeves in here? <laughs> okay, where are my little dude? Over here. Little dude card, please, and my reference card. They have a place. Put them in their place. Everything's got a place. Okay. So yeah, start of the next scenario, we'll be in the next episode, we'll figure out where to go. I'll clean up all this stuff in a minute, after the stream, so you guys won't have to sit through that. Alright, that was cool. That was fun. I like the chase mechanic there, I like how it was going, how he was hiding, disappearing, I like the mystery, I like the, um, basically the investigator around the world stuff, I, I like this kind of being at places like this, we're not yet not disappearing to some mysterious space land and you know all that kind of stuff and yeah it's kind of like a little grounded still which i like and they like the mystery to it um and i like how we're all of a sudden like basically the men in black running around the world and yeah basically playing eldritch horror but it's, it is cool how they can take the same game and put a spin on it yeah which is neat well they're just taking other arkham stories and games they've already done and kind of turning them into like LCG scenarios and they, but they do the same vice versa. Like they're just taking Lovecraft kind of stuff and putting their own little twists on it and stuff, mm -hmm. making it a more playable game environment, which is cool. Nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, thank you all for watching. We're going to get out of here. Th thanks for being here again. If you want to check out the next episode, if this is farther in the future, check the playlists down in the video description, you'll find the Scarlet Keys playlist. Thank you everyone for supporting the channel and donating, allowing us to buy expansions like this. And spend these weekends playing these games for you and buying equipment to make the streams look better, traveling to conventions like Gen Con, but not to PAX Unplugged, but not going there anymore. Just FYI, uh, we decided not to, which is happening soon, very soon, I think. Next weekend. Next weekend? Or, yeah, next weekend. I mean, it still could change, but uh, yeah. We got lots of games to play. We, we got lots of games yeah. to play. I don't need to go get any more games right now. I don't. But I want to go there. But I think I can wait till Gen Con or Origins. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Um, and anything else? No. If you have any thoughts, <laughs> drop them in the comments below, I guess. If, you, if you're watching this later, you know, any, any mistakes, rules, questions, 
suggestions. I guess upgrades we've already done, but um, yeah. I guess be here for the start of the next stream and we'll decide where we're going next. Yeah, that's awesome. That's all I gotta say. Um, but stay tuned. I haven't scheduled it yet. I'll schedule it soon. Just stay tuned to the channel. Uh, you know, if you're subscribed, it'll pop up in your subscriptions. If you hit the bell beside the subscription button and turn on all notifications, you'll get notified, you know, when we go live and, and that kind of thing. You can also, uh, sometime, most of the time I post on Twitter when we're going live and that kind of stuff, at least the day of. Um, so you can also follow us on Twitter, I guess, uh, and there, and the links for that are down below in the video description. But yeah, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.